Chapter 01 People are pirates, quit the king's addiction. Thundering gossip. Thunder quack. In the dimly lit cell, Moria, whose face was blurred and could not see clearly, was leaning against the wall. There was a trance in his eyes with only one line, and the rough shout seemed to be echoing in his ears. After a long time, Moriah came back to his senses and felt a tingling pain on his face. He bared his teeth, looked down at the handcuffs and felt powerless, and then took a deep breath. That's right. He Moriah crossed. Traversed to the world of One Piece, but started differently from other seniors. He was even more mourned. As soon as he crossed over, he greeted the cute, thundering gossip, on his face, and then, nothing happened. Woke up and lay in a cell. Through a line of sight, through the thick iron threshold, you can see the white stone mountain erected in the distance, and hear the sound of mining iron. Moria judged that he should have arrived at Wano Country, a lovely and much loved King Addiction Center. Maybe he was the first King Addiction lover here. Then, who am I? Moria asked a question that every traveler would ask. Without inheriting his memory, he didn't know who he was now. I only know that the body is very large, at least three meters in height. Wearing halo stone handcuffs on his hands, if he guessed correctly, he should be a capable person and a strong person. After all, he can take Kaido's move, thunder gossip, and not die. Compared with Luffy, Moriah also has the strength of the fifth emperor. It's just. Now that I've been caught, should I take refuge in Kaido, or should I take refuge in Kaido first? Although they are both dependents, there are still some differences between the two. The former went along with Kaido, and with the strength of the fifth emperor, he should be able to make a disaster in the future. The latter will take refuge first, survive a, accumulate strength, and leave Wano country when the wings are hardened. And then? Moria suddenly thought that his identity was not unexpected. He must be a pirate, or a bounty criminal. After that, he left Wano country, and was not only chased by Kaido's beast pirates, but also the navy did not let him go. Wouldn't that be asking for guilt? If you think about it this way, you can stay here without leaving Kaido. After all, you can live more easily, and the navy is afraid of Kaido and dare not target it too much. When Luffy comes to Wano in the future, it will not be too late to leave. Everything is aimed at a more comfortable cowardice, and it has passed through, so why are you still working so hard to live in peace and stability until the finale? isn't it delicious? Not only can see the charm of this world, but also can live happily. Such a happy decision. When someone came, he said that he decided to join Kaido, Moria thought happily. In this way, there is no need to accept the transformation of Wang's addiction. Dread. At this time, Zaulalo walked into the cell, took out the key, opened the cell door, and urged Moria inside. I came out to work. Today, I collected less than 500 kilograms, but I have no food to eat. Hey! Boy! Moria didn't get up, and said to Zoluo, I have decided to join Kaido, contact him quickly and see how to arrange it. The little guy outside the door was stunned when he heard the words, and looked at Moria in disbelief. After seeing Moria's seemingly serious expression, she pursed her lips with a look of contempt, turned around and closed the door and went out. What's the meaning? What do you mean by that look, come back and clarify. Do you look down on me? I'm a strong man on par with the future fifth emperor. The look in Zaulao's eyes before he left made Moria feel a little uncomfortable. Ghost Island. Guy was more or less sober and did not drink alcohol. He sat on the ground and listened to the phone call from his subordinates that Moria wanted to take refuge. After listening to Kaido, he frowned, that bat kid doesn't look like someone who gives in so quickly. Could it be that he pretended to take refuge, and then tried to escape? It should be. Thinking of yesterday's tragic battle, 
Kaido felt that he had guessed Moria's insidious plan, and his heart suddenly became furious. He was so cute and just looked reckless, not stupid. No matter what that guy says in the future, don't pay attention, just give me a few years to tune him. Kaido ordered. We. Yes, Lord Kaido. The phone worm smiled knowingly, then hung up. Kaido looked in the direction of the nine miles of Wano country, there was a man he was afraid of, and now his attention was all there. Poor Moria still didn't know Kaido's decision, and was still thinking about what his devil fruit ability was after he untied Hailish's handcuffs and went out. After all, the characteristics of One Piece world, as Moria, who has been watching this anime, is still looking forward to his devil fruit ability. It's better to be a powerful ability. Moria was full of expectations. What? Coming back so soon, it seems that the efficiency of the beast pirates is very high. Little Lala's back. Clang. The prison door opened, and Moria, who was looking forward to it, first saw the iron whip unfolded in Zawaluo's hand, then the dark face, and finally. Clap clap clap. After Zawaluo came in, he lashed at Moriah with a whip. You ma. I fuck. Didn't I join Kaido? Fuck, you still fight. Under the influence of Hailashi, Moriah was completely powerless and could not dodge if she wanted to, so she could only passively endure the whipping of Zolu O. Every time the whip went down, a blood stain would appear on Moriah's body. That kind of physical pain, beyond his cognition and feeling, was not something he, a traveler who grew up in a harmonious society, could endure. I must slaughter this bastard. The extreme pain made Moria's eyes bulge and stare at Zaula. Oh, the whites of her eyes were bloodshot, like a hungry ghost walking out of hell. He swears that in his twenty-five orcs year life, he has never wanted to kill so much. Clap clap clap. The sound of whipping continued until Moria's body was curled and numb, and it stopped when she almost fainted. Boo! Zalwolu shook his slightly sour right hand, put away the iron whip, spat at Moria, turned around and closed the prison door. Moria is still motionless. Moonlight Moria, don't play tricks anymore, a guy like you who cares about your comrades, when your comrades were wiped out only yesterday. You will take refuge with Lord Kaido today. Do you think everyone is a fool? Accept the reform by hard labor, and stop thinking about pretending to take refuge in reality but escaping. When you really give in, you will naturally join our hundred beast pirates. After Zaulala finished speaking, the person had already walked outside. Fuck. The corner of Moria's mouth twitched in the corner of the wall. How did he know that he had transmigrated into Moonlight Moria? He still cares deeply about Moonlight Moria from his companion period, otherwise, if his ick is a little higher, he will not immediately join Kaido. But, it's all like this now, and he doesn't want to take refuge. Tilting her head, Moria looked at the figure outside the prison door, and an icy cold light flashed in her blood-stained eyes. From now on, I will be Moonlight Moria, the great pirate Moonlight Moria. At this moment, Moria lost the peaceful mentality of her previous life. The pain that gradually recovered from the paralysis on her body made Moria understand that this is a world where people will kill people if they disagree, and that strength is law and truth is justice. If he wants to live, he must live and kill that little guy. One month later. Clap clap clap. In the darkened cell, the iron whip in Zawaluo's hand swung towards Moria, who was curled up in the corner, until Moria was like a corpse before giving up. Didn't you say it? Stop treating us all as fools. Don't mention the words of Lord Kaido in the future, otherwise you will fight once. Boo! After another saliva spit on Moria, Zawaluo closed the prison door and left with satisfaction. Moriah at the corner of the wall, just opened his eyes slowly after Zoluo left, hatred almost materialized in his blood-stained eyes. This month, he didn't say that he was whipped when he joined Kaido.
he said that he was also whipped when he joined Kaido. In a word, that little guy would have to whip Moriah when he was in a bad mood. Fortunately, Moriah's body was still there and he was not maimed. It is the pain of the flesh and blood of the whip, which is really terrifying as it hurts into the bone marrow. In this way, Moriah lives in dire straits every day. One year later, Moriah is almost immune to pain, but he still pretends to be numb from pain every time. Every time this time, Zaulala would stop, and Moriah also got a breath. In the time that followed, Moria made every effort to communicate and use the Shadow Shadow Fruit ability, although she could not use it with Halo Stone. But he found that Halushi's handcuffs did not always stick to the skin. When shaking his wrist, there would be a brief moment when Halushi's handcuffs could not touch the skin of his wrist. At this moment, although it is still suppressed by the breath of Halo Stone, the ability cannot be actively used. But just like Luffy fell into the sea and his body could stretch, Moriah was able to communicate the power of the Shadow Fruit at this moment. It's not like when Halushi's handcuffs are attached to his skin, he can't feel any ability at all. In this way, in the days that followed, in every spare time, Moria shook his wrist to create a chance to temporarily isolate the skin with the Sea Tower handcuffs, and desperately communicated and exercised the ability to use the Shadow Fruit. Moria believed that as long as he kept exercising, he could use the Shadow Producing Fruit ability to escape at the moment when the Halenshi handcuffs briefly isolated the skin. This was the only escape Moria could think of right now. Among the Shadow and Shadow Fruit abilities, the ability of the body and shadow to exchange positions is the key to Moria's escape from here. All the preparation and hard work now, it is to seize the opportunity to escape that may come in the future. And time is for those who are prepared. Shake. Another two years passed. This morning, Moria, who had not sensed how much time had passed, felt an abnormality. In the quarry, there were many fewer guards. Quinn, a guard and several captains who mastered domineering were all gone, leaving only a dozen young men. Moriah and other prisoners of mining were not released to mine. At the same time, Moriah sensed the shaking of the ground, as well as two powerful auras. Calculate the time, if the plot has not changed, now should be the time when Kazuki Odin leads the Red Sheath Nine heroes to fight Kaido. If you want to escape, now is a good time. When she thought of it, she did it. A cold light flashed in Moriah's eyes. She raised her hands and looked at the handcuffs. With a ruthless heart, she lowered her head and bit the flesh at her wrist. Double Confucianism. Chapter Rota The Fruit Awakens and Escapes. Boo. Zai. Zai. Boo. In the dark corner, Moria, who was pale, bit off the last piece of flesh on his wrist and spat it aside. A pile of blood red minced meat was bitten off from his own wrists. The flesh on Moriah's wrist has been bitten off by him, and only some filamentous red flesh is still wrapped around the white bone, and the entire wrist has shrunk in a circle, making the handcuffs look a lot bigger. Should. Be able to do it. Moria gasped, her tone a little uncertain. Generally speaking, as long as the sea floor stone does not touch the body, just breath, you can still use the devil fruit ability. In the past two years, Moriah has frantically exercised the ability to communicate with Shadow and Shadow Fruits by shaking her wrists to create Halo Stone handcuffs to temporarily isolate the skin. However, until now, it still cannot be used. Now, Moriah's idea is to remove all the flesh from the wrist, leaving only the bones, and leave enough space for the Metaverse app for Halo She handcuffs. Filu Meteorite Pavilion Novel Downloader? From Meteorite Pavilion 143 131 600. Meteorite Pavilions, 143 131 600. Away from space. Then create the moment when the Hail and She handcuffs can't touch the bones, then he can use the ability and shadow to exchange his body to escape at that moment. 
Of course, the premise is that he can really use the shadow fruit ability. Now that everything is ready, let's see if the ability to communicate and communicate with shadows and fruits will work for so long. Call. Taking a deep breath, Moriah stood up straight, raising her hands in front of her chest and straightening her. Then squat down sharply, and put both hands down flat at the same time, so that the speed of the hands falling is the same as the speed of the handcuffs, and they are in a relatively static state. In this way, there is a spatial isolation between the round hole handcuffs and the wrist bones, and there is no mutual contact. It's done. At this moment, Moria was ecstatic, and Halish's handcuffs and wrist bones did not touch this moment. Because he was separated by a sufficient distance, he felt that he could use the Devil Fruit ability. Without hesitation, Moria's mind moved, and the shadow under his feet quickly separated from the body, forming a black shadow body next to him, and then he activated his ability, and the body and the shadow instantly switched positions. Clang! Clang! The crisp sound of handcuffs falling to the ground was heard, and Zalwaluo, who was standing outside Moria's cell, suddenly became smart, his expression changed, and he walked towards Moria with an iron whip. Moria, you're looking for it again. The expression of Zaulala, who had just walked outside the prison door, changed, and the cold sweat suddenly flowed down. Looking at the corners of Moria's blood-stained mouth, her hands without handcuffs and the white bones wrapped around her wrists and then looking at the halo stone handcuffs that fell on the ground, Zalwolu guessed something in her heart, and subconsciously swallowed. After swallowing, he trembled and said, You! Moria! Lord Quinn is guarding here, you! You'd better put the halo she handcuffs back. Also, Lord Kaido is also nearby, you! Don't mess around! Zalala said as he slowly stepped back. Don't think that he usually whips Moriah with a whip when he has nothing to do. That's because he knows that there is Halish's suppression, and Moriah can't help him, so he dares to be unscrupulous. There is no Moriah who is suppressed by Halu Stone, but the monster who can take Kaido's, thundering gossip, and not die, and he is still a ruthless man who can bite off his own flesh without changing his face. Now he just wants to run away. So after seeing Moria just standing there and ignoring him, Zaulao immediately turned around and ran out. Ha ha ha! What an unexpected surprise! At this moment, Moria suddenly laughed. He didn't expect that in the case of being suppressed by Halashi, the ability to communicate with Devil Fruit crazily would be very useful. Now that he is out of the suppression of the Sea Tower Stone, his Shadow Fruit ability has actually awakened. I still want to run. Noticing the little lolly running out, Moria's expression immediately turned hideous, and she stretched out her hand and pointed at the little lolly. The shadow under him came to life like a real entity, and turned into a sharp shadow gun that went through the prison door and shot directly at the back center of Zalwalu O. Puff. Prophet the sound of things piercing into the body sounded, and Zalwalu's running figure immediately stopped. She looked down at the shadow gun pierced from her heart, Zalwolu vomited blood, and closed her eyes without saying a word. Noisy. Thump. Moria retracted the shadow gun, and Zalwolu's body fell to the ground. The other lads who were left behind outside the cell saw the figure of the iron whip on Moria's side falling to the ground. In the cell, Moria walked out of the cell door, naturally like an invisible shadow passing through the cell door. After the awakening of the shadow fruit ability, it gave Moria and Category the same special elemental ability, and the body can be transformed into shadow deformation. I believe that if the arrogance of seeing and hearing can reach the level of seeing the future like Category, then Moria can also achieve the effect of immunity to attacks like the natural system. After walking out of the prison door, Moria came to Iron Whip's Aulala's side, and others Aulala also came to him at this time. Moria, you! You actually broke free from the Halashi handcuffs, how did you do it? 
Saulalo looked at Moria's hands and asked in horror. Look. Another kid pointed at the bones at Moria's wrist and said, that guy removed all the flesh before he broke free from Hailish's handcuffs. It's so cruel. A group of lads condensed in their hearts, all of them staring at Moria vigilantly, not daring to make a move. Really? Animations are all lies, how can there be so many idiots, who clearly know that opponents who are far from being the enemy will send them to death? Only the future fifth emperor has no cards, and anyone dares to make two moves. Looking at these little hooligans who looked at themselves with fearful eyes, Moria smiled grimly, if you don't take action, then I'm welcome. With a thought, the shadow under him divided into a dozen sharp shadow guns that shot straight at the little lads. Ziz easy. There was no accident. The sharp shadow gun that shuttled at high speed instantly pierced the heads of all the little hooligans who couldn't react in time, and all of them died immediately. Then Moria took back the shadow, and the little hooligans fell to the ground. Next, let's look at another ability after awakening. Looking at the iron whip Zoluo under her feet, Moria's mind moved, and the shadow under her body was like a black swallowing python digging into Zoluo's shadow. Next, Moriah's shadow seemed to have pulled something out of Zoluo's shadow, and the python-like shadow body seemed to be stuffed with bowling balls, sending them continuously into Moriah's shadow. At the same time, Iron Whip Zoluo's body began to dry up and looked like a mummy, and finally it weathered and dissipated. Moriah regained his abilities, and the shadow returned to its normal appearance. Standing on the ground and closing her eyes, Mori opened her eyes, and there was a flash of enlightenment. So it is. Raising her hands and looking at the bones at her wrists, Mori immobilized the special energy just swallowed by the shadow. Then, at a speed visible to the naked eye, I saw that the flesh on both hands and wrists grew again within a minute and returned to its original appearance. Ha ha ha. Mori laughed and felt happy. After the shadow fruit awakened, in addition to gaining the instinct of fighting skills by swallowing other people's shadows, it could also turn all of other people's power into life energy to devour. This life energy can strengthen the body and quickly recover from injury. It means that Moria, who has no combat skills, can be obtained by swallowing the shadows of those with high combat skills. It can also gain life energy that strengthens the body by swallowing shadows. However, this kind of devouring is not unlimited, too much at one time, the body will collapse and die if it can't bear it. But even so, the terrifying ability displayed by this devouring shadow is stronger than the ability to merge into the shadow before the ability of the shadow fruit is awakened. After all, swallowing the shadow is to permanently enhance your strength and integration is just borrowing. After time, you are still the same. Next, feeling that his body could swallow shadows, Moriah also swallowed the shadows of the dozen or so little ones. The life energy that was swallowed up did not immediately strengthen the body, Moriah stored it in the shadow, and used it when needed. This is also a small effect after the ability is awakened and the reason why he didn't strengthen his body immediately was because he had not completely left Wano country yet. If he wants to leave the sky with the shadow shadow fruit ability, he has to use the ability all the time, which requires a lot of physical strength. The life energy stored in the shadow can just replenish his physical strength, allowing him to continue to use his abilities and leave Wano completely. Good kill, Moriah. At this time, the people in several cells around the quarry suddenly became troubled when they saw that Moria had killed those little guys. Hey! Moria, come and let us out. I asked you to be the deputy captain, how about we go and kill that bastard Kaido together? Let me out too, Moria, I'm very strong, the kind that can be ten. Let me out, Moria, I'll make you a kid. Everyone looked at the cell where the person to be the little one was. Little. Little brother. The voice came again from the cell. Gut. Everyone started asking Moriah to let him out again. 
Moria didn't bother to look at those idiots who couldn't recognize reality and wanted to be their younger brother. As for the one who wants to be a kid for him. Little brother the guy, Moria didn't bother to care. It's better to leave now, so as not to be blocked by Kaido's return, it would be troublesome. So Moria ignored the beeps of the guys in the cell, controlled the shadow to turn into a cross iron throne and sat on it, and then slowly flew up into the sky. Don't go, bastard. The people below were still screaming frantically, and Moriah had already reached an altitude of 200 meters. Chapter 03 Black Sword Autumn Water, Swallow It. It feels amazing, Moriah smiled suddenly. This feeling of controlling his shadow and taking him flying reminded him of a kind of extreme light work he had seen in his previous life. It is the kind where the left foot steps on the right foot and then the right foot steps on the left foot, stepping on the top level King Gong of God, and Newton's gravitational force can't hold it. Do you want to take a risk? Moria looked at the direction where Kaido and Kazuki Odin were fighting, and licked the corners of her dry and cracked mouth, feeling a little moved. According to the plot, Kazuki Odin will die, if he devours his shadow within an hour after his death when the energy in his body is not exhausted. The strength of Moria will take off directly. A great swordsman who can leave unrecoverable wounds to Kaido, who is known as the strongest creature in the sea, land and air, is worth the risk. But. Boom. Metverse app, Filu Meteorite Novel Downloader. From Meteorite Pavilion 143 131 600. Meteorite Pavilions. 143-131-600. Boom. In the sky over there, a meandering cyan dragon was hanging, and all kinds of flames breathed wildly, as if they had caught some kind of virus and were taking revenge on society. Ugh. Who would have thought that such a realistic oriental dragon would be turned into a fish by Wetian? Moria couldn't help but smile when she thought of seeing the information in her previous life. I don't know if there are too many pirates in the previous life, and I wrote all kinds of dragon and dragon fruits prepared by Wetian. It made him anxious, which made his heart ruthless, and came to a trick of carp leaping over the dragon gate, forcibly turning the dragon and dragon fruit into a fish and fish fruit, making everyone stunned. Boom. The flames soaring into the sky were like turbulent waves in the sea, one wave after another. Seng Seng. Seng. Various sharp slashing waves were also raging in the sea of fire, and the dark clouds in the sky were cut into pieces. The battle was still fierce, and it was a scene of doomsday. Seeing this, Moria pinched her thigh, feeling that it wasn't big enough. It's better to leave first, the strength is not enough, there is no need to take risks. Moria didn't want to enjoy the daily whipping service anymore. Well, it's easy to travel here. Looking at the direction Kaido and Kozuki Odin were fighting, Moria turned around and wisely chose to fly in the opposite direction. Soon, when Moria arrived near the coastline of Wano country and was about to continue flying away, her expression changed, and she sensed a lingering aura. There are treasures. Should be related to me. Thinking in my heart, Moria fell down. Below, two pirates were running towards the coast, one of them was holding a knife in his hand, and Ling Lai's breath was emitted from the knife. Bump. Moria put one hand on the knee and the other on the ground, and a standard iron man came to the ground and landed on the road of the two pirates. The shadow that turned into the iron throne retracted under his feet like a splash of ink, turning into a normal shadow. Go. The moment they saw Moria, the two pirates drew their knives and slashed at Moria. Moria was stunned, the young man didn't talk about martial arts, and he didn't say hello when he met. He just picked up a knife. But. I like it. Moria had a thought, and when the two pirates were still three meters away from him, the shadow under him suddenly shot two sharp shadow guns at high speed. The two pirates should be at the level of Zarlala. They didn't react. It was like they hit the shadow gun. 
They were stabbed in the chest by the shadow gun. Zizi. Recovering her ability, Moriah came to a pirate and squatted down to touch the corpse, and successfully took out a black knife. Is this a plot correction tape? Moriah pulled out the black knife, looked at the familiar lines above and smiled. The black sword is called Kushui, the treasure of the country of Wano, and the saber of the great sword and dragon. In the original book, it seems that it was stolen by Moria even. Moria crossed over and never thought to steal the black knife, but fate still gave the black knife to Moonlight Moria. Although he doesn't know how to use a knife, but he actually picked it up, then let the destined one live there. Exactly, how about trying the most remarkable feature after the awakening of superhuman abilities? Moria put the black knife Kushui on the ground and the sunlight reflected the shadow. He crouched down and grabbed the shadow of the black knife Kushui with his hand and pulled it out. Okay. Moria smiled. Although his shadow and shadow fruit ability was awakened, he did not get the ability to turn the surrounding matter into a thread like Duo Failang Meng's ability to turn into a shadow. But before he awakened, the ability to only capture human shadows became the ability to capture non-human shadows. Thinking about it, the reason is similar. They are all kinds of abilities that can affect the surrounding matter, but the shadow fruit affects only the shadow of the matter. Look at the sky the sun, Moria didn't tear off the shadow of Heisha Gushui, otherwise, if it is illuminated by the sun, the shadow of Heisha Gushui will dissipate without the shadow and the shadow of Heisha Gushui in his hand will also disappear. So. Devour and see. Moria was a little curious about what he would get after swallowing the shadow of the Black Blade Autumn Water. He overridden the shadow attached to the shadow of the Black Knife Kushui and began to swallow. It is not the same as when people devour their shadows, they will dry up and disappear. The Black Blade Autumn Water did not dry up but faded and gradually became transparent. When the shadow was completely swallowed, it completely disappeared. Moriah reached out and scratched, it wasn't completely transparent, it really disappeared, nothing. Not right. Moriah's expression moved slightly, and she felt the abnormality of the shadow, and her mind moved. A black knife made of shadows slowly rose from the shadow below him. Pulling out the knife, Moria bounced the shadow knife in autumn water, making a clanging metal collision sound. This is the black knife autumn water. Moria smiled. Put down the shadow knife Kushui, and merged into his own shadow. Then Moria separated the shadow and formed an identical self. He stepped forward and knocked, and also made a clanging metal collision sound. Ha ha. Moriah was very satisfied with this ability after awakening. After his shadow devoured the shadow of Hedao Gushui, he obtained all the characteristics of Hedao Gushui, such as hardness, toughness, sharpness, etc. In a word, Moriah's shadow now has the same material as Hedao Gushui. And looking at his shadow on the opposite side, Moriah found that the shadow seemed to be a little bigger than him. In other words, it was a little bigger than when it didn't swallow the shadow of Heisha Gushui. This extra point should be the shadow of Heisha Gushui. To sum up this ability, it is to devour non-living shadows, allowing shadows to acquire non-biological characteristics and enhancing the strength and volume of shadows. It is not known yet, if a shadow such as foam is swallowed, will the shadow also turn into a foam, and it will shatter when rubbed. Moria thought it shouldn't, but he didn't dare to try it. In short, the biggest effect of this ability is to increase the strength of the shadow. Moria felt that he should devour the hardest material in this world and make his shadow unparalleled in defense. And what is the hardest substance in this world, Moria first thought of the historical text. It is said that every piece of historical text is indestructible. If this legend is true and can swallow up the shadow of the historical text, then just think about it and be happy. This is Moria's next goal, find the historical text and swallow it. As for the absence of the historical text, 
how to unravel the blank 100 year history. It has nothing to do with him, if he finds the elephant master, Morio will even swallow the red roadside historical text. But now. Looking back at Kaido's side, Moria felt that he should leave quickly. This time, instead of pretending to sit on the Iron Throne, he overrode the shadow to attach to himself, and then manipulated the shadow to take him to the outside of Wano at extreme speed. Just now, Moria suddenly sensed that the battle on Kaido's side had stopped, guessing that the battle should be over, and he had to leave quickly. His current strength, in Wano country where there are so many sea towers, was accidentally controlled by sea towers, and the life-saving ability of swapping bodies with shadows was useless. Chapter 04 Kill the Loser Roger died a few years ago, and it was the most frenetic time of the Great Pirate Era. Heroes from all walks of life gathered in the New World from the Four Seas, as well as a few big pirates who survived the Rocks Pirates. During this period, the Golden Lion retired, and the only overlord in the New World was Whitebeard. Although Kaido and Dante are famous and strong, they have developed silently in their respective strongholds, and have not yet shown the strength of the four emperors who will separate the New World in the future. Or it can be said that the two of them can't do it at this stage, not to mention Wang Jai and Captain John who belong to the Rocks Pirates. It is said that Barrett and others and some of the powerhouses who emerged during this period cannot be underestimated. It can be said that at this time, the New World is a veritable pirate graveyard. Every day there is a fight, the Navy and the pirates, the pirates and the pirates, the pirates and some New World countries. During this period, the goals of the pirates were mostly the same, that is, to become the Pirate King. So in order to achieve this goal, defeating Whitebeard, Kaido, Aunt and other pirates who are very famous in the New World, to prove their power, has naturally become the choice of many pirates. At this time, on the sea near the outer waters of Wano Kingdom, a large pirate ship with two long crescent dusk skull pirate flags hanging on it is heading towards Wano Kingdom. There are more than 200 people on board, which is a relatively large pirate group. Their goal is the same as Moonlight Moriah before, to defeat Kaido. Captain Victor, there's a big black bird ahead. Where? A big man with a height of three meters and a hairy face grabbed his younger brother's telescope and looked in the direction of the pirate ship. In their sight, a. A black man flew towards them at high speed. It's the capable one. Ready to fight. Captain Victor himself is a fruit power user. When he saw the humanoid shadow flying in the air, he knew that he must be a special power user. And the people who came were not good. The captain didn't forget what they came to Wano country for. Yes, captain. Seng Seng. Kong. Everyone on the boat, the one who drew the knife and the one who raised the gun, all came to the plywood and waited solemnly. Call out. The human-shaped shadow came to a stop 30 meters in front of the pirate ship, and then the shadow faded, revealing a figure nearly 4 meters high. It was Moria from Wano country. Captain, this guy is the big pirate who failed to challenge Kaido three years ago, Moonlight Moria. Bounty, 320 million Bailey. Beside Captain Victor, a companion in the team in charge of intelligence handed Moria's bounty to him. He took it and looked at it, looked up at Moria, and said in surprise, Didn't you say that this guy, along with his companions, were killed by the beast pirates? Why is this guy here? Ye Oya Otu, his companion in charge of intelligence, said, I don't know. When these pirates were talking about Moriah, Moriah was also perceiving these pirates below, and finally came to the conclusion that the breath was not very strong and could be done for a while. But keep your hands on it. Moria separated the shadow avatar and let it fly into the sky at a height of 1000 meters ready to exchange positions with Moria at any time. Then Moria covered her whole body and fell to the splint of the ship. It's better to have a place to fight. But obviously, 
These pirates are not stupid and will not let Moria, the capable person, fall on the boat smoothly. Kill this loser. Captain Victor waved his left hand, pointed to Moria, and decisively ordered an attack. Bang bang bang. The pirates with guns fired one after another, and in an instant, dozens of bullets hit Moria at the same time. Ding ding ding. The bullet hit Moria's armed domineering body, just like hitting a hard steel shield. Apart from arousing countless sparks, it had no effect. Seeing that the usual firearm attack was useless, the three carders with knives on the ship shot together, and instantly three slashing waves hit Moria. Bang bang bang. Moria waved her fist in the air, and with the cooperation of the domineering and domineering, three punches shattered three slashing waves. At the same time, people also came to the top of the splint. So strong. That's all the attacks of three carders with a bounty of more than 100 million baileys. It only took three punches to smash the chopper wave that can cut off a 100 meter boat. Looking at a group of frightened subordinates around him, Captain Victor's face was a little ugly. He is a man who wants to be the pirate king. How can his subordinates be this kind of stuff? After a while, Victor transformed into a saber toothed tiger rock. Whoosh. Victor took the shot, and he didn't wait for Moria to land on the boat. Captain Victor's bounty is 350 million Bailey. That guy is definitely not the captain's opponent. A group of lads who were just afraid of Moriah immediately blew their captain's rainbow fart when they saw Victor's shot. It turned out to be an animal type devil fruit, it seems to be an ancient species. Looking at the two long fangs exposed at the corners of the mouth of the man rushing from below, Moria thought to himself, his hands were not slow, and he slammed down with a punch. Zheng. Kaz Kaz. As expected of a man who dared to challenge Kaido, Moria smiled when he felt the force of the squeeze on his fist. But, a little worse than himself, Moria's face burst into vain, his arms increased, and he pressed down with a hard punch. Damn. Victor's expression changed, and a huge force came. He didn't resist, and was slammed down by Moria, landing on the plywood, smashing a human shaped hole. Captain Victor. Victor. The pirates were stunned, looked at Moria who fell in disbelief and ran to the side of the splint hole while screaming. Tread. Moria landed on the plywood smoothly, and through the confrontation just now, he had already judged the approximate strength of this pirate group. Not his opponent. With a thought, Moria let the shadow clone come back, and then he was going to start killing. Bang. At this time, a figure flew out of the hole and landed in front of Moria. It was Captain Victor. No injuries, no breathlessness. Great, the captain is fine. A group of younger brothers showed a happy expression. Then they came to Victor and stared at Moria, who didn't know how loyal they were, but at first glance, most of them were hiding two meters behind Victor. Only eight carders were next to Victor, looking at Moria solemnly. I didn't expect you to be the only one who was almost wiped out by the hundred beast pirates. You are so strong. Victor looked at Moria solemnly, but Kaido was jealous. Even Moria, who was able to suppress him in terms of strength, was almost wiped out by Kaido. It is conceivable how powerful Kaido is. Hundred Beast Pirates. Kaido. What Moria heard was an ugly change in his face. During his days at the King's Rehabilitation Center, he was not only physically tortured, but the shameful reputation that he had been defeated by Kaido and became a prisoner seemed to be with him for life. And if you want to wash away these shame, you can only become stronger than Kaido, so strong that you kill Kaido. At that time, no one will say that Moonlight Moria's companions were killed and people were killed. Three years of imprisonment and torture. So, be my strength. Moria looked indifferently at the pirates in front of her. With a thought, the shadow under him instantly split into dozens of sharp shadow guns and shot at the eight carders. At the same time, 
Moria got out of the shadow, and people rushed towards Captain Victor. After his ability was awakened, his shadow possessed all his fighting instincts, plus the shadow that devoured the black sword Autumn Water. That sharp shadow spear is more like an elongated black knife, not only sharp at the tip, but also unusually sharp at the edge, but also as fast as lightning. The eight Carter pirates were also held back for a while. Whizzing. Whoosh. On Moriah's side, he was at a disadvantage. Although he was strong, his fighting skills were almost zero. Victor did not confront Moria head like a hunting tiger, while constantly avoiding his attacks, he saw an opportunity to give Moria a blow. Kong. Victor squatted down to avoid Moria's punch, and then took the opportunity to grab with his right hand, and his sharp claws created countless sparks on Moria. Then, when Moria punched down, she jumped up and left, and then charged towards Moria, waiting for an opportunity to attack. This guy is so annoying. Moria was a little depressed, and every time she waved her fist, she was dodged. Obviously his strength and armed arrogance are higher than Victor, and even his speed is not much slower, and even his arrogance is stronger than Victor. But just can't touch Victor. He is still not the moonlight Moria with six limbs attached to a sphere in the future. Now, his neck is not long, his head is not pointed, his body is well proportioned, and his muscles are like streamlined steel plates. It can be said that the three attributes of strength, speed, and defense have no shortcomings in the same level. But, combat skills really have a huge impact. Moriah is now like a sloth holding a knife. Victor can see all the movements clearly, and he can't cut anyone at all. Is it too big? Moria thought, but it was not time to give up. Moria is also domineering and domineering, pay attention to blocking attacks on vulnerable parts such as eyes, and he can improve in battle. After all, he only knew little about fighting skills, and there were no shortage of other powers. Clank. Moriah is attacked from time to time, but his armament is stronger than Victor's, and he can block it. At the same time, his arrogance and arrogance were fully activated, and he was constantly adapting to his body's fighting instinct while perceiving Victor's movement trajectory. What's the matter with this guy? Victor's eyes flashed with confusion. The fighting skills are messed up, but the physical strength is amazing and the fighting instinct is sometimes very sharp. I have to attack the eyes and other places where the armed arrogance can't defend, and this guy's body will instinctively dodge. The more he beat Victor, the more frightened he became. He found that the combat skills of the guy who was fighting against him were improving rapidly. Chapter 05 Boy, what kind of king do you want to be? Ha ha ha. Moriah laughed his heart was very excited, his body, fighting instincts and skills were recovering as the battle time went on. Combat skills are not how many moves you have, but whether your control of the body is compatible with your mind, whether you can follow your heart, and whether you can use your power 100%. If Moria had physical strength and speed but couldn't play 80% before, then he can play the 8th level now. Clank. Zheng. The most obvious is that Victor can no longer easily dodge Moriah's attack. The two began to fight head to head. Intense fist pressure overflowed, and on the splint of the bow, there was no one around the battle between the two. Moriah's shadow and eight carders and those little hooligans fought in the stern. The battles on both sides are now in a stalemate. However, the balance of battle was tilted towards Moriah. Call out. Leaving Victor's claws sideways, Moria turned around and pressed his side knees against Victor's stomach, who had no time to exert himself. Bump! A huge force spread from the stomach, and the severe pain made Victor's face pale instantly. At the same time as a mouthful of blood spurted out, he was also knocked away by the force and crashed into the cabin. Goofy goose bumps. Moria clenched his fists with both hands making a soy-like crunch. Feel the body, 
feel very hot, the kind of feeling that the state is hot. The domineering and the body seem to be completely integrated into one. After anticipating Victor's actions, the instinctive attack that the moment of dodging will send out naturally drives the power in the body, and the strike is not only fast and powerful, but also unexpected. Before Victor could react at all, he was knocked flying by Moria. At this point in the battle, Moria's purpose has also been achieved. It's time to end this battle. Moria mobilized her energy and prepared for the final blow. Bump. Victor smashed to open the blasted cabin door, walked out of it, and stared at Moria with a sullen look on his face, missing the blood on the corner of his mouth. This guy, what's going on? If you want to improve, you have to talk about a limit. Suddenly going from a combat novice to a combat awareness and action that made me too late to react, this is something that people do. This guy is not human. In the end, Victor came to a conclusion, and at the same time began to feel a sense of defeat. This feeling made Victor unacceptable. He still has unfulfilled dreams. How could he fall in such a place and lose to a guy who has already failed? Victor's eyes were fierce, and his sharp eyes were aimed at Moriah. I'm the man who wants to become the pirate king, how could I lose to you, a loser? Victor roared, his body seemed to be blessed by a dream, the whole person's momentum was so fierce, and his muscles were almost all animalized. Call out. Victor clenched his right fist, and an acceleration like a bullet dashed towards Moria instantly. Moriah was calm from beginning to end, and he had already seen Victor's actions clearly. The moment Victor moved, Moria moved, and Victor made the same move, and punched his right hand. Call out. The two approached for a moment, both with their left legs behind the front and back, and all the strength of the whole body gathered on the right fist. This guy? A trace of doubt flashed in Victor's eyes, Moria didn't hide ignored his attack, and punched his heart. I'm an animal demon fruit person, I don't believe that your resilience is stronger than mine. Victor's heart slammed, but he didn't resist, and he also punched Moriah's heart. At this time, the armed arrogance of the two people covered their entire bodies. Victor is very confident in the powerful recovery of his domineering and animal fruit ability. Just like the attack he received just now, he just spit out a mouthful of blood. With this level of attack, he can endure it for a long time. He didn't believe that Moria, who was just a superhuman devil fruit person, could last longer than him. At this moment, Victor bet that Moria's stamina was not as strong as his, and he would eventually kill him. A fool will drag, this is a law blow, you know nothing about my power, boy. Moria flashed a hint of mockery in his heart, just as Victor's fist was about to touch his chest, he as soon as his mind moved. The chest where the heart was in vain shadowed, and a hole opened automatically. What? At this moment, Victor was shocked, and his fist passed through Moria's body, as if hitting the flowing body of a natural devil fruit person. At the same time, Moria's right hand also shadowed and turned into a sharp hand knife. I. Unsurprisingly, stronger than Victor's armed domineering, coupled with the toughness and sharpness of the black knife Kushui, Moria's hand knife broke through Victor's armed domineering defense, and inserted it into his chest and pierced his heart. Ah! Victor felt a pain in his heart, and then blood spurted out of his mouth. He lowered his head and stared blankly at Moria's shadow hand knife that pierced his heart. He was stunned turned to look at Moria, and suddenly laughed at himself, it turns out. You. Have been useless. With all your strength. After saying these words intermittently, Victor slammed his head and hung his entire body on Moria's right arm. Noisy. Moria withdrew his right hand, and Victor threw himself on the splint. Kid, what kind of king did you say you wanted to become? Moria threw off the blood on her hand and turned her back to Victor Naughty. Victor. Just as Victor's life disappeared, 
the expressions of the eight carders who knew his voice had vanished changed their expressions. Then rush towards Moria together. With a wave of Moria's left hand, the shadow turned into a shadow gun, under his control, the speed suddenly doubled. Coupled with Moria's domineering look, he had already sensed the movement trajectories of the eight carders, and the shadow guns shot at extreme speed instantly pierced the hearts of the five, and the whole person was hung in the air. There were three of them, their strength and arrogance were obviously stronger than the other five, and the shadow gun attacked and was blocked by them. These three happened to be the swordsmen who first attacked Moriah. Seng Seng Seng. The long knives of the three passed through Moria's body almost simultaneously, and the sharp blades cut through the air, forming three slashing waves behind Moria. The three of them appeared behind Moria, all with joy on their faces. It felt like they had already cut Moria in half. But, this easy. The three people felt a pain in their mouths, and they lowered their heads and looked at the shadow gun piercing from the heart position in surprise. The blood in their mouths could not stop spitting out. Wanting to turn back, Moriah had already retracted the shadow gun, and the three of them lost their support and fell onto the plywood at the same time. The attack of the three was naturally avoided by Moriah's body shadowing. Although his domineering arrogance did not reach the level of seeing the future, he was more than wrong in predicting the attack trajectories of the three little swordsmen. So, Moonlight Moria, who is so powerful right now, is how the future will be smashed by Luffy who is not domineering. Could it be that something like armed arrogance can't be used as long as the body can't keep up? But it doesn't mean that you can't use the domineering look. He felt that in any anime, Moriah had. Never mind. Moria suddenly thought that there was a scene in the anime where he trapped Luffy with a shadow box, but he didn't kill Luffy with sharp moves such as shadow guns, but instead beat him like a wise man. As a result, Luffy became a rubber fruit. Nothing wrong. So much so that Luffy turned it over in the end. So, in future battles, don't hit those who can be stabbed to death with your fists, you can pierce your heart. If you are killed by a dirty blow, don't stab in the stomach or something. Mora secretly warned herself, so as not to take the road of being counter-killed in the future. Lord Moria, thank you for saving us. We were forced on board by Victor's gang, and we're not one of them. You are too powerful. The future One Piece must be you, we have seen the light in you, please allow us to follow you. After Victor and the eight carders died, a group of young men came to Moria ten meters away and told Moria how they were forced to board the ship and what they wanted to follow Moria. From their expressions, Moria could guess that some people were indeed forced to board the ship, but some people boarded the ship with the idea of being a downwind boat. And now, after Moria defeated Victor and others, these people wanted to get on Moria's downwind boat. Maybe. These guys don't know how many times they took the downwind boat. Judging from the style of these guys, who kept pouring water during the battle and shouting 666 next to them. Moria is not optimistic about his first term. So. Moria smiled, when the corners of these little hilarious mouths twitched, revealing a smile that was accustomed to laughing. Moria thought together and the shadow that had returned to him suddenly shot countless shadow guns at those little lads. Sizzle. Sizzle. All the little ones were spared, all died, and then the shadow was swallowed by Moria, and the body was ashes. After all this was done, Moria was the only one alive on the whole ship, and he came to Victor. At this time, Victor was still hot within an hour after his death. Now, Moriah wants to test whether his ability to create zombies has been upgraded after the fruit ability is awakened. With a thought, Moriah's super control shadow was attached to Victor's shadow. Instead of swallowing it, he assimilated and transformed Victor's shadow into an independent shadow that he could control. This is different from devouring shadows, which is to completely digest shadows into their own nutrients and absorb them by themselves. The swallowed shadow is gone. 
the assimilation transformation is to turn the shadow into an independent and controllable shadow. The combat skills and strength of the shadow itself have not disappeared in essence. Soon, in three minutes, the assimilation of Victor's shadow is completed, and then Moria controls Victor's shadow into his body. I saw that the shadow of Victor who was assimilated and transformed by Moria covered his body like flowing black water, infiltrating into it, and finally Victor's body turned into a state of half shadow and half flesh. At this point, the upgraded version of the zombie is finished. At the same time, Moria also knows how terrifying the upgraded zombies are. Chapter 06 Moria's Shadow Core This Ability I can't even let myself go. After carefully perceiving the situation of Victor's corpse, Moria smiled and said, I'll call you Shadow Core in the future. It's too bad, it doesn't match your temperament. Next, Moria experimented with the abilities and characteristics of the Shadow Servant Victor one by one. First of all, Shadow Servant Victor, with a half lesh, half shadow body, endows him with a body that is as fluid as a person with natural abilities. Apart from the fact that it will collapse when he touches the sea floor stone, only his armed domineering can hurt him. Moria tried it with a domineering look. The injured shadow servant, Victor, would recover quickly, but it would consume Moria's life energy stored in the shadow. Therefore, as long as the life energy is sufficient, the shadow servant is almost immortal. The second is to retain the characteristics of zombies, unlimited physical strength, just like people reincarnated from dirty soil. In addition to unlimited physical strength, Shadow Servant Victor also retained the strongest state of strength before his death, which means that he also retained the physical strength of Victor when he was in the form of a half-orc. This is only for physical strength, if it is natural type and superhuman type it is useless. After all, Victor is dead, and the Devil Fruit ability cannot be retained. Only those with Animal Devil Fruit ability will retain their physical strength. Then, the Shadow Attendant Victor can exchange positions with Moria like Moria's Shadow Clone, which is also the most important point for Moria. With this ability, his life-saving ability is greatly increased and he can rest assured that he will not affect his combat effectiveness due to the loss of his shadow clone. In the end, that's why Moriah called the shadow servants the shadow core. After successfully transforming Victor into a shadow attendant, a shadow space was opened up in Moriah's shadow to place the shadow attendant. It can be understood as a pet space that belongs to you alone, and shadow servant is your pet. Normally, the shadow attendant can stay in the shadow space. When needed, Moria can summon the shadow attendant from his shadow, and his shadow is equivalent to a space door. At the same time, some non-living objects can be placed in the shadow space, which can be understood as a necessary piece of equipment for home traveler storage bag. Metverse app, Filu Meteorite Novel Downloader, from Meteorite Pavilion 143 131 600. Meteorite Pavilions, 143 131 600. Moria sensed this shadow space, and the volume was about 10 cubic meters. It can be understood that the current maximum physical volume of his shadow is 10 cubic meters. After the Shadow Shadow Fruits ability was awakened, Swallowing shadows not only improved the quality of Moria's shadows, but also increased the quantity. If it is before awakening, he can only control the shadow deformation attack of the same size as himself. After awakening, after he devoured the shadows of hundreds of people, his shadow entity has a volume of 10 cubic meters, so he can now manipulate these 10 cubic meters of shadows to perform various deformation attacks. Of course, in normal times, his shadow is still the same size as him, but when it needs to be larger and larger, it can be larger and larger. In short, after some experiments, Moriah was very satisfied with the awakened ability of Shadow Servant, which basically conformed to all his fantasies after the awakening of Shadow Shadow Fruit. Then, before the eight carders died for an hour, 
Moria turned them into shadow servants and let Victor lead them. Are there any navigators among you? Moria asked, looking at Victor and other shadow attendants standing in front of him. I am, master. A shadow attendant standing behind Victor stood up and replied, his voice was mechanically emotionless, but fortunately his ick was still there. I'm looking for an island that is the closest to here. The best condition is that it is an island that is not easily disturbed. Moriah wanted to find an island for a good night's sleep. After all, he was at the king's rehabilitation center. I can't sleep peacefully every day, my spirit has been tense, and I urgently need to relax. Shadow attendant took out the nautical chart, looked at the pointer in his hand, pointed to Moriah's right and said, there is an island over there that meets the master's conditions, but it is far away. It's okay to be far away, as long as no one disturbs you and it's quiet enough. Saying that, Moria took the others into the shadow space, leaving behind the navigator shadow attendant, rolled him up with his shadow, and flew in the direction he pointed. One O Country After Oten was sneak attacked and the other Chixiao nine heroes were also caught, Quinn was worried that the ore field was not enough, so he came back early. Standing outside the cell where Moriah was once held, Quinn was smoking a cigar. In the corner of the cell, the pieces of meat that Moriah had bitten off were still there, and Halish's handcuffs were still there, but the person was gone. After Quinn finished smoking the cigar, he calmly took out the phone bug and called Kaido. Mr. Kaido? Quinn said after the call was connected, that Moonlight Moria escaped and killed everyone I left behind. The phone worm was silent for a while, and seemed not to respond. Mr. Kaido? Quinn waited for a while, his eyes bulging and he said in shock, Have you forgotten that there is still this person? It's that Moonlight Moriah. The one who will put the bat. Shut up. Kaido said angrily over the phone bug find that guy for me recently. Hey. Quinn said happily, Mr. Kaido, are you going to shoot? On the phone bug's side, Kaido smiled and said, yeah? When the Wano country's matter is settled, I can take action without restraint. When the time comes, Wano will be handed over to you, Quinn. Don't worry. Quinn patted his belly and assured, Mr. Kaido, I will definitely be optimistic about Wano country. Three days later. The sun had just emerged, and an island nation surrounded by round boulders appeared in Moriah's eyes. Except for the royal palace located on the central highland, which seems to be a bit valuable, the rest of the country is like the countryside, and there is no such thing as a prosperous big city in the future. This is the future king of Kyuhai, the territory of Duofei Langming but now Ming has not come to seize this country dress rosa. But it's okay, maybe the country is too poor, and dress rosa is a member of the world government, so the pirates don't like to come here, and naturally the navy will not come here. This is more in line with Moria's conditions, quiet and undisturbed. Moria did not disturb the people here, and randomly found a flat corner stone between two huge rocks. Then put the shadow attendant into the shadow space, and open the back door for them to perceive the surrounding situation through Moria's shadow, and let them be alert. Then as soon as I lay down, I fell asleep immediately. He was really tired, not physically, but mentally. Originally, I was not in a good mood, but in order to come to dress Rosa, I flew for three days in one breath, and my spirit was even more exhausted. Not long after Moria fell asleep, in a bedroom in the palace, a little Samba girl with wheat cull skin woke up and used her devil fruit ability as usual to take a look at the country. Finally, her eyes focused on where Moria was. Who is this person? Is it a homeless man in the countryside? How did he fall asleep on the rock? The little girl's big round eyes revealed a curious greeting, and she secretly remembered Moria. After at noon, afternoon, evening, before going to bed at night, the little girl found that the man sleeping on the rock had not woken up. She began to worry, was that person sick? Are you in a coma? 
The kind-hearted little girl got up early the next day, let the kitchen prepare breakfast and put it in the blue, carrying the blue and two guards behind her, and walked to Moriah. Maybe it's the little girl's temperament. Along the way, the little girl has three urgency with the help of others. The excuse, coupled with the fruit ability, quickly got rid of the guards and ran to Moriah alone. On the rock, Moriah had slept all day and night. The little girl didn't know where to climb up, but dragged her small body over the steep rock wall and gradually approached Moria. Just as the little girl was within fifteen meters of Moria, all the shadow attendants emerged from Moria's shadow and looked at the little girl vigilantly. If the little girl goes a step further, they will shoot. Ah! This sudden scene, coupled with the shadow servant's image of a demon walking out of hell, the little girl screamed when she saw it and she was also unlucky. Fall. Help. At this moment, the little girl subconsciously shouted for help. Call out. A black shadow flew like silk and wrapped around the little girl, pulling her to Moriah's side. Hey. The little girl was in shock, rubbed her eyes again, and looked around curiously. Those black devils were gone, could it be just an illusion? Little brat, who are you? Moriah had woken up and sat on the rock, rubbing the bad substance in her eyes while questioning. My name is Violet, what's your name? The little girl stared at Moriah curiously. It was the first time she saw Moriah's bat-like face, and she thought it was amazing, keep watching. Moria. Moria pointed to himself, then asked, why are you here? What? I'm here to bring you food, are you sick? Violet blushed slightly, forgetting that she was afraid that Moria would get sick, so she brought her food, and quickly handed Lancy to Moria. Bosey, and... I don't know what it is. Moria took it and turned it over. He didn't know anything except the buns, but from the appearance, it was quite delicate. I just don't know how it tastes. Moria said, picking up Lancy and pouring it into her mouth chewed it in her mouth, and swallowed it in one bite. I don't feel anything. Moria was a little depressed, maybe it was too little. After all, Violet is just a normal human little girl, and Moria is nearly four meters tall. The little blue child she carried, how much can fit in it, is naturally not enough for Moria to eat. Violet obviously knew that, so he invited, if you are not full, you can go to the palace and I will ask the chefs to cook you something delicious. After speaking, Violet looked at Moriah with expectant eyes. Palace? This little girl is from the Palace of Dress Rosa? Moriah had a thoughtful expression on her face, thinking that this Violet could find herself, he guessed that this Violet was the woman with the ability to have the fruit of eyes in the future. It's just. The way I remember it in the anime, it was turbulent. Why is it so rich now that an airport has been built? Looking at the little girl's mediocre capital and her look of anticipation, Moria shook her head in her heart. Then he thought, it's so easy to trust people. No wonder he was played around by Mingji in the future. A country is extremely clean, without desire, there will be no development, and people will have no vigilance. Facing Violet's gaze, Moria stood up and shook her head, no, I'm leaving. After speaking, Moria rolled up Violet with her shadow, jumped off the rock wall, and after reaching the ground below, released Violet and prepared to leave. You are also capable, I can let you be my bodyguard, and come back to the palace with me. I have new clothes. Violet grabbed the corner of Moria's tattered clothes and said. Looking at his tattered clothes, Moria was silent, and then his mind moved, the shadow under him changed, and a matrix trench coat shadow suit was worn on him. What a rich ability! Violet exclaimed with small eyes, the ability to make clothes at any time made her curious and reached out to touch it. So silky, she thought to herself. Moria twitched the corners of her mouth and said, go back by yourself. After that. She flew into the sky and left Dress Rosa. Violet below was stunned for a moment, 
looking at the direction Moria left, after a long time, excitedly said, he is from the outside. Chapter 07 Pirate Town, Target Barrett. Pirate Town. A kind of makeshift town that changes locations every once in a while, sometimes on an island, sometimes on a huge ship. Where? And for how long? It just depends on how strong the power behind the town is. This is the default neutrality of the new world. Of course, it's just the default. If you want to pick things up, no one will stop you. The premise is that you are strong enough. If you are not strong enough, you will usually be killed later. If you are a powerful person like the Whitebeard Pirates, you can do whatever you want and do whatever you want. The reason why the tacit understanding here is a neutral place is because everything in the pirate town was established by the dark forces and some powerful pirate groups. The dark forces provide items for trade, and the powerful pirates provide deterrence and protection. The purpose is to have a relatively stable trading place in the chaotic new world. It can provide a trusted trading place for people who need various needs and the founders also get a considerable benefit. All in all, this is a big every home needs where it needs to be. The pirate town generally has the most primitive sports transaction of human beings, such as Happy Street, the transaction of various embargoed weapons and other dangerous goods, and various intelligence transactions, etc. as well as some supporting hotels and restaurants, just like a prosperous town. And there are now seven or eight such pirate towns in the New World. This is all due to the era of the Great Pirates opened by Roger, which has made the number of pirates in the New World sore and more chaotic. Chaos is when underground businesses such as various weapons transactions and intelligence transactions are booming, so the pirate town has increased from two or three before to seven or eight. The reason why I am not sure is because I don't know if there are some things that the intelligence shadow attendant doesn't know. After coming out of Dress Rosa, Moria wanted to know some of the current situation in this world. Under the suggestion of the shadow attendant in charge of intelligence, he came to an intelligence town. This intelligence town was jointly established by the forces of the Dark World and Captain John who in the legend of the new world can wrestle with Whitebeard, and is relatively stable. The most important thing is that Captain John is a person who likes money. He will find out and kill anyone who dares to destroy the pirate town, so it is relatively stable and prosperous, and there is more information exchange. Come here and get all the news Moria wants. In a restaurant in the pirate town, Moria was eating frantically and a large plate more than one meter high had been piled up in front of his table. To delicious. The meat of this world is really delicious. Moria picked up a piece of barbecued meat the size of a bottle of water, and took a bite, the gravy burst and the meat was full of fragrance. This kind of delicacy, in my previous life, I could only watch to eat and drool. And now, Moria felt that, aside from the rest, this delicious meat was already worth the ticket for this time travel. What a guy who has never seen the world. Looking at him alone, he should have escaped. In the hotel, other pirates looked at Moria, some ridiculed and some guessed, but no one was provocative. Recently, some ruthless people came to the pirate town in order to avoid their enemies, and survived with the deterrence of Captain John here. The characteristics of these people are that they are all alone. They are easily stimulated, and they will directly attack when provoked. Therefore, although everyone is a vicious pirate, none of them make senseless provocations without thinking. Moriah heard all the pirates' comments, he didn't care, as long as he didn't come to trouble him. He was actually very kind and continued to be obsessed with food. This guy seems to be the big pirate Moonlight Moria who failed to challenge Kaido three years ago. The guy with a toothpick in his mouth in the corner of the hotel was named Roha, a free-range intelligence officer. He looked at the figure of Moria with great interest, and muttered to himself, I didn't die. The news at the time said that Kaido was completely destroyed? I didn't expect. 
Did you escape? Then. Roha's thoughts moved, and he was about to get up, but found that someone in the hotel had already got up and left before him. Damn, that kid Jack is so fast. Roha was secretly annoyed. Jack, like him, is a free-range intelligence officer. Usually with a stack of reward lists in hand, I wander around in the pirate town, and when I see people with intelligence value, I sell them to the intelligence dealers of the dark forces to earn commissions. The size of the commission depends on the price given by the customer. These free-range intelligence personnel can generally draw four layers, and the other six layers are owned by the intelligence dealers of the dark forces. Roha just guessed that Moriah was not dead as the news said, and the biggest possibility was that he was imprisoned by Kaido and then escaped. And the information of a man like Moriah, Kaido's side should not ignore it, which means that Moriah's information here is valuable. Pity. Roha's somewhat depressed Yeoya was taken first by Jack. Wow. It's so cool. After eating the Wanimata high plate, Moria was finally full, and half leaned on the chair comfortably with both hands spread out. Thank you for your patronage, 500,000 Baileys. The hotel manager came to Moria and said with a smile on his face. 500,000 Baileys, what a lot of money. Moria sighed a little. Although he was a pirate, the fine tradition of giving money for meals in his previous life is still there. Le came out and handed it to the manager, which was exactly half a million baileys. The manager took over and left with a gentle smile, and did not show any strangeness towards Shadow Servant the whole time. After eating and drinking, it is natural to do business. Moria got up and walked out. He was going to the news newspaper station in the town to see the big events that had happened in recent years. The most important thing is to confirm that there are still those powerhouses, and these powerhouses are the candidates for his shadow servant captain. Hey! Boy! As soon as he reached the door of the hotel, Moriah was stopped. He is a big guy about the same height as him, but his body is out of proportion, a typical ball is inserted into all five limbs, and one limb is invisible. Is something wrong? Moria smiled while looking at the big man in front of him. I'm Sharkunig, you should know the name. The big man introduced himself, and then invited Moria, I think you are a capable person, how about you, do you want to come to my pirate group? How much is the bounty? I? Yes. Moria nodded. 300 million Baileys. Unig is a little depressed, how does it feel weird? 300 million Baileys. Moria thought about it and thought it was okay, she could join the Shadow Servant, looked at Unig, and said, I joined, and I will find you when I come back from doing some errands. After saying that, he walked out the door. By the way. Moria turned back and asked, where is your pirate ship parked? Port no. One, the largest one. Unig Moon pointed in the direction. Moria nodded and left. It's so easy. Unig was a little confused, but he didn't think there was anything wrong, he just thought it was because his charm was too strong recently. The people in the hotel who knew Moria's identity looked at Unig with sarcasm in their eyes. A person who can escape from Kaido, even if Kaido doesn't agree, will join your stupid pirate group? Everyone's bounty is higher than yours, is it possible? But. There was a hint of anticipation on the faces of these people, although this guy Unig is a little stupid, his strength is really strong. Next, there should be a fierce battle to look forward to. Of course Unig didn't know the arrangements of the others in the hotel. He happily went back and ordered his subordinates to prepare a banquet, expecting Moria's arrival. Moria came to the newspaper office and paid 10,000 Baileys to take away the newspapers of all the major events that have occurred since the beginning of the era of the Great Pirates. Then he turned around and went to Happy Street next door to find a more formal store, and without asking the price, Moria ordered a luxurious suite with a huge swimming pool. Under the comfort of a few pairs of spheres, 
Moria took a bath in a relaxed manner, and then lay on her soft body while looking at the newspapers in her hands, one by one. There are so many strong men in the sea now. Moria sighed after watching it for a while. Where is my goal? Moria continued to look, he was eager to devour the shadow of a strong enough person, so that his strength could quickly increase to the level that he could compete with Kaido in a very short period of time. At least he must be stronger than the fifth emperor, and he can't be dizzy with a trick of, thunder gossip, after a foolish operation. In that case, Moriah didn't even have a chance to escape by swapping shadows. Moriah continued to look, and soon saw a person with a similar temperament to him. Red Earl. Moriah murmured, if this person can be swallowed by him, then his strength can reach the peak in a short time. It's a pity that the big pirate opened for a year. When the Red Earl was looking for something, he broke into a secret base of the navy. At that time, Admiral Gang Gukong happened to be at that secret base. After a battle, the Red Earl actually won, which shocked the whole world at that time. The dignified naval marshal actually lost to a pirate in a head and battle, and he was still the kind of single-handedly. If Garp hadn't arrived in time, Cyborg Sora might have become the first admiral to be killed by a pirate. However, it is also to blame for the unlucky Red Earl. He met Garp at his peak. After a day of fighting between the two, the exhausted Red Earl was sent to the advanced city, which made Garp another heroic deed. Advance the city. Moria was a little moved, thinking that in the original book, it seemed that many strong people were imprisoned there. In the future, you can consider going to the advancement city to see, you should be able to get a few powerful shadow attendants. Then Moria watched for a while. Captain John and Wang Jai and other members of the Rocks Pirates were still active, and their strength was basically in the second echelon under White Beard. This is still a little bit worse for Moriah. During this period, there were a few people who were very strong at the same time as Moriah, but they did not meet his expectations, especially Crocodile, whose strength was too vague. Moria suspected that absorbing his shadow might give him a bonus. Hardly. Even if he became a shadow attendant, Moriah was a little disgusted. The second is Hawkeye. This guy is now wandering around. The navy and pirates are his hunting targets. His reputation is the biggest in the same period, and his strength is also the biggest. But for Moria, it was still a little bit worse. Yeah? Moriah's eyes lit up looking at the crazy muscular man in the newspaper, this guy hasn't been caught yet. Barrett, the guy who used to be only Roger on the One Piece ship, needless to say his strength, maybe not the opponent of White Beard, but this guy's rich combat experience and self-tempered body to the beak, these are all Molly Yamuch needed. As long as he devours Barrett's shadow and obtains everything from him, Moria's body and fighting ability will be improved to the top of the world. At that time, Moria can hunt other strong men with strength, such as the Golden Lion who lost his legs after breaking out of prison, and improve his strength by absorbing these strong men as nutrients. Finally, kill Kaido, transform Kaido into his shadow attendant and Tamoria becomes the ruler of Wano. All right. Moriah thought a little too far, but his goal was also determined, just Barrett. This guy has gone crazy because he lost the goal of Roger. He has destroyed three world government countries one after another. Now his goal is the fourth, and he has already let it go in the newspapers. Let the people of the world government stop him, he will prove who is the most beautiful boy in this era. No accident, this time the world government will send out a demon slaughter order, Card Pop should be in it too. Barrett will definitely be seriously injured this time, this is his own chance. Then how am I supposed to grab the seriously wounded Barrett from the navy? Moria frowned, grabbing Barrett from Carp and the others, which was not easy. Chapter 08 Ruthless Moria you have to think about the countermeasures. Moria adjusted the position of his head so that it was in the gap between the two balls, which would help his thinking. With this thought, 
The time came tonight. Under the moonlight. Pirate Town No. 1 Port, a huge 300 meter long pirate ship, almost illuminated the entire port with bright lights. There are countless people on the boat, and countless delicious food and wine have all taken their places, just waiting for Moria to arrive. Boss. The reckless man with a big knife and a scarf came to the bow of the boat and stared at the direction of the pirate town on the side of Onig, and said ruthlessly, that guy won't notice anything, run away. Put the knife away. And. Onig's face turned cold and he said, what do you mean? Are you questioning my acting skills? No no no. No. The reckless man was clever, realizing he had said something wrong, and quickly put away the knife, waved his hand quickly, and complimented, the boss's acting skills have deceived the dark forces, in this world, only even the world recognized actress, Miss Angela Beebe's acting skills are not as good as yours, you are the actor in my mind. Not. The god of acting. Snort. Unig's expression softened a little, then he smiled grimly, and said, I didn't expect that guy Moria to really join us, but as long as he comes, with his performance in the restaurant, the food is his. Weakness. As long as he eats the food we carefully prepared for him, that guy is in our pocket, and we can sell it to whoever we want. Ha <laughs> ha. Thinking of Moria's remorseful expression, Unig couldn't help laughing. At this time, in the direction of the town in the distance, under the moonlight, a heavy shadow came towards the big ship, it was Moria. Ah! Unig's face suffocated with a suffocated smile, and he quickly returned to his honest and naive look, and at the same time quickly ordered, hurry up and tell the brothers to get ready, if anyone smashes this single performance for me, whoever will fill it in by himself. Get in. Don't worry, boss. The reckless man said with a smile, in terms of acting, apart from you and Angela Bibi, none of us are false. After the reckless man finished speaking, he still turned around and told those busy lads not to look at Moria with the eyes of money, that kind of strong man is still a little sensitive to eyes. Molia, my partner, come on. Before he got close, Moria heard Unig's warm words standing on the bow, and he was a little surprised. He remembered that he never told this guy his name, so. This seemingly silly guy has long been know who I am. Then you should also know that I will not join his pirate group, which means. He <laughs> he. Do you have bad intentions? Thinking in her heart, Moria showed a happy smile on her face. After getting off the boat, she got up and jumped to Unig's side. Captain, I'm here. Moria laughed. Come on, we have prepared the banquet, you are welcome. Unig took Moria's hand kindly and walked to the plywood in the middle of the boat, the location of the banquet. Moria did not resist, and followed behind Unig with a smile on his face. With the addition of powerful companions, we will soon be able to conquer the new world and complete the feat of One Piece. Right. We are the strongest shark pirates. As Moria and Unig came together, a group of young lads worked hard to play the pirates' ambition, talking about the One Piece dream that pirates often talk about in this era. Unig took Moria to the middle of the banquet, and first expressed his affirmation of the acting skills of his subordinates, you did a good job. The little ones showed meaningful smiles and said, it's necessary, Captain, this is a banquet to welcome new companions, how can we tolerate neglect? Okay. Unig released Moria's hand, turned his back to Moria, and laughed loudly, let's start the banquet. Let's go. Before the words fell, the scene was silent. Under the reflection of the white moonlight and the yellow light, Everyone opened their mouths and looked at Unig in shock. Threw up. A mouthful of blood spurted out of Unig's mouth, he looked down at the shadow gun pierced from the position of his heart, and at the moment when his consciousness was about to fall into darkness, a last doubt flashed in his mind, this guy. How to do it, without revealing murderous aura? A trace of arrogance? Noisy. Thump. 
clang. Moriah withdrew his shadow gun turned right hand, and Unig fell to the ground, knocking over plates on the ground. He calmly shook the blood on his hands and said, There's so much nonsense. Old. Boss. Dead. The reckless man wearing a scarf stared at this scene blankly, and it took a long time to realize what happened. Their boss was killed by Moriah. Boss is dead. You bastard actually killed the boss. Seng Seng Seng. A group of young men also recovered from the sluggishness at this time, and they drew their swords angrily and rushed towards Moriah. The anger at this moment made them forget the fear of the strong. Maybe the process of taking the medicine away in one wave was so smooth that they thought they were strong. However. Shadow Spear. Moria said indifferently, and the shadow under her body turned into countless flying shadow spears, instantly piercing the little hooligans rushing in front of her. Zizizi. In an instant, Zawaluo in front of him was pierced through the heart and died. The momentum was blocked and the companions were killed in seconds. These little guys stopped in an instant, and their hotheads cooled down instantly. This is completely different from what they imagined. Dozens of people died in an instant, and the blood brought out by the shadow gun pierced through the body was sprinkled on the faces of the little hooligans behind them. The slightly cool blood made them react at once. Who is the opponent in front of them? That is the powerhouse with a bounty of more than 300 million Bailey Moonlight Moria. It's not something they can't deal with at all. So they stopped subconsciously, and looked in horror at Moria, who was like a demon in the moonlight. They stopped, but Moria didn't. Kill everyone on the ship, my shadow core. Moria released all the shadow attendants and asked them to kill everyone on the ship. Help. Forgive us, Lord Moria. We are all forced. It's Sunig who wants to catch you as a slave and sell it to the Tianlong people, not us. Yup. It's also Unig who asked me to drug your meat, it has nothing to do with me, Lord Moria. The huge gap in strength, after dozens of people died in an instant, these little guys also woke up, threw away their weapons, knelt down and begged Moria for mercy, expecting Moria to let them go. It turned out to be a slave trader disguised as a pirate group. I thought it was just black and black, but I didn't expect this trick. And actually drugged. This was something Moria didn't expect, and he secretly warned himself, we should pay more attention to this aspect in the future. Don't you see, Roger was also killed by an unknown disease. The future fifth emperor, Luffy was almost poisoned by no one to save him. This world seems to have a strong resilience to physical blows, and it's the kind that jumps up and down after a sleep. But for things like diseases and viruses, the resistance is very common, the kind that even one piece can kill if you are not careful. Forgive us, Mr. Moria. The little ones are still begging for mercy. Moriah just smiled and said, Aren't all those who came out to be indifferent to life and death? Don't worry, you will not die, but will only be my nourishment. After all, Moriah and Shadow Servant started together, ignoring the wailing of these little hooligans. Zizizi. The sound of the sharp blade penetrating the body kept ringing, and the blood stained the splint, penetrated into the cabin, and finally landed on the sea, staining the water around the ship red. The pirates and the people of the dark forces who were lurking on the sidelines watching the play were secretly surprised by Moria's power and despised his insidiousness. Obviously, Moria's sneak attack made them a little shameless. In a minute, on the blood-stained ship, all the slaves who were imprisoned in the cabin died, leaving only a little lily. Said to be a little lily, in fact, it should be a little girl who is more suitable. She is only two or three years old and her small thigh is handcuffed by Halashi. It should be a capable person, otherwise there is no need for these slave traders to arrest a little girl of two or three years old. Except for the little girl, all the slaves are pirates. After all, this is a slave trader who specializes in hunting pirates. Everyone, 
except for Unig, who was turned into a shadow attendant by Moria who had a bit of strength, was swallowed up by him and turned into life energy to store up. Because there is still a big battle for Moria. Shadow Servant Moriah needs a lot of shadow servants, at least tens of thousands of shadow servants who have the ability to fight against naval soldiers. These shadow attendants are the key to his ability to capture Barrett's shadow. In the pirate town, in a hotel room, Moriah brought the little girl back. No way, if you don't bring it back, this little girl will either die, or she will be caught and become a slave again. After asking the woman in the hotel to clean up the little girl and put on new clothes, Moria called for a meat, pastry, and beverage package. The little girl must have been hungry for many days. As soon as the food was placed on the table, her body floated to the table and nibbled at the meat on the plate. Seeing the floating figure of the little girl, Moria's eyes lit up. This ability to fly is practical and rare. Um. It's worth starting the Lolita development program. Moria thought to herself, then quietly waited for the little girl to eat the meat, and then asked her some questions, such as her name. While Moria was waiting for the little girl to eat, everything he did on the big shark pirates spread throughout the pirate town within minutes. I didn't expect that Anig was a slave trader who specialized in hunting pirates as slaves. What's the matter? In a small town hotel, a big man was drinking wine, and he said, Fortunately last time, I didn't accept the invitation of the bastard who pretended to be stupid and went to his boat for a banquet, otherwise I would become a special one. The slaves held in the cabin are gone. But, the big man said and took a sip of wine, then laughed, but that guy kicked the iron plate this time, and he killed himself, ha ha ha. That's right. I deserve to kick the iron plate. Most of the others in the hotel were pirates. They were very disgusted with Unig, a slave trader who specialized in hunting pirates as slaves, and mocked them one after another. Although that Moonlight Moria is insidious, he is indeed a ruthless man. I heard from the people who checked on the ship that they didn't see a single person, only the bloodstained ship. The guess is that they were all killed by his special shadow ability. A little girl survived and was taken away by him. As soon as these words were said, the atmosphere in the hotel instantly stiffened. Thinking of the tragic situation on the big shark pirate ship, everyone secretly told their subordinates not to mess with the killing lunatic Moriah. Chapter 09 He He Perona, Attacked in the Dark. In the hotel room, the little girl was lying comfortably on the table with her round dick belly, and the food for one person had been wiped out by her. What's your name? Moria asked, resting her chin on the table, looking at the little girl. Moria's huge face, the little girl was not timid when she saw it, but showed a close smile. At the age of two or three years, she already had some basic judgments. She knew that the adult in front of her was the one who fed her. It's just that the little girl obviously doesn't know what Moriah's name is. Staring at Moriah with big cute eyes, he kept smirking. Isn't this a fool? Moriah felt a little gloomy in her heart. Do you know what a devil fruit is? Moriah was not reconciled, and after asking, she took the initiative to explain. It's a kind of fruit that is said to be unpalatable, with bright colors and strange textures. Ha ha. Have you ever eaten? Ha ha. Can you speak? Ha ha. Call. Dad. Moria said angrily. Who knew that the voice just fell, the little girl didn't laugh this time, and replied, Hey. Moria's face darkened instantly, intentionally, this was definitely intentional. But, looking at the little girl's smirk, Moria felt that she might have thought too much, and it was just an accident. After a while of silence, Moria said tentatively, You. Call me dad. Ha ha. Ah. Uh. Moria grinned suddenly. But she was still sloppy. Okay, just pretend this girl can't speak, she doesn't understand. After thinking about it, Moria thought, 
and summoned the shadow servant Victor from the shadow. Pointing to himself first, then to Victor, and finally to the little girl and then to Victor. What? This time, the little girl didn't he he or a, but blinked her big shining eyes, as if she understood Moria's gesture, struggling to come to Moria. But trapped in the small belly of the round penis that she was eating, the girl couldn't climb up, and finally turned over and rolled towards Moriah. Pudu Pudu, rolled in front of Moriah's big face. The little girl steadied herself and sat up, and then extended a small hand to Moriah. Just stretched out like this, staring at Milia with Meng Meng's big eyes. What do you mean? Moriah was full of question marks. He meant to let the girl use her devil fruit ability like him. But looking at the little hand that was trying to stretch out towards him, I always felt that the girl seemed to understand something else. However, Moriah still stretched out her index finger and pointed to the little girl's hand. The moment Moriah's index finger touched the little girl's hand, Moriah felt cold all over, as if something had passed through her body. And then, Moria's expression changed. Thump. Moria knelt on the ground, clenched her fists and kept pounding the ground, and said to herself, I really want to die, as a transmigrator, I can't beat Kaido, and I'm being served by Zaulalo's whip. I'm too weak, I I don't deserve to live in this world, and I have embarrassed the vast number of transmigrators. I really want to die, but now a woman has confiscated it. What face do I have to survive in the world, I am ashamed of the Transmigrator Harem Association. I want to die. I really want to. Fuck. Moria jumped up violently, away from the cute chubby girl. After a while. Kong. Moria was covered in armed domineering domineering, and then came to the girl with a smirk, and threatened with a gloomy face, tell me, what did you see? Ha ha. Don't think you ha ha, I didn't know you could talk, say, are you laughing in your heart? Ha ha. No he he. A. Moriah. After a long silence, Moria withdrew her arrogance and instructed the shadow attendant Victor, put on your clothes, and take Perona to leave later, and wait for me in the mountain behind the town. Yes, master. Shadow servant Victor came to the hangar next to him, took a windbreaker with a hat attached to it, and put it on. As long as he didn't look at his face, no one could tell it was Shadow Servant. You'll be called Perona from now on. Moria pointed to the girl and said word by word. Ha ha. You. Moria pointed to the girl again and emphasized, Perona. Ha ha. Moria sighed, forget it, as long as this little guy doesn't make a sound later. What he will do later? If it is known that he cares about Perona's existence, she will be in danger. Better to be sent away quietly, no? People know. If she made a noise and was known where she went, and was finally killed, she could only lament her own bad luck. Moria's eyes flashed a trace of coldness, even if he already knew that this was the future ghost fruit ability user who was loyal to Moonlight Moria Perona, he would not compromise for her. Thinking of this, Moria pointed to Victor, the shadow attendant, and said seriously to Perona, Wait a minute, you go with this person. Don't talk, understand? Ha ha. Perona continued to answer as always. This time Moria nodded, and when she understood, no one would be blamed for her death if she didn't understand. Late at night. It was the night where the moon was dark and the wind was high. Although the moon was not dark tonight, it was still very white and bright, but for Moria, it was indeed a killing night. Because the shadows of various buildings under the moonlight and the shadows of the mountains behind are very clear. As mentioned earlier, after Moria's shadow fruit ability is awakened, although it can't turn the surrounding substances into threads and glutinous rice like Mingjian category, but he can control the shadow of the surrounding material to temporarily merge into his own shadow, and obtain a powerful shadow ability. Now that the moonlight is at its brightest tonight, the hunting time is up, 
and Perona must be sent away first. Take her to the back mountain. In the alley, Moria handed Perona to the shadow attendant Victor. Yes, master. Victor hugged Perona with both hands, and hid in a large trench coat and left. Neither crying nor speaking, Perona was very quiet at this time, which made Moria smile, it seems that she just can't speak, and her brain is not stupid. Ten minutes later, perceiving that the shadow servant Victor had arrived at the back mountain of the pirate town, Moria came to a corner of the town that was not easily noticed by others. Let's start. Whispered in his mouth, Moria's face was solemn, and his mind moved, and the shadow under him was divided into countless thin shadow tentacles, extending into the shadows of the nearby buildings. Then the shadows of those buildings seemed to come alive, and under the control of Moria, they continued to separate out countless shadow tentacles to spread around. Under the white moonlight. Looking from the sky, I saw that starting from Moria's position, countless shadow tentacles spread out, densely packed, like countless pythons swimming. Fortunately, it was late at night, and most of them slept. Those who didn't sleep were also drinking in the room, drinking and exercising, so no one found anything abnormal for the time being. This consumption is not ordinary. As more and more shadows are controlled, Moria consumes more and more stamina when using abilities. In the end, she can only devour the life energy stored in the shadows to restore her stamina and continue to use her abilities. Thanks to the generosity of Omnig's human traffickers, there are now hundreds of lives in Moria's shadow. The life energy of each person can restore Moria to the peak of physical strength. The amount of several hundred people should be enough for him to use his ability to cover the entire pirate town. After that, three minutes passed. Moria's shadow tentacles almost covered the shadow of the entire pirate town, including the shadows of ships docked at sea, which had all been integrated into his shadow and were under his control. Then, Moria's feet were shadowed and merged into his shadow. In this way, he seems to have become a shadow tentacle monster, and can perceive the situation of the entire pirate town through the shadow tentacles. About 60,000 people. Moria smiled, there are still quite a few, all adults, no children. Through the shadow tentacle perception, more than 50,000 people in the entire pirate town are sleeping at this time, which is what Moria perceives. About 10,000 people are still active which is probably what Moriah guessed. The most active people are on the happy street side, occupying about seven or eight thousand people. These people consisted of abalone, abalone sellers, abalone eaters, and some guards from the dark forces. There are two or three thousand people, pirates drinking in various taverns and managers of taverns. Moriah's shadow deliberately avoided these places. Start with the sleeping people first. Moria thought. At this moment, in the small town, those who sleep on the bed, those who sleep on the boat, and those who fall asleep on the street are drunk. Beside these people, two black shadows stick to the ground, walls, etc., like poisonous snakes, and swim to them silently. Then coiled up like a cobra, its head turned into the blade of a black knife. The two shadow blades are directed towards everyone's head and heart. Kill. Moria snorted lowly, her mind moved. Zizizi. Zizi. At this moment, countless shadow blades were shot at the same time. There was no accident. In an instant, among the more than 50,000 people who were sleeping, more than 40,000 people were shot through their heads and hearts by the shadow blades and died. These dead people are the ones Moria chose to attack. In his perception, the breath of these people is not strong enough, at least the reaction to danger will not be too strong. This is the only way to be safe, otherwise, if you choose too strong, you will be discovered if you don't kill it. Then when he becomes a shadow servant, it will be bad to come to trouble him. Like now, these people died without struggling at all. He didn't even open his eyes, 
which was different from having his heart pierced and his consciousness. His brain was pierced, and he died in an instant. His consciousness dissipated and he died without causing trouble to Moria. After killing these people, Moria chose to perceive more than 30,000 people with slightly stronger breaths turned into shadow attendants, and the other 10,000 people devoured their shadows and turned them into life energy. After all, 30,000 people were transformed into shadow servants at the same time, and the physical strength consumed by using the ability was very terrifying, and there must be a supplement of life energy. At the same time, Moria chose not to swallow the combat instincts and other skills of the 10,000 people. This is a strong point after the ability of the shadow fruit is awakened, and it can be selectively swallowed. Otherwise, the instincts of 10,000 people's fighting skills will enter his mind all at once, and it can break his mind. Even if he doesn't break down, it is very dangerous. Just like the move of Moonlight Moria's shadow gathering place in the original book, it swallowed too many shadows at once. Although it gained the power to shatter a small island with a single punch, it is also easy to be knocked out by a single blow and the reason is because of the fighting skills instinct that has endured too many shadows, the mind and body can't bear it. In short, once there are too many things like fighting skills and instincts, they become mental garbage. In the silent night, in the corner of the pirate town, Moria quietly controlled the shadow while devouring the shadows of the 10,000 people into life energy, while assimilating and transforming the shadows into shadow servants. The assimilated shadow, in addition to possessing its own fighting skills and instincts, has also been assimilated by Moriah's shadow, and also has the toughness and sharpness of the black blade Kushui. The attack and defense are much stronger than the general Zolu O. This is also the confidence that Moria dares to slaughter the entire pirate town. That's right. Moria planned to kill everyone in the entire pirate town including the 28 pirate captains gathered in the town at this time, as well as a fellow guarder of Captain John who was suspected to be stationed in the pirate town. He wants to turn these people into shadow servants and add them to his shadow army to increase his chances of success in capturing Barrett from the navy. Chapter 10 The Roar of the Pirate Captains Three minutes later. Whoosh. Call. Moria leaned against the wall and kept breathing. At the same time, he assimilated and transformed the shadows of more than 30,000 people into shadow servants, which was too much of a mental drain. Fortunately, there is no need for too many shadow servants. Then start taking action against those pirate captains and carders, as well as those with strong breath. Without rest, after taking a breath, Moria let the shadow float to the side of those pirate captains this time. Relying on the strength of the breath in the perception, Moria let the powerful shadow attendant lead hundreds of shadow attendants to lurk in the shadows around those with strong breath. Once the shadow assassination fails, then force the kill, and the shadow attendants swarm out from the shadow, relying on the body that is not afraid of death like the natural system, do not defend, attack directly there should be few people who can stop it. Soon. 10 seconds. When everything was ready, Moria flashed a trace of cruelty in her eyes and shouted, kill. Zizizi. Zizi. In an instant, only 10,000 people were sleeping, and only 300 people reacted in time, blocking the thrust of the shadow blade, and the others were pierced through the heart and brain and died. Among the more than 300 people who survived, only six pirate captains blocked the siege of the shadow attendants, rushed out of the encirclement, and came to the streets of the town or the roofs of buildings. The others did not block the shadow servants attack and were killed. Surround them. Moria ordered coldly. 30,000 shadow attendants turned into six black torrents, instantly rushing towards the six surviving pirate captains besieging them. And Moriah hurriedly shadowed those people with strong breath, that is, the more than 300 people who could resist the first wave of shadow blade attacks. Among the other 8,000 people, 
Moria directly devoured the shadow and turned it into life energy. Moria. A pirate captain who had just broken through the attack of the shadow attendants came to the street and looked at the thousands of shadow attendants rushing towards him. At the same time his expression changed. He also guessed what it was, and suddenly a roar burst out, resounding throughout the whole small town. What happened? It looks like someone is fighting. There are also open taverns on Happy Street. Among those who were still slightly awake, many people heard the movement and walked out of the room and came to the door. That's where Wolf Vox. And Bloody Hank. Who are the others? Many people saw the direction of the port, and the five emitted tall figure incarnated as a werewolf was Vo, with a bounty of 310 million bailey. The big man who wielded the blood cult glove was Hank, with a bounty of 290 million bailey as well as several other figures who were besieged by shadow attendants, watching this scene, everyone's heart trembled, and they woke up a lot. Those shadowy things seem to be Moria's ability. It's Moria's ability. I saw him use it in the hotel during the day. Some people recognized the shadow attendants at a glance, and they were all similar to the shadow attendant Victor that Moria used to check out and pay during the day. So much at least tens of thousands. Those who came out were inexplicably shocked when they saw the countless shadow attendants who surrounded the six pirate captains like ants. Right Moriah's strength has some new insights. Only. Everyone suddenly reacted, looking surprised and puzzled. No. Why did Moria fight with those guys? Maybe he was drunk. Maybe it's a pain in the ass. I don't know there may be a problem with Moria's mind. A group of people, who have nothing to do with themselves, are hanging high, commenting on the six pirate captains who were besieged by the shadow attendants and Moria who didn't know where they were, and had no intention of intervening. For them, as long as you don't provoke yourself, who cares how you fight? In their hearts, they may wish that Moria and the six pirate captains were all killed so that they would also have fewer competitors for the throne of the pirate king. Click. Click. A flash of light suddenly lit up. It turned out to be some active intelligence and news collectors. At this time, they took out their phone bug cameras and started taking pictures frantically. They even approached the center of the battlefield in order to get first-hand clear pictures. Shocked. The man who escaped from prison is so powerful. Shocked. The man who was trained and developed by Kaido turned out to be one against six. Shocked. The great pirate, Moonlight Moria, will meet six men in the middle of the night. Is this the strength of strength, or the loss of morality? At this moment, the intelligence and news collectors who ran to the battle positions of the six pirate captains had already pre-booked tomorrow's shocking body headlines for the battle for Moria in their minds. I really don't know how to live or die. Perceiving the movements of these guys with phone bugs and cameras, Moria's heart sank. You can't mess up now. A cold light flashed in Moria's eyes. His mind moved and the shadow tentacles quietly waited for the arrival of these guys looking for death. These intelligence news collectors may have been too focused on taking pictures, and they didn't even notice the abnormal changes in the surrounding shadows. Although Moriah deliberately concealed it, as long as you look closely, you can still see the tentacles that the shadows around him have turned into. All I can say is that they are doomed to die. Sizzle sizzle. When these intelligence personnel were slightly away from areas such as Happy Street and Taverns, Moria immediately manipulated the shadows into shadow guns to kill these guys, so as not to cause trouble for himself. Clank. Boom. Boom. The roar of the battle became more and more urgent, and the six pirate captains deserved to be the ones who survived two waves of attacks so there is no need to say more about their strength. Either with a sword, or with a fist, or with the power of a devil fruit, even if thousands of shadow servants besiege one of them, they can only be surrounded. 
the power of the shadow attendants is too weak for these six pirate captains, and they are basically the kind that can be punched away with one punch. It is also the fighting style of the shadow servants who are not afraid of death, so that the six pirate captains are trapped for a while. At this time, the six pirate captains were very angry, and Moria killed their crew in anger. Molia, you bastard, you actually attacked me and killed my companion. Unforgivable. I want you to die. Molia, where are you, get out of here, I'm going to kill you. Dumb. The six pirate captains faced the siege of the shadow servants, and while resisting with anger, they were also looking for Moria's position. Their arrogance and domineering didn't sense Moria's aura. So far, only shadow servants have fought with them, which made them feel unreasonable fear in their hearts. Fear of not finding Moria to stop him, something dangerous will happen. Damn, what are these things? Aren't you afraid of dying? The six pirate captains looked gloomy. These shadow attendants are not very domineering, but relying on the number and the defense and attack power given by the Black Sword Autumn Water, it is still a little difficult to deal with the six pirate captains who have mastered two colors of domineering, but they are disgusting people. Where the hell are you, Moria? Get out of here. Morlia. Get out of here. After the six pirate captains wandered around for a while, they invariably walked towards the central area of the town while fighting. Although the shadow servant could trap them, he couldn't resist the advance of the six of them. The six of them are now located in different parts of the town near the port. Most of the hotels here are inhabited, and the tavern and happy street are located in the center area. They have already sensed the surroundings with a sense of domineering and domineering. Without Moria, Moria may be in the central area where Happy Street is located. At this time, the six people are still some distance away from the Happy Street and the pub area. I found you, Moria. You can't run away. I'll kill you, a scum who can only sneak attack. At this moment, each of the six pirate captains had a fierce look in their eyes wishing to eat Moria's meat immediately. They have seen the direction in which the tentacles of the underground shadow extend point to the central area of the town where Happy Street and the tavern are located, and make sure that Moria must be there. The six men marched towards Moria against the siege of the shadow servants. Do your best to stop those six guys from approaching me. Moria ordered shadow servant. He hasn't finished serving those figures yet and he still needs time, so he can't be disturbed. These people with strong breaths will take a little longer to become a shadow attendant, not to mention that Moria still has nearly 300 shadow attendants at the same time. And it's only been a minute and a half since the six pirate captains were attacked. Hold on. Give me another minute. Moria's face burst with vigor, her expression focused and she went all out to shadow the more than 300 people. Countless shadow attendants are not besieging the six pirate captains. Instead, it turned into a humanoid wave, resisting their advance wave after wave. But because of this, Moria's position was exposed instead. He's over there. Superior. Kill Moria, this bastard. The six pirate captains looked at the direction that the shadow servant was blocking their advance, but they still didn't understand Moria's position, and immediately moved in the direction where the shadow servant was blocking their advance. Fuck. Failed. Moria scolded secretly. It had only been six seconds, and the situation was even worse than before. Mate. Unig and Victor, you too. It's better to kill one of them with a sneak attack. Moria's thoughts moved, and Anig, who had been staying in the shadow space, and Victor, who was protecting Perona, shot. Yes, master. Anig and Victor responded in their hearts, and then Anig walked out of the shadow and lurked slightly towards Hank the bloody hand. On the other side, Victor put down Perona in his arms and said to her, You stay here obediently. The master will pick you up later. After all, 
Victor merged into a shadow tentacle that Moria extended here and disappeared. At the same time, a shadow attendant came out to replace Victor, which was also convenient for swapping positions with Moria later. Moria's shadow is like a space door. Victor will come to the shadow space when he merges into his shadow, and then he can come out through any shadow outside him. Therefore, Victor instantly appeared beside him from the shadow on the side of Anik. The two hid together in ordinary shadow attendants and quickly came to the vicinity of Bloody Hank. Chapter 11 This is The Breath of Blood. Call out. Call out. Without any hesitation, the two of them approached the bloody hand Hank for a moment, and suddenly burst into attacks. The positions were one after the other, and the order of the attacks was also one after the other. The attack was sudden. The speed is also very fast. In front of him is shadow attendant Anig. Unlike other shadow attendants who can't use armed domineering, his armed domineering is actually not weak, but he was killed by Moria's sneak attack. So in the face of Shadow Servant Anig's punch in the face, blood-handed Hank was momentarily stunned, causing him to fail to respond in time. At the same time, grab Anig's wrist with both hands. Bang! Anig's punch still slammed into the blood-handed Hank's face, but that was all. Anig's right wrist was firmly grasped by the blood-handed Hank's hands and could not move forward. This punch did not cause much damage to the blood-handed Hank, and he was also a strong man who could cover his entire body with his armed arrogance. So bloody Hank laughed. But he still laughed a little earlier. At the moment when his smile had not fully bloomed, it was also the moment when Anig's attack was blocked, the shadow servant Victor held the shadow knife with a condensed and domineering weapon, and stabbed the blood-handed Hank's back with a knife. Noisy. The shadow knife not only pierced the blood-handed Hank's domineering back, but also continued to pierce his heart. Puff. Blood-handed Hank's smile froze before he had time to bloom, and then he spat out a mouthful of blood, his whole body seemed to have been emptied of strength all of a sudden and was soft. He knew that he was going to die, but he would not make Moriah better. Mulia is here. Bloody Hank shouted out this sentence with all his strength. Obviously, he felt that only Moriah could kill him by breaking through his armed arrogance. Perhaps, this is the self-confidence of people's fans. Zizizi. Zizi. After the blood-handed Hank was attacked in the heart, his armed arrogance couldn't be condensed. The ordinary shadow attendants swarmed up and stabbed him into a hornet's nest by waving the shadow knife in his hand. Morlia. This bastard. When the other five pirate captains heard the last cry of the bloody hand Hank's life, they also saw his shadow servant Victor hidden in the hooded trench coat. But because Victor's height and size were close to Moriah, they didn't doubt that it was Moriah. I'm going to kill you, a bastard who can only sneak attack. Morlia. You bastard, if you have the ability, we will face it. Werewolf Vox was very angry. Originally, his companion was killed by Moria, but now Moria still uses this trick, and his anger is even more angered. The four of them were similar. They were all just angry Moria's sneak attack. They didn't expect that Hank was killed because the blood-handed Hank was not strong enough. The five suddenly turned around and fought hard towards Shadow Servant Victor. This. Willow Dark Flower Bright Another Village. Moria, who sensed this scene, blinked, with some surprises and surprises. He didn't expect that wearing a windbreaker that covered the appearance of Shadow Servant Victor would still have such an unexpected effect. Kill one more person and move towards the port. Moria's mind moved, and quickly asked Victor and Anig to kill one more person while the five pirate captains were still underestimated and then led the rest away to delay him. At this time, there were still 30 seconds left before Moriah would be able to succumb to the more than 300 strong figures. Then, it's time for his slaughter. Yes, Master. Shadow Attendant Unig and Victor received a notification from Moriah and selected the nearest pirate captain to attack them. Zizizi. 
no accident, facing the siege of shadow attendant Sonig and Victor, plus the assistance of countless ordinary shadow attendants. The pirate captain they selected didn't last long, and was killed in three seconds, stabbing into a hornet's nest. This is because they were blocked by the shadow servants, the remaining werewolf Vox and the other four could not help, and they did not expect to help. They thought that as long as they had precautions in their hearts and didn't give Moria the chance to sneak attack, Moria couldn't do anything to them. But, the attack by shadow servant Victor and Anig just now completely broke the domineering armament of the slain pirate ship. This is a powerful kill, not a sneak attack. That means, as long as Shadow Attendant Unig and Victor besiege one of them, they won't be able to bear it. Because everyone's strength is similar, even the strongest of the remaining four, Vox, only relies on the physical body strengthened by the animal type Devil Fruit ability. In essence, everyone is domineering. The attacker of Victor, the Shadow Attendant of Asia. You guys gather at me. Quick. Vox who instantly realized that he was in danger, roared like the other three pirate captains. The other three pirate captains naturally understood the current dangerous situation. Fortunately, the three of them were all very close to Vo. The moment they heard Vo's words, their strength exploded, temporarily breaking through the siege of the Shadow Servant, and with one acceleration, they came to Vo. Loudly. Boom. 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 The moment the four pirate captains converged, the siege of the shadow attendants came like a tide. But the cooperation of the four seemed to be under the threat of life, and they got the rune in in an instant. The four tacitly coordinated attacks made it impossible for the shadow servants to enter. Shadow attendant Anig also tried to break through, but he was knocked away by Vox in an instant. Victor had no chance or shot hiding behind many shadow attendants. Therefore, the four pirate captains of Vo haven't discovered the identity of the shadow servant Victor, and thought it was Moria. So Victor and Anig followed Moria's instructions and moved towards the port while fighting. The four pirate captains of Vo didn't feel anything wrong, or in other words, they had no time to detect anything wrong. Although the siege of countless shadow servants was not exposed by their defense, it was also because they had to beware of the sneak attack by their so-called Molia. Therefore, they were so concentrated at this time that they didn't have time to perceive the difference in the aura of shadow servant Victor. Ten seconds to go. A triumphant smile appeared on Moriah's face. And right now. More and more people came out of the shops and taverns on Happy Street because they were disturbed by the fighting. At this time, someone finally found the anomaly. Sniff. At the door of a happy shop, a drunk man with an abnormally raised nose and mouth sniffed the air with his nose, and then his face changed slightly. After a change in his body, he directly activated the animal type Devil Fruit ability, turned into a wild dog and then sniffed again. This is. The breath of blood. The man's face suddenly became horrified. In his sense of smell, the entire pirate town, except for the central area, was filled with a faint blood mist, not thick, but a lot. Looking at the direction of the port, there was silence, except for the battle between countless shadow attendants and the four pirate captains, no one could be seen and his companions, except those who stayed on the ship, slept in the hotel on the other side of the port. Thinking of this, the man had a somewhat ominous premonition in his heart. Quangu, Pegu, please don't have an accident. Man in heart in a hurry, without disabling the devil fruit ability, he kept the form of a wild dog and ran frantically towards the port. Is that guy crazy? Others were a little surprised and puzzled when they saw the man turned into a wild dog and ran wildly. But not everyone is like this. Some people are more sober. At this time, they look at the direction of the port except for Shadow Servant and Victor, who is also regarded as Moria by them. They also began to have some ominous premonitions in their hearts. 
Don't you think it's been a long time since the battle? Why is it so quiet over there? I didn't hear the slightest movement from the others. Someone looked in the direction of the port and said everyone's questions. Indeed, after so long in the battle, the movement is not small, it is impossible for everyone to sleep and not hear it. But the fact is that apart from Shadow Servant and the besieged pirate captains, no one else was seen there. Everything seemed very quiet, eerily quiet. Could it be? Everyone's face changed, and then Yeoyao headed again, thinking that no matter how crazy Moria was, she wouldn't kill everyone. After all, there are at least tens of thousands of people there, of which there are more than ten pirate captains with more than two hundred million baileys. Moreover, it is impossible to deal with so many strong people at once with Moria's strength. It's definitely not possible, they just slept a little deeper. Or went to hide somewhere else. Everyone didn't want to believe the guesses in their hearts, so they quickly denied it in their minds. Don't you think that the shadow who attacked the bloody Hank with Moria just now looks a bit like an egg? Another guessing word came out, and everyone's face changed again after hearing it, and then they heard it again. I heard that everyone on the Anig ship except a girl was killed, but no one was found. Corpse. Did you say that? Could it have been made into that kind of shadow monster by Moria? The people said the answer in their hearts. At the same time, they also remembered Moria's shadow fruit ability, which seemed to be able to create zombies from other people's shadows. Although Shadow Servant doesn't look like a zombie, it's not ruled out. Fuck. Moria. At the moment of trying to understand the connection of these details, there were four pirate captains. The state of drunkenness suddenly changed, and it became clear in an instant. After a roar, they all ran towards the port. Some of their crew members are in the hotel and some are on the ship, but they are all so panicked in their hearts after seeing the countless shadow attendants. If so many black shadows are made of human shadows, who knows if there are their companions in them. They have to hurry to confirm, if it's okay. They have to take their companions away, otherwise who knows what the madman Moria will do. But if Moriah did kill their companions. That. There's nothing to say, Moriah must die. At this moment, the four pirate captains who rushed to the port were all heavy in their hearts, their eyes flickered with cold light, and they made up their minds. At the same time, the guards on Happy Street, as well as the guards of the Dark Forces on duty at night, also went to those hotels and restaurants to check. Like those pirate captains, they didn't have much hope for the staff who presided over the hotel and restaurant. But you still have to make sure for yourself before you can make a decision. Is to kill Moria, or pretend not to know. Soon, the person who went to confirm came back and came to the door of the largest happy shop on Happy Street, where a graceful royal sister was waiting. Sister, everyone has disappeared. Only some blood remains at the scene. Like the disappearing Unig people. After the confirmed person finished speaking, he glanced at the shadow attendants who were besieging the four or person ship, and the meaning was self evident. Are you going to kill? Behind Sister Rue, a big man in a black suit bodyguard stepped forward to ask, and at the same time, Ling Lai looked in the direction of Unig and other shadow attendants. Need not. Sister Ru turned to look at Ye Oyao, the tallest house in this pirate town, and smiled. It's not our obligation, we're just in charge of running the business here. The one who protects this place is the pirate group of that lord. I believe that Mr. Delong, who is stationed here, will give us an explanation. After listening to Sister Ru's words, the guarding forces of the Dark Forces also quieted down staring indifferently at the last struggle of the four pirate captains in the distance. That's right. The Vofa are already the last struggle. Because Moriah has completely transformed the three hundred people into shadow servants, and then they all joined the action of encircling and suppressing the four people. Chapter 12 Peeping from the John Pirates Not going. 
Can't you see that everyone in the town has been almost killed by me? Perceiving that the people on the side of Happy Street and the John Pirates did not show signs of taking action, Moria was surprised and immediately the heart to take action also pressed down. To be honest, tonight's attack and killing plan was actually very rough, and Moria was surprised that it could achieve the current level. Now that the trouble has reached this level, and seeing that no one has shot against him, Moria knows after a little thought that this is someone who is letting him kill. It's so. Then he doesn't have to rush to take action, come one by one, and first make the two pirate captains kill just now. But. Moria smiled, and sent a message to the shadow attendants, kill three more, and kill the others after I order them. Clank. Boom. Boom. With the participation of more than 300 powerful shadow attendants, including more than a dozen pirate captains with a bounty of more than 200 million baileys, the intensity of the battle instantly increased by several levels. After receiving Moria's order, all the shadow attendants rushed forward desperately. The four pirate captains who were besieged by the shadow servant were killed in an instant, and only the werewolf Vox survived by relying on the powerful vitality of the animal type devil fruit. Of course, this is what Moriah told the shadow attendants to release water on purpose, otherwise Vo wouldn't be able to stop it. Later, when the five pirate captains learned that their companions had died, they were forced to join the battlefield by the siege of the shadow servants, and shared a lot of pressure for Vo. The battlefield is divided into six areas. At this time, the shadow servants obeyed Moria's orders and only maintain a high intensity siege, only wounding but not killing. Coupled with the remaining six pirate captains, their strength is not weak, and the battle is temporarily stalemate according to Moria's intention. I don't know if I can hide it. Moria smiled and said casually, but it doesn't matter, as long as he doesn't make a move now then he will win. After that, Moriah began to shadow the five pirate captains who died. At this time, not far from Moriah, on the big terrace of the tallest building in the town, a five-emeter tall, sturdy and huge middle-aged man with little flesh on his body stood in front of the terrace, his eyes flickering with cold light, quietly watching the battle between the shadow servants and the pirate captains in the distance. It's a terrifying ability to explode troops. Moriah, we've been waiting for you for a long time. The middle-aged man smiled and looked at Moriah's location with anticipation in his eyes. As soon as Moriah entered the new world, they had already noticed it. It's just that before they took any action, they heard the news that Moriah challenged Kaido to be destroyed by the group, and they didn't pay attention after that. When he heard the news again, Moriah himself came to the door. Tatata. At this moment, the sound of hurried footsteps sounded, and a little girl ran behind the middle-aged man, panting, Boss Delong, just confirmed, except for the people in Happy Street and the tavern, everyone else was killed by Moriah. Us. I know, don't worry. The middle-aged man, Delong, waved his hand to interrupt and said indifferently, let him make trouble, mate, let him vent. Companion? It turns out that the boss of Delong wants to subdue Moria. Saulalo showed a clear expression. What a terrifying ability. Delong sighed, and his eyes became more and more hot, and the hot eyes have been wandering on the countless shadow servants. The John Pirates have been looking for Moria ever since they found out that Moria had escaped from Kaido. Unexpectedly, Moria came to this pirate town built by the John Pirates and the Dark Forces. This is the guide of fate. With Moria's ability, our troops will catch up with or even surpass Kaido and Charlotte Lingaling. At that time, in the whole new world, only Whitebeard can fight us. Delong muttered to himself, from beginning to end, his vision was at the level of Whitebeard. What Kaido? During the rock period, he was just a trainee crew. At that time, on the Rock's pirate ship, Captain John's strength was on par with Whitebeard and Golden Lion, and Charlotte Lingaling was not as strong as him, 
and could only be ranked behind him. But, well, thinking of the development of Whitebeard and others and Captain John after the disbandment of the Rock's pirate ship, Diran showed a wry smile and sigh like an old father. Originally, during the Rock's pirates, Captain John, who was still comparable to the Whitebeard and the Golden Lion, was quickly widened in the subsequent development. After the era of rocks, the world of pirates quickly entered the era of the three legendary pirates of Whitebeard, Golden Lion and Roger. Then, when Roger was finally boiled to death, the Golden Lion died and retired, and the Red Earl was also arrested, when only Whitebeard was alone. Kaido, the once despised trainee crew and Charlotte Lingaling, have risen again. In terms of strength, John and Kaido and Charlotte Lingaling are not much different, maybe even stronger. But this force is a little worse. Kaido has a King Addiction Center, which has continuously sent troops to him, and has accumulated a huge number of troops in recent years. Charlotte Lingaling has given birth to many children. Now these children have grown up, and they have also formed a family as a bond to subdue a large number of pirates. Coupled with the explosive ability of the Soul Soul Fruit, the future Four Emperor Aunt has already begun. A prototype. And the John Pirates are miserable. Because Captain John is so obsessed with treasure, he joins his pirate group. As long as he grabs the treasure, he will hand it in, or he will die if he doesn't. Think about the treasures that you have worked so hard to grab, and you have to hand them over. That's fine. After all, it's okay to pay some protection fees, but it's too much to pay all of them. The reason why everyone wants to be the Pirate King is because the Pirate King has everything in the world, treasure, fame, power. Look how important the treasure is, and it turns out that Captain John will only let the horses run and not fatten them. Doesn't this cost the lives of these pirates? Over time. Fewer and fewer pirates are willing to join the John Pirates, but the pirates under the John Pirates have left one after another, turning around and joining Kaido and Charlotte Lingaling. For this reason, the John Pirates, the Beast Pirates and the Big Mom Pirates clashed a lot, but the results were shocking. The Hundred Beasts Pirates and the Big Mom Pirates had the upper hand. When the top combat power was indistinguishable, the combat power of the middle and lower levels became the key to the outcome. The John Pirates, which has basically no pirates under its umbrella, is naturally not an opponent. As time goes on, the John Pirates site is getting smaller and smaller, and the number of staff is getting smaller and smaller. So now, even the pirate town established with the Dark Forces has De Long, the deputy captain of the John Pirates, to guard it. No way, without DeLong to guard, the deterrent power of the John Pirates is obviously not enough for those pirates who don't know the sky and the sky, because they all know that they have no one. So for a long time, the John Pirates have been trapped in the shortage of troops and unable to expand their territory. Captain John is very powerful and famous, but he just can't compare to Whitebeard. And now, everything will change. Based on what DeLong has seen now, among Moria's shadow attendants, there are not only a large number, but also many of them are powerful, reaching the level of Rear Admiral or above. This made Diran very satisfied. In this way, the middle and lower levels have all the combat power, and it is still the kind that will not betray. Of course, DeLong understands that the premise of all this is that Moria must be subdued and completely included. In this regard, DeLong is very confident. In fact, at the beginning, Moria assimilated more than 30,000 people into shadow attendants. When he launched the second attack, DeLong's arrogance and arrogance already felt that Moria moved his hand, and also felt the shadow. Waiter. Uh. However, DeLong, who originally wanted to get Moria's explosive ability, did not stop it, not only to test the strength of the shadow attendant but also to completely subdue Moria. He let Moria's chaos. As a for the loss of the dark forces in this process, DeLong doesn't care anymore. As long as Moria can be subdued, everything is worth it. 
In other words, Moria's shadow servant ability is worthy of Diran's treatment. Chapter 13 Want to go? Late. Seeking for collection and recommendation. It really doesn't work. Moria looked weird and stood up. At this time, his shadow servant transformation was completed, and the shadow core added five more powerful men who could cover the whole body with armed color and domineering. It's just that he can't understand the John pirates who are guarding here. He is no longer a provocation, he is simply humiliating the John pirates, so that he will not stop him. After that, this pirate town is considered a waste. Forehead. Just thinking of this, Moria suddenly froze, looked around, and suddenly found that this person was almost killed by himself, and this pirate town would be abolished if he didn't make a move. But. Why do you think so much? Anyway, he wasn't going to let the John pirates go. He killed them all. All killed. Moria ordered decisively, and the shadow servants changed their previous water release state and swarmed up. At the same time, Moriah also manipulated the shadow to condense his domineering armament and turned into a shadow spear to stab at the six pirate captains who were still struggling. Are you going to die? The attack intensity at this moment far exceeded the limit that the six pirate captains could bear. At this moment, they have a premonition that their journey has come to an end, and there is no ship that can carry them in the future. Morlia. I won't let you go even if I'm a ghost. Is this the end of my dream? Morlia. With the final unwilling roar of the six pirate captains, Moriah's shadow gun, Zizizi. Zai. Pierced their hearts. Then the shadow attendants attacked the six pirate captains. Puff. Puff. Six consecutive sounds of heavy objects falling to the ground sounded. Since then, the 28 pirate captains who came to this pirate town and their pirates have all died. Death. However. Still no one cares about Moriah. Don't you take action yet. This time Moriah was completely shocked. Couldn't the people in the John pirates see that he was just delaying time before, and now that everyone has been killed, no one has come to him. This. Isn't it scary? Probably. Ha ha. Moria suddenly laughed at himself, but he didn't expect his strength to be enough to deter others from moving. Of course. It's impossible, Moria knows this, and can only say that someone is still releasing water. Um. In this case, let's continue to make the last six pirate captains shadow servants. Moria thought so. Then he asked Shadow Servant to stop and protect him around him, until his Shadow Servant became the last six pirate captains. In a minute. No one really came to stop Moria, and the newly released six pirate captains and Shadow Attendants stood by his side. The purpose at the beginning is basically achieved. The quantity and quality of Shadow Servants are basically enough. Next, it's the rest of the people. Moria looked faintly at the central area of the town, and sneered in her heart. If these guys were silent, do they think they would let them go? How naive! Since he first crossed over, he had been served by a whip for three years when he failed to take refuge in Kaido. Since then, Moria knew what kind of world this was. There is no right or wrong here, only strong and weak. Weakness is the original sin. As Lao said, the weak do not even have the right to choose death. Therefore, in order to become stronger, Moria will not have any compassion, not to mention that there are not many good people here, they are all people who are ready to be killed. Moria naturally has no psychological burden. Go on, kill everyone else. Moria ordered, then walked out of the corner to the street and walked towards Happy Street. At the same time, the shadow army formed by the shadow servants was also instantly teleported to Moria through the shadows and killed towards the central area. That guy. Is trying to kill us all? In front of the store on Happy Street, the royal sister frowned, looking at Moria coming and the shadow core rushing in, with a heavy heart. 
Then she turned her head to look at the tallest house, but there was still no movement. Sister Wu looked ugly and said loudly, Lord DeLong, are you still not taking action? Quiet. No respond. It seemed that there was no one in the tallest building, but Ajai heard that he was domineering, and clearly felt that there was a powerful presence there. It was an existence that made her fearful. If the adults don't take action, it means that the cooperation between the underground dark forces and the John Pirates is over. After Uji dropped the cold words, she quietly waited for Delong's response. And many more. In the distance, Moria suddenly stopped the shadow attendants, watching this scene with great interest, not in a hurry to shoot. This. It seems that there is an infighting. Moria wanted to laugh a little. Sure enough, these days, relying on others is worse than relying on yourself. Big sister, why don't we take action and kill Moria? No need. The worry flashed in Sister Rue's eyes, she waved her hand, and rejected the suggestion of the big man in black behind her. The attitude of Mr. Delong from the John Pirates on the highest floor made her feel a little cold, and she felt something was wrong. It is not advisable to stay here for a long time, we will leave immediately. Sister Ru said with a solemn expression, and was about to take people away. I want to go, it's too late. At this time, Moria sneered, and with a thought, the shadow core moved through the shadows and surrounded the entire happy street and the location of the tavern. Only these two places are alive now. The tallest building is also in Happy Street, but Moriah deliberately let Shadow Servant bypass it. Some people actually let it go. In order to be safe, Moriah will naturally not refuse, and the people here in Happy Street will be dealt with first. Kill. Moriah looked cold and ordered. All Shadow Servants attacked together, and instantly rushed towards Happy Street like a wave, killing anyone they saw, no matter who it was. Molia, we are just staff. We are innocent. Don't kill us. I. I'm going to kill you. Molia. These people went from begging for mercy to desperate counterattack, Moria saw it, but he was indifferent, saying that if he killed everyone, he naturally didn't care if you were a staff member. Ziz easy. The people who were killed were shot through the head or the heart by the blade. Because a complete shadow is to be left. The head cannot be beheaded, otherwise the swallowed shadow will be discounted, and the life energy will be reduced. This is a small flaw in the ability of Shadow Shadow Fruit. Moria didn't shoot from behind, but used energy the power devours the shadows of the dead and turns them into life energy, which is stored in his shadow. The tide-like shadow attendants swarmed up, and among them, there were many strong people like Vox the werewolf. The result is naturally not much suspense. In just an instant, among the seven or eight thousand people in Happy Street and the tavern, only one hundred people were killed. These are the black-clothed men led by Sister Rue, and their strength is actually quite good. Several of them can be armed with domineering and domineering. This made Moria a little surprised, even if there are such strong ones among those pirate captains, after all. The great roots of this period are much more cruel than those in the Luffy period in the original book. Anyone who can walk through the first half of the great route to the new world and still survive. That is all the experience of countless battles, and the strength will not be weak. But the gods of the dark forces are actually comparable to those pirate captains who have experienced many battles, which is something Moria did not expect. Chapter 14 John Pirates Deputy Captain Diran. This group of people is definitely not easy. Moria stepped back slightly. The guards have this kind of strength, and the strength of the royal sister and the black clothed man who doesn't look weak behind him will definitely not be any worse. Moria is right to be cautious. He let the shadow servants continue to attack, hiding behind him. Moria, how about letting us go? Sister Ru said begging for mercy, but her tone was unusually calm, even if the shadow attendants surrounding them were already in and out of the circle, it was dark at first glance. Among them, 
there are more than a dozen strong shadow attendants who can cover their bodies with armed arrogance, and can kill the guards who are desperately resisting for her in less than a minute. But even so, Sister Ru was still very stable, Moria could not see a trace of panic in her eyes, only deep calm. It seemed that the threats from the shadow servants were just a drizzle to her, not worth mentioning, which made Moria curious. Are these guys really from the dark forces? It's the same with everyone else. Moria frowned as she watched from the back, secretly guessing that not only the royal sister was calm, but the other black clothed men were also calm. As if they are all cold robots, they don't look like people from the dark forces who are mercenary, but more like professionally trained soldiers, or killers. How about it, Moriah, killing us won't do you any good. We people of the Dark Forces never care about the disputes between your pirates. We are just making money. With your strength, build a pirate town with us. The wealth you can get is unimaginable. Seeing that Moria didn't reply immediately, Sister U persuaded her a few more words, and wanted to bring Moria in to work together. For things like wealth, as long as the strength is strong enough, it is just a number. Moria sneered when she heard the words, and was not interested in what Sister Ru said. In a world where the strong are respected, wealth has always been linked to strength. Without strength and wealth, it is called a fat sheep, waiting to be slaughtered. But what if you have strength but no wealth? If you slaughtered the fat sheep, you will get wealth, so Moria never worries about money, but only about whether he is strong enough. Kill. All on. After confirming once again that the guy from the John Pirates would not shoot, Moria ordered. At the same time, he controlled the shadows into countless shadow spears and killed them towards the black clothed guards. S H H H H H H H. Boom. Clank. The addition of Moria instantly increased the intensity of the battle, and matched the familiar combat style. All the shadow servants swarmed up and completely destroyed these guys with a deadly attack method. The remaining black clothed men of the dark forces are all good, but they did not stop the siege of all the shadow servants at this moment. Just persisted for ten seconds. The shadow attendants destroyed these big men in black, leaving only Sister Ru and a big man in black who had been following behind her. S H H H H H H Call out. Moria controlled the shadow gun to shoot at Sister Ru and the big man in black at high speed, and the other shadow attendants also attacked. Tatata. Just when the attack was about to come, Sister Ru and the big man in black actually used the moon step to fly into the sky, making the shadow attendants flutter in the air, and escaped Moria's shadow gun attack. Moon step. CP0. Seeing the steps of Sister Ru and the big man in black, Moria thought subconsciously. Molia, you will pay for this. Sister Ru stepped on the suspended air and said coldly to Moria. That's later too. Now you have to die. Moria sneered, waved her hand, and countless shadow guns shot out of the shadows on the ground, shooting at Sister Ru and the big man in black through an arc that was difficult to judge. S H H H H H H S H H H H H Sister Ru and the big man in black saw this scene, they turned around and left without saying anything else. In the air, they are like two flexible petrels, using the moon step to avoid Moria's shadow gun attack while flying to the outside of the island. Occasionally, they couldn't escape and the two of them also smashed Moria's shadow gun covered with armed color and domineering with one punch. Metverse app, Philo Meteorite Novel Downloader? From Meteorite Pavilion 143 131 600. Meteorite Pavilions, 143 131 600. This surprised Moria. Domineering is very strong. The speed is also very fast. The strength is not small. Through several attacks from Sister Ru and the black clothed man, Moria judged that she could not keep these two, or that she might not be an opponent if she confronted them head. 
So Moriah silently retracted the shadow gun attack, and looked at the two people who were far away in the air, thinking. These two are so strong, why didn't they stop me? Did they escape? Moria was surprised, and then ignored it, but looked at the tallest building. I don't know if the John pirates are also very strong. It shouldn't be so weak. Moria secretly guessed that after seeing the strength of Sistru and the big man in black, he felt a little bit of retreat, and decided to retreat first if something went wrong. What? Where did the people go? Just thinking about it, Moria suddenly discovered that the John pirates who had seen the domineering perception had disappeared for some time. Clank. At this moment, two metal collisions sounded high in the distance. Then. S-H-H-H-H-H. Two figures flew from the direction where Sistru and the big man in black left. Bump. Two large pits were smashed into the street ten meters away in front of Moria, causing a cloud of dust. What a surprise! After the dust dissipated, and after seeing who was in the two pits, Moria was shocked and smiled at the same time. The people in the big pit are the royal sister and black clothed man who Moria thinks that she may not be her opponent. At this time, the two of them both had blood overflowing from the corners of their mouths, and knelt down on one foot in the big pit, with ugly and heavy expressions on their faces. Bump. At this moment, a huge figure fell from the sky, just opposite to the big pit in front of Moria, looking like she was blocking Sistru and the big man in black together with Moria. The person who came was Diron, the deputy captain of the John Pirates. I don't know why he suddenly attacked the people of the Dark Forces as partners. This change made Moria somewhat inexplicable and curious, so he did not trust to leave. But he has secretly sent the strongest 10,000 ordinary shadow attendants to the boat outside the small town island and let them leave. Only those weaker more than 20,000 ordinary shadow attendants and 28 pirate captains, Victor and Anig were left on standby. Because Moriah now knows that this big man of the John pirates, even the royal sister and the big man in black who can break up his shadow gun covered with armed domineering guns, can easily and instantly injure him. That strength is definitely not what he is now. He can handle it. So. Be prepared to retreat. At the same time, Moria ordered the shadow attendant beside Perona to bring Perona to the coast of the back mountain. Always be ready to switch places with him and leave this pirate town. Molia, these guys are dogs raised by the world government CP0, kill them first, then let's talk about it. Delong didn't look at the royal sister and the black clothed man below, but instead a suggested to Moriah with a smile. It's really CP0. Moria was a little surprised, but he hadn't spoken yet, and the faces of the royal sister and the black clothed man under the pit changed in vain. Adiran is no longer something they can deal with, and with Moria's annoying shadow ability, they're probably going to be less fortunate this time. Thinking of this, Sister Who quickly stood up, grabbed in front of Moria, and hurriedly said to Delong, Lord Delong, if you don't abide by the agreement to protect us, you still want to kill us, are you really not afraid of our darkness? Will the people from the forces never cooperate with you again? And after this kind of thing came out, no one dared to do business with the John Pirates again. You will also be excluded from all the Dark Forces, and you will not be considering the John Pirates in future intelligence and underground weapons transactions. Are you sure you want to kill us? Sister Ru told Delong about the stakes, hoping to eliminate Delong's murderous intention. As long as Delong doesn't shoot, Moria is alone and the two of them are still confident to leave. Chapter 15 The Return of Life It's a pity that Delong is just Yeoyao's head, smiled and didn't care. Is it not clear enough from what I said before? You are not from the Dark Forces, you are just a dog CP0 raised by the world government. Besides, as long as Moria joins us, the people of the Dark Forces can't disobey our John Pirates. Delong looked at Moria with hot eyes. With the Shadow Servant, there would be an endless army. 
the John Pirates instantly came to the ranks of the New World hegemony contenders. When the time comes, the people of the Dark Forces will come to them to cooperate. So Delong doesn't take Sistru's words to heart at all, let alone what a CP0 said. I believe that people from the Dark Forces know the identity of Sistru and won't say anything more. He only cares about Moriah's attitude. Moria, who was suddenly named, was stunned for a moment, then shrugged and said, let's not talk about whether to join or not, kill the dog raised by the world government first, I agree. Fuck. Before he finished speaking, Ling Lai's coolness hit his lower body, Moria's hair stood upside down, and he quickly retreated to avoid a tomato long leg deg attack from Sister who didn't talk about martial arts. The strong sound of wind swept between her legs, and Moria felt cool. He couldn't help feeling chills in his heart, but also a little angry, what's the matter, he was almost handed over before he had drawn his gun and shot. Fortunately I escaped. Moria wiped an invisible cold sweat on her head. At the same time, the big man in black also rushed towards Delong and punched out, but Delong punched him back into the pit, but it also bought a little time for Uji. Tread. Tread. After getting this moment of hindering Delong, Sistru did not hesitate and flew over Moria's head with a moon step. This process was only for a moment. Except for Moria, the shadow attendants didn't respond, and the royal sister flew away. Fuck. When I'm so bullied. A woman, not only had to hand over his gun, but also rode directly over his Moriah head. He can endure this, even if your legs are long. Shadow stream falls. Moria turned around, squatted down on one foot, put both hands on the shadow, and shouted loudly. With the thoughts together, the shadow suddenly flowed, and quickly rolled up a thousand meter high shadow waterfall in the direction of Uji's advance, and rolled back to the Uji who was not very high at this time. Trouble's ability. Sister Ru scolded secretly, the road ahead was blocked, and she could only condense the armed color and domineering punch and smash the shadow waterfall that swept in front of her. But. Sister Ru saw that her eyes darkened, and another wave of shadow waterfalls called towards her. It's not that easy. Moria smiled, and the endless shadow waterfall slapped at Sisteru one after another, and Sisteru broke up one wave after another. Boom. Boom. After continuing to disperse the two waves of waterfall shadows, on the other side, Delong, who had already dealt with the big man in black, actually flew over with a moon step blocking the back of Sister Ru. How do you feel that anyone can use the moon step? Moria looked a little envious. You can't run away. Delong came to the back and top of Sister Ru, and there were not many harsh words. After all, he waved his fist condescendingly, and punched the back of Sister Ru's head with a very fast punch. There was a shadow waterfall in the front, and Delong's attack in the back. Sister Ru knew how to deal with it. Turning her back to Moria's shadow falls, Sister Ru chose to ignore Moria's attack, and clenched her fists and crossed her arms to resist Diran's terrifying blow. Zheng. Delong, who was nearly six meters tall, punched the hands crossed in front of Sister Ru's face, and the terrifying force caused the surrounding space to slightly distort. Boom. There was no accident. Sister Ru was not Delong's opponent. She was punched into Moria's shadow falls. The huge force made her pierce the shadow falls directly, and she crossed a straight line and landed in front of her original Happy Street store. Another big hole was smashed into the ground. S H H H H H H H H H H H H H H H H H. Moria didn't wait for the dust to dissipate. With a thought, more than a dozen shadow guns covered with domineering armed colors were like tightening springs, and instantly bypassed the ground and shot at Sistru in the pit. Puff puff. The domineering body was broken up by Delong, and Sister Ru, who was seriously injured, was powerless to resist, was stabbed by the shadow gun, and died without any suspense. Bump. At this time, 
Diran also fell from the air and stood opposite Moriah. The two have just cooperated in this series, and they have a tacit understanding, at least Delong thinks so. Therefore, the eyes he looked at Moriah became more and more hot. Moriah's chrysanthemum tightened as she looked at her with such hot eyes, and she took a few steps on her back. Delong didn't care, looked at Sistru and the big man in black, and finally said to Moria with a smile, they are yours too, you can turn them into zombies. There is still some expectation in the words. Thanks. Moria was a little surprised, smiled, and naturally would not refuse. Immediately, the big man in black was assimilated by him and transformed into a shadow attendant. After all, he was also a strong man with a domineering aura covering his entire body. As Fruji, Moria chose to devour the shadow, and the return of life in the sixth style is a perfect move for cosmetic surgery. With Uji's strength, it should be possible. Although Moria doesn't care about his appearance, he doesn't like wearing a bat face all the time. His requirements are not high, he is just a little more handsome than Panon. In a minute, after everything was completed, the corner of Moria's mouth raised slightly, and he got the skill of returning life as he wished. Touching his face, if it wasn't for the circumstances, Moria wanted to try the cosmetic effect of returning life immediately. This on the side, seeing Delong, who was only a black-clothed man who became a shadow attendant, was a little puzzled. You can't make zombies 100%? Diran asked with a frown. This is very important. If it can't be 100%, the effect of Shadow Servant will be greatly reduced. This is not a zombie, it is a Shadow Servant. Moriah didn't answer Diran's question, but corrected his name for Shadow Servant. Morlia. A cold light flashed in Delong's eyes. Facing his question, Moriah's reaction and tone seemed to be a little too calm, which was not in line with common sense. But he wasn't going to get into it now, but instead invited, join our John Pirates, Moriah. Join us, and neither the world government nor Kaido will target you again. Even with your stiff shadow servant ability, and the top combat power of our John Pirates, the situation in the whole new world changed instantly, and only Whitebeard can be our opponent. At that time, after a few years of development, the next man to become One Piece must be Captain John. The more Delong talked, the more excited he became, and the light and shadow in his eyes were full of brilliant future. At this moment, as if the throne of One Piece, as long as Moria agrees, they can get it instantly. Moria kept a polite smile, and he quietly looked at Diran without speaking. He is not interested in men who become, Roger One Piece and even keeps a distance from men who have these terrifying thoughts. Cough cough. After Delong enjoyed it for a while, seeing that Moria had no expression, he was immediately grinned and returned to normal. How about it? Moria. Diran stretched out his right hand to Moria and invited again, be our. No. One Piece's companion. Do not. I don't want to be One Piece's man or One Piece's companion, I just want to let myself go. Moria shook her head in her heart and refused, but on the surface she nodded and smiled, okay. But before Diran was excited, Moria shook his head again and said, as long as you are stronger than me, it is not impossible to join you, otherwise. The words were not finished, but Diran already understood what Moria meant. The strong will not surrender to the weak, it is such a simple truth. In order to convince you, you should go with all your shadow attendants. Delong spread his hands and said confidently, in short, use all your strength, let alone defeat me, as long as you can make me bleed, you will win, I will turn around and leave, let you go. Ha ha. Moria smiled on the surface and what was in her heart? Just listen to Delong's big words. Today, Mori only has the choice of surrendering to the John Pirates, and the rest are jokes. But Moria didn't care. Anyway, 
the 10,000 shadow attendants who had just been evacuated by him had already left the town by boat at this time, and he could leave any time he wanted. Delong didn't know that Moriah could switch places with Shadow Servant. No one knew about this ability, they only knew that Moriah could switch places with his shadow. This is also the reason why Moriah is still calm at this time. So, try it first and see if you can kill this guy, and then go. Thinking of this, Moria smiled at Diran, okay. It's like this, then we will fight. If you are as strong as you said, it would be good to join you. Ha <laughs> ha. Diran laughed loudly when he heard the words, beckoned to Moria, and confidently said, come on, my comrade, Moonlight Moria. Chapter 16 Big Move, Shadow Emperor. The bright moon hangs high. Under Baijai's moonlight, there were only Moria, Delong and a few small towns, which were unusually quiet. On the dilapidated street, Delong looked at Moria across from the big pit with a relaxed expression, without any intention of doing it first. This means to completely subdue me. Seeing Delong's attitude, Moria understood that this was showing him absolute strength to suppress and wanted him to completely surrender. However, Moria did not rush to act, but quickly thought about countermeasures in her heart. This guy must be very domineering, and his speed must be very fast. Otherwise, the royal sister who is proficient in the six styles and the big man in black will not be able to escape the attack and be beaten back. So, you can't hit it hard, you have to entangle him and trap him, and then you have the chance to kill him. Moria's eyes flickered at Delong. He was very interested in Delong's powerful body and domineering. If he could devour Diran's shadow before going to snatch Barrett, Moria's strength would be much stronger, and the chance of success in snatching Barrett would be much higher. Of course, the premise is to be able to kill this guy Diran. What? Don't you dare to shoot? Delong showed a look of contempt. The John Pirates wanted a companion who could accompany them to the end, not a waste who didn't even have the courage to attack him. Because of this kind of waste, even if you join them, you won't go far, and they will be easily killed in future battles. That's it. Shadows cover the ground. For Delong's sarcasm, Moria smiled indifferently, and with a thought, he manipulated all the shadows to quickly cover the ground in a radius of one kilometer. Soon, Delong's feet are also dark shadows. Is this your attack? Flooring? Delong didn't understand Moria's operation and said sarcastically. Lay your horse's floor, and your whole family will lay the floor. Moria's face darkened, after scolding secretly. His mind moved, this guy didn't plan to defend, so he didn't need to hide it. Thinking of this, Moria directly controlled the shadows to converge on Delong, and Delong did not resist. Soon, a shadow sphere with a diameter of 50 meters appeared in the town. This guy is really big. Moria retreated to the edge of the shadow sphere and smiled. After feeling that Diran had been wrapped in the center of the shadow sphere, his mind moved. Shadow Stream Blast. Immediately, under Moriah's control, the entire shadow squeezed towards Delong, and the flowing shadow went to the places where his ears, chrysanthemum, nose, mouth, etc. could enter the inside of his body. Your armed sex is very domineering, then I will directly attack your inside, you can't even cover your internal organs with your armed sex domineering. Moriah thought. This is his countermeasure. Originally, he wanted to use the shadow stream to cover the ground to expand the area, and then let the shadow stream sweep back, leaving Delong with nowhere to escape, and finally trapping Delong. Unexpectedly, Delong didn't plan to avoid it, and he was just tough, Moria liked it. Um. This is. Fuck. Moria was thinking about harvesting Diran, but judging from the perception feedback from the shadow, this guy's armed arrogance also blocked the chrysanthemum and other places, and did not give the shadow any space to penetrate. And a force came from the shadow, and Moria could feel that his shadow was being propped up by something. 
Very hard. This is Moriah's strongest feeling. Is it domineering? Or what? Moriah's face was solemn. If it was a domineering armed look, it would be the fluid armed look domineering, Liu Ying, that opened the shadow. If that's the case, then. It's time to run. Moriah, who was thinking about it, quickly put the 28 pirate captain's shadow attendant, shadow attendant Dunig, as well as Victor and the black clothed man who had just been shadowed into the shadow space, leaving only more than 20,000 ordinary shadow attendants. Next to Kong. Kong. At this moment, on the shadow sphere with a diameter of 50 meters, pale white sharp bone spurs suddenly kept piercing out of it. Soon, Moriah's shadow dissipated, and the shadows of the buildings he controlled also returned to the buildings. Moriah's shadow also returned to him, and he didn't continue to control the shadows of those buildings, because he was about to run away. Devil fruit abilities are still bones. This is the pirate version of Jun Maru. Moriah sighed inwardly. At this time, the shadow sphere had disappeared, replaced by a bone sphere covered with sharp bone spurs. Afterwards, the bone balls flowed and changed and regained his body. It was dare long. I didn't expect your shadow fruit ability to awaken, no wonder you were able to escape from Kaido. Diran, who sensed where the scattered shadow was, guessed something, and at the same time that Moria's fruit awakened, the eyes looking at Moria became more and more hot. In order to completely subdue Moria, Diran once again said to himself, Is there any other big move? I will use it all, I will follow. Have. Then use it, Moriah. Diran said domineeringly. This is my strongest move. If you can break my move, then it's a matter of course for me to join you. Moriah, whose eyes flickered, smiled and shrugged. After all, this is a world where the strong are respected, right? Very good. Diran was very satisfied with Moriah's consciousness stretched out his right hand to make a move, and said, then let me see how strong your strongest move is. Moriah. Ha ha. Moriah showed a meaningful smile, and then looked straight, and suddenly shouted to DeLong, the best actor. After speaking, I quickly added in my heart, all shadow attendants, kill him. Boom. More than 20,000 ordinary shadow attendants rushed towards DeLong like a tide, and at the same time blocked Moria's figure. Taking advantage of the moment when Diran couldn't see him, Moria immediately switched places with the shadow attendant who stayed by Perona's side. Delong was stunned by Moria's sudden shouting, and then he couldn't see Moria, only that Moria's breath suddenly disappeared. But before he had time to think about anything, the shadow servants had already swarmed up. He didn't care about anything else and while fighting the shadow servants, he searched for Moria's position. At the same time, he also felt the domineering with all his strength, but found that Moria seemed to have disappeared. If it weren't for the continuous attacks of the shadow servants, Diran would have thought that Moria had run away. After all, shadow servant is Moria's fruit ability, and shadow servant is still fighting, so Diran takes it for granted that Moria is still nearby. Maybe it's just because of that big move, so I can't perceive him. Interesting. Are you trying to hide yourself and make a sneak attack that makes you unable to react? Diran smiled. He felt that he understood Moriah's intention and stood on the fifth floor, so his body was quietly covered with a layer of armed domineering. Although he is confident in his own strength, he must fight as if he were fighting, and vigilance is the most basic. Diran will not give Moria a chance. However, the fact is that Diran thought Moria was on the first floor, but it was actually on the tenth floor. Moria really ran away, leaving only Diran fighting a group of shadow attendants who had been abandoned by him. Over here. As soon as he and shadow servants switched places and came to the back mountain, Moria immediately grabbed Haha Perona with one hand, jumped onto a huge shadow bat five meters wide, and flew out of the town island. At this time, Diran is still fighting with the shadow servants. 
it can't be said that it is a battle, it is Diran who is slaughtering the shadow servant. Without Moria's shadow attendant supplying life energy, it disappeared with a single blow from Delong, and disappeared. With the passage of time, there were fewer and fewer shadow attendants, and Delong's heart became heavier and heavier. Until the last shadow servant was blasted away by his punch and disappeared. Diran had to accept a humiliating fact for him. Moriah escaped from him. Morlia. Delong stood stiffly on the dilapidated street, spit out a low murmur from his mouth. Moonlight pulled his shadow, looking at his own shadow, recalling Moria's Shadow King, ultimate move, Delong's mouth twitched. A long time. Diran looked up at the sky, and suddenly roared, Molia, how dare you play with me? Next time I will kill you directly. Chapter 17 Workers are still superior. Next day. At noon, the edge of a bare stone mountain island. On the coast formed by the accumulation of smooth boulders the size of thumbs. Moriah and Perona were sitting on the ground, eating and walking each barbecue. On the side, three chef shadow attendants displayed their cooking skills on the fire, and roasted meat for the two of them. Noisy. Moriah fiercely bit down on a piece of meaty roast meat in his hand, eating while looking at the newspaper in the other hand. This was brought by the news bird who wanted to run when I saw him this morning, and was finally killed and grilled by him. It wrote about what Moriah did in the pirate town last night, and also revealed his shadow attendant ability. In particular, it is stated that the strength of the shadow servant is basically the same as before his death, and he can use domineering. This time, Moria knew that for those forces who were eager to explode troops, as expected, he could only be his own or dead, and there was no third choice. Um. Moria suddenly frowned, and after reading one of the reports, a burst of anger rose in her heart. It's even written that I'm going to capture Barrett's shadow. Fuck. Seeing the end, Moria couldn't help but get angry. It would be fine if he just revealed his devil fruit ability, he didn't care. But before he even started, everyone knew that he wanted to capture Barrett's shadow. How did someone know of his plans? Moria couldn't understand. In the newspaper, they wrote speculation that he might snatch Barrett after the Navy attacked Barrett in the near future. Although it is guesswork, there is a certain tone between the lines in the report, and then it is linked to Moria's shadow servant ability. Don't think about it. Whoever reads it will believe the speculation in the report. Fuck. So depressed. Moria could imagine how the Navy would be wary of him after reading this newspaper. This made his initial wishful thinking come to nothing. According to his original plan, when Barrett is defeated, he will use more than 10,000 shadow attendants to attack the ordinary navy. Then he uses the ability to constantly exchange positions with shadow servant to achieve the effect of flying thunder god similar to teleportation. In the end, he relied on his ability to crush the ordinary navy, forcing Carp and other top combat powers to protect those ordinary navies. And he will let Victor and other powerful shadow waiters go and take Barrett away and then he will leave by swapping places with one of the shadow waiters. If he follows Moriah's plan, he feels that the chances of success are still very high. But now that the news is saying this, the navy is vigilant, and Moria is basically difficult to succeed. After all, the navy is not a fool. If he knew Moria's plan in advance and let Barrett be taken away by him, the navy would lose a lot of face. Mate. The news of the world is it? When I free up my hands, I will kill you all. The more she thought about Moriah, the angrier she became. She threw the newspaper into the fire and burned it. Sigh dark and cruel. When he is strong enough, everything in this world news agency, including the boss behind the scenes, will be destroyed one by one. How many days are there from the small island country that Barrett is about to attack? After being sullen for a while, Moria summoned a few navigators and asked. If you don't stop on the way, with the speed of a naval warship as the standard, 
you can basically reach it in one and a half days. One of the navigator shadow attendants replied. Day and a half. Moria thought about it, it is not far, it can even be said that it is very close, if you fly with all your strength, it may be there in half a day. Exactly. Now think about the countermeasures again, the initial plan cannot be implemented. Moriah fell into deep thought while eating the meat. Perona, who was on the side, had already eaten and fell asleep. Night. The ten thousand shadow attendants who left early finally came to this small island looking for a sense of Moria. Looking at the dark shadows on the coast that almost merged with the night, Moria frowned secretly. Actually, the plan at the beginning was a bit hasty. There are so many shadow attendants that cannot be placed in the shadow space. If you want to take a boat, the target is too big, and you may be beaten before you get close to the navy. So, the next priority is to expand the shadow space first. Moria, who wanted to understand, began to think about how to expand the shadow space. Devouring people's shadows is no good. He devoured the shadows of more than 10,000 people in a small town before, and his shadow space has only increased from 10 cubic meters to 20 cubic meters. The efficiency is too low. Perhaps only by swallowing non-living shadows such as houses can the shadow space be expanded with maximum efficiency. Moria secretly guessed that when Pirate Town controlled other non-living shadows for the first time, he found that his shadow space became larger. Do not. It should be the shadow space of the houses and ships he controls, temporarily connected to his shadow space. That's why he felt that his shadow space became larger, and he was able to instantly transfer 10,000 shadow attendants to those ships docked in the port through the shadow space. But in fact, his shadow space has not become larger. When he is not controlling other shadows, his shadow space is still only 20 cubic meters. Moriah judged that swallowing the shadow of non-living objects should be able to expand his shadow space more than swallowing the shadow of a person. 10 o'clock the next morning. The sun rises relatively high. The rocky hill in the middle of the island is actually not small, with a height of about 200 meters. The overall shape is like a pyramid. At this time, Moria stood alone on the back side of the stone mountain, which was the side of the shadow. He wanted to devour the shadow of this rocky mountain. It shouldn't reduce the quality of your shadow. Moria was a little nervous. Before, he had been reluctant to devour the shadows of other non-living objects, because he was afraid that the material would not be as good as the black knife. But now, in order to expand the shadow space, it must devour other things. He can't find a million black knives and autumn water to swallow his shadow, let alone find it. Fight. Whether it is a worker or a superior person depends on this wave. Moria's heart was ruthless, no matter what, her mind moved, and her shadow began to devour Shishan's shadow. Only by expanding the shadow space, can he fit 10,000 shadow attendants into it approach the navy more covertly, and have a chance to capture Barrett's shadow. And as long as it succeeds, it swallows Barrett's shadow. Then Moriah would instantly be among the top ranks in the world, and no one could knock him out or kill him with a single punch. And as long as he didn't knock him out with a single blow, Moriah could use the trick of swapping positions with Shadow Servant to leave gracefully and he could use his life energy to instantly recover from his injuries. In a word, it is safe to advance and retreat. As long as Barrett's shadow is swallowed, Moria can walk like a crab in this world where he kills people if he doesn't agree. Even through the ability to swap positions with the shadow servant, he can get up in the morning to fight Kaido, then go to the navy headquarters to inspect work at noon and finally go to Charlotte Lingling in the afternoon to tease and molest. Her daughters, by the way, category is domineering when he sees the future. Just thinking about it, the future is so beautiful, how can Moria not fight? The big deal is that the strength of the shadow has really deteriorated, so he can just find another big sharp level shadow to swallow it. Chapter 18 The Shadow of Gravity 
three minutes later. Just like when Moria devoured the Black Blade Autumn Water, after Moria devoured Shi Shan's shadow completely, Shi Shan disappeared, as if it never existed. There was only one smooth and flat stone mirror on the entire island where the original stone mountain was, as if it had been cut from the bottom by a sword from a peerless swordsman. Perona on the opposite side looked at this magical scene with small eyes the middle stared big, his hands struggling to run out of Victor's arms. Well. Not bad. Moria stood on the spot and sensed it. Now the shadow space has expanded to a cube space with a length, width and height of 40 meters, which is equivalent to a volume of 64,000 cubic meters. This space even in terms of the height of 3 or 4 meters in this world, is enough to hold 20 or 30,000 people. More than 10,000 shadow attendants are more than enough. In this way, the capacity problem of shadow space is solved. The next step is to see if the intensity of the shadow has changed. With some trepidation, Moria separated his shadow into his own appearance, and then punched his own shadow. When? It sounded like a bell tolling. Call. Moriah was relieved, although he already knew that the shadow strength had not weakened, but he was relieved after testing it himself. And. Not only did the strength not weaken, Moria also felt his shadow, with a sense of heaviness, as if his shadow had become heavier. Thinking of this, Moria's eyes lit up, and she controlled her shadow to fly ten meters into the air and then fell down like a free fall. Bang! Click! Click! The shadow was not fast, but it landed on the ground full of rocks. Not only was the rock cracked by stepping on it, but also his feet were sunk into the rock. This shows that the shadow is very heavy now. Ha ha ha! Mori laughed, swallowing the shadow of Hedao Gushui before and obtained the shadow strength of the same material as Hedao Gushui. Now that the shadow of Shishan is swallowed, the intensity of the shadow remains unchanged, but he never thought that even something similar to weight could be obtained by swallowing the shadow. Although his shadow is not 100% as heavy as Shishan, it is half as heavy. Moria secretly guessed in her heart. And such a large weight is carried on a shadow that is only as large as Moriah, giving it the powerful power to step on rocks even if it is only a free fall from a height of 10 meters. If the speed is a little faster, wouldn't the power be more powerful? Think about it again, after Moriah swallowed the shadows of more than a dozen mountains, he obtained the shadows of the weight of five or six mountains. At that time, the random blow of his shadow would be the weight of five or six mountains smashing down, and that power, thinking of Moriah, made me excited. The future of this ability is too bright. That is. After Moriah was excited, he felt the tingling sensation in the cells of his body and frowned. It's a lot of pressure on your body when you use your abilities. Just a while ago, a tingling sensation came from the body and the continuous use of the ability for more than an hour, the body could never be torn apart. Moria secretly judged in her heart, and her fiery heart gradually returned to calm. Withdrawing the ability, let the shadow return to his feet. Although the ability is strong, it seems that a stronger body is needed to carry a stronger shadow. Moriah's body and shadow are like balloons filled with water. The shadow is water and the body is a balloon. As the water gets more and more heavier, the pressure on the balloon increases. If the balloon remains the same, the balloon will eventually burst. Only the quality of the balloon is also getting stronger and stronger. No matter how much water becomes heavier, it can carry it without breaking it, so it can bear more water and more weight. So, the question is back to strengthening the body. Moria smiled. After escaping from Wano country, he has been devouring life energy to evolve his body, and his physical strength has reached a limit that he can now achieve. After that, even if he devoured the life energy transformed from the shadow of a strong man like Uji, who is proficient in six styles, Moria's physical strength would only increase by a few kilograms. In short, 
As Moria's physical body reaches a certain level, swallowing the shadow of someone whose physical body is not as strong as him can no longer make his physical body evolve and become stronger. Only the strong people, such as Charlotte Lingerling, Barrett and other people whose bodies are much stronger than him, can make Moria's body continue to become stronger. At present, Moria's physical strength, in his perception, should not be the Delong Kiang who has the ability of bones, I don't know whether it is animal or superhuman. The shadow space problem is solved, and the strength is also solved. You can go to Barrett. I don't know if the Navy has shot Barrett. With a hint of doubt, Moria put all the shadow attendants into the shadow space, leaving only Victor to hold Perona. Moria then turned her shadow into a giant bat. Just as Moria was about to jump on the bat shadow and leave, a huge shadow suddenly enveloped Moria. What is this? Eagle? Does this mean hunting me? Moria was a little funny. In the sky, as the distance got closer, a giant eagle with a wingspan of 15 meters swooped down on Morley from the air at an angle of nearly 90 degrees. Asia. Apparently, the giant eagle treats Moria as a delicious treat. Boom. When the giant eagle approached Moria 100 meters, accompanied by a gust of wind, it stretched out two sharp claws as sharp as knives to grab Moria. I've seen someone who was sent to death, but I've never seen someone who was so eager to die. Moria smiled, he was about to leave, this giant eagle had bad eyes, and he was rushing to die. Call out. Noisy. The sharp shadow gun is thick as a bucket shot straight up from the shadow under Moria, instantly piercing the heart of the giant eagle, and then the shadow gun flowed around the giant eagle and smashed it in front of Moria. Bang! Click! The huge force caused the rocky ground to be cracked, and the giant eagle died without a few plops. Speaking of, I haven't shadowed any creatures other than humans. I don't know what the changes will be when this giant eagle is shadowed. Looking at the giant eagle, Moria touched her chin and had some thoughts in her heart. If the giant eagle is assimilated into a shadow attendant, it is a giant eagle with infinite physical strength that can fly all the time in the air. And this time to snatch Barrett, it seems to be much more concealed from the air. Even if he runs away, a giant eagle will fly away with him which is better than his own bat shadow. Mainly there is still a place to put Perona. Hey he! What an eagle! Thinking of this, Moria felt that the giant eagle came too timely. With a thought, Moria manipulated the shadow to shadow the giant eagle. Soon, a minute later, a black shadow giant eagle appeared in front of Moria. Come up! Moriah greeted Victor and jumped on the back of the giant eagle with Perona in his arms. Then the giant eagle spread its wings and flew high, taking Moria and others into the air. In order to hide, Moria let the giant eagle fly to an altitude of 7,000 meters. At this height, there will be no shadow of the giant eagle on the sea, and it is difficult to see the giant eagle with the naked eye. Only people with a wide range of perception and domineering can perceive the giant eagle. Concealment is basically no problem. Comfortable. If I knew it earlier, I would find the big bird shadow to serve as a mount. This feeling of riding the wind and waves is so refreshing. High in the sky, Moriah sat on the back of a giant eagle, enjoying the touch of the wind passing by as well as the open-minded feeling of climbing high and looking into the distance. At this moment, Moria felt that her horizons seemed to have become much wider. Chapter 19 Navy Sanying vs Barrett New World Vico Island, which is an island where the world government member states are located, is an oval-shaped terrain with high north and south ends in the middle. At this time, the island has fallen into a mess of war. Bang! Boom! Thick smoke and explosions echoed throughout the country's islands. Kill! Help! Ha ha ha! The sound of murder, help, laughter and wanton laughter spread to every corner of the island. 
The capital is located at the highest point of the island, which is the Middle Highland position. Here, the rich and luxurious palace is gone, only a pile of broken buildings and ruins remain. Barrett stood on the highest point of the ruins like a big mountain, looking around, listening to the whining of the weak around him, without a trace of strangeness on his face. It's not here yet. With some indescribable disappointment in his tone, Barrett looked at the sea outside the island, but the slaughtering order he was looking forward to did not come. Could it be? Barrett, who was about to say something, froze in vain and looked towards the sea ahead, where a naval ship appeared in his eyes. The corners of Barrett's mouth gradually widened, and then he burst out laughing ha 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 ha. Bring it on. The slaughtering order that claims to be able to easily destroy a country, as long as I defeat you, I will do what even Roger has never done before. Barrett looked arrogant, and he had a deep obsession with surpassing Roger. Roger was dead, and he could no longer complete the transcendence by defeating Roger. What he can do now is to do all the things that Roger has not done, such as destroying the world government's allied countries, such as fighting against the demon slaughter order by himself. Barrett is in these ways, to prove that he has surpassed Roger. General of the Warring States. Vigo Island has been captured, and the capital is in ruins. It's just. There are still many civilians alive and many pirates doing evil. Are we going to start an indiscriminate attack? On the sailing fleet, on the Warring States ship, a guard asked after hesitating to inform the Warring States of the situation on Vigo Island. The slaughtering order is an extreme order to carry out indiscriminate and destructive attacks on people and things in a certain area. Which naturally also includes the civilians on Vigo Island at this time. No shelling. Yay oi are in the warring states period, Tumaling is his leader, and he can choose which attack method to use. Indiscriminate destructive attacks were not among his options. After observing the situation with the binoculars, Warring states turned to the guard and ordered, Order, move forward at full speed, and after landing, give priority to the rescue of civilians. Yes. The guards stepped back and ordered the fleets. Warring states. Garp came to the warring states side with a bag of donuts and asked, Is that kid here? I haven't seen it for a while. Jean Gao glanced at the bastard who rubbed the boat and said expressionlessly. You say, is it true what the newspapers say? Garp looked at Vigo Island and asked Sengoku while eating the donut. What? Sengoku didn't respond. Garp frowned and said, you said. That little devil named Moriah can really create a shadow servant who retains all his strengths during his lifetime? Shadow servant. Hearing the words, the warring states looked solemn, Thinking of the order that Marshal Gank uh -oh, gave him privately to capture Moriah, and already believed in what was written in the newspaper. It should be true. Sengoku responded. In that case, that kid has to be caught back. Carp worried, let him outside, once he is pulled into the flag by Kaido, Captain John and others, the threat to the navy is too great. Hope that guy will come. The warring states looked heavy. Regarding Moria's arrangement, the navy was prepared. If Moria didn't come, all their arrangements would be useless. Frontal assault. Swept all the way to the palace heights. The warring states ordered that the navy's ten top warships be divided into two halves. Half of them, led by the future three major admirals, led five rear admirals and 4,500 naval soldiers logged in from the front of the South Bank port, and then advanced to the highlands of the country where Barrett is located. The other half, led by three other lieutenant generals, five major generals and 5,000 naval soldiers, logged in from the port on the north shore and advanced to the highlands of the capital. Take the civilians away. Pirates killed. Hurry up. After the navy landed on Vigo Island, they rescued the civilians while advancing towards the heights where Barrett was located. Because it is a demon slaughtering order, 
the Navy will kill all pirates without leaving any alive. This also led to the pirates who were forced by Barrett to resist fiercely, and this fierce resistance was very appealing to a Kainu. This time, the three future admirals of the Navy, the Kainu, Kizaru, and Akiji have all come. Big Fire. Bachiki and Gu. Ice Age. The combat effectiveness of the three top natural devil fruit powers is not covered, and they are pushed all the way. The pirates are either melted by magma, shot into sieves by light waves, or frozen into popsicles. Wherever the three of them passed, the magma paved the ground, frozen three feet, and deep pits blasted by light waves could be seen everywhere. The navy advanced all the way, but soon encountered obstacles. After all, the pirates were not soldiers who had to guard the palace, and they quickly dispersed when they encountered the advance of the navy. The navy had no choice but to spread out. Soon, the battle was scattered to every corner of the island, and only Kisaragi, Okiji, and Akainu pushed forward all the way to the heights where Barrett was. Warring states. Don't we need to take action? Garp asked suspiciously. After Garp and Sengoku disembarked at the South Bank port, they were left behind by Sengoku. They did not act with the Kainu and the others, but after leaving the port, they stationed on the spot with 500 naval soldiers. Hearing Karp's question at this time, Sengoku took no haste, found a flat broken stone and sat down, and said, Let a Kainu and the others go to exercise first. With their strength, it should be no problem to hold on for a day or two. When the time comes, you go to the end, and I will guard against others. Hearing that Karp didn't say anything, he also found a place to sit down. The two of them took out a bag of donuts and started a donut eating competition. Neither of them were very worried about this fight. Barrett, there's no doubt he's strong. But they have also seen through this person. This time the navy dispatched the slaughtering order, Barrett will not escape. Run away and admit that he will never get past Roger. At least Roger never evaded a battle that had been decided. So, Barrett's failure is doomed. In this day and age, no one can be beaten by the two of them together. Not even a golden lion. Half an hour later. The three of Kabru, who pushed forward with the pirates attack all the way finally saw Barrett's figure standing on the ruins from a distance. At the same time, Barrett also saw Akainu and the three of them, and suddenly a cold light flashed. What's the meaning? Cap, what about Sengoku? Didn't you come? Barrett, who saw that only the three of Kizaru came, was angry. If the slaughtering order is only at this level, then the so-called surpassing Roger is a joke. Roger wouldn't even bother with this level of slaughtering orders. Think at this point, Barrett felt humiliated by the Navy and the world government. Navy. No nonsense, Barrett shouted angrily, jumped hard, came into the air, and used the moon step to rush towards the three of Akainu at high speed. At this time, Akainu, who was melting a pirate with a punch, saw Barrett rushing towards him. Without flinching or hesitating, he jumped up and rushed towards Barrett who was attacking from the air. Big fire. The moment he jumped into the air, a Kainu clenched his right fist and the magma erupted, and a hot magma fist the size of a car blasted out. Barrett, who shot straight from the air, showed disdain on his face, just an ordinary condensed armored car domineering punch that slammed into a Kainu's magma fist. Bang! The magma exploded, and Barrett punched a Kainu's magma directly, hitting his fist. Crack! A Kainu's complexion changed, and the gap between the huge strength and the domineering look of his armed force caused the bones of his hand to crack open at the moment of confrontation. You are way behind. Barrett looked arrogant, pressed down hard, and punched a Kainu directly to the ground with a punch smashing a big hole. Then Barrett waved his fist, ready to give a Kainu a blow. At this moment, a beam of light as thick as a thigh shot from the side. Call out. 
Barrett dodged instantly, and the beam of light fell in the distance. Boom! It was as if a small sunlight exploded, and the wind pressure blew up the rocks. But before the blasting wind pressure reached here, Barrett escaped the attack, and the man had already arrived in front of Kizaru, punching him. S H H H H H H H H H H H. As soon as Kizaru turned into the light, Barrett's fist fell. Boom. The ground shook for a while, and a 50 meter diameter pit appeared on the spot, showing how powerful Barrett's punch was. Ice Age. At this time, the attack of the green pheasant also came in an instant. After the frost passed, a large ice ball with a diameter of 10 meters appeared in the pit. In the middle of the puck is Barrett, who is still keeping his fist down. Very scary. Kai Guang escaped the attack and reappeared on the collapsed house, sighing. Just when the yellow monkey's voice just fell. Click. The ice hockey shattered, and Barrett burst out of the ice, like a teleportation, and instantly appeared in front of Okiji, and punched out. Frozen ice wall. King Pheasant's expression changed, and he reacted quickly, and a nice wall appeared in front of him. The moment the ice wall was formed, Barrett's fist fell almost at the same time. Click. Boom. The ice wall did not hinder him in the slightest, and Barrett smashed the ice wall with a punch, hitting Okiji's chest. Kaz. It was the sound of the sternum splitting. Call out. This is the sound of the green pheasant being kicked away. Bump, bump. This is the sound of Okiji smashing the wall continuously. The four of them fought each other for only five seconds. The three future admirals of the navy, except Kabu, were safe and sound, and Akainu and Okiji were injured. And Barrett just twisted his neck, as if he didn't even count as a warm up. Chapter 20 Moria is very satisfied with this physical strength. For collection. That's it. Is this the so called slaughtering order? Barrett couldn't hide his disappointment and looked at the three of Kizaru with disdain. This made the three of them very angry, but there was no way, Barrett's strength was so powerful. Big Fire. Ice Age. Bachiki and Gu. The Kainu, Kizaru, and Okiji were not as strong as others. They didn't say harsh words, but only did cruel things. As soon as Barrett's voice fell, the three of them launched their signature attacks and slammed into him. Boom. Boom. Bump. The battle started in an instant, Okay, Ainu played the role of a close-up meat shield, mainly to resist damage and provide high damage, Okiji provides freezing control, and Kizaru is like Ad with various long-range light wave shooting. During this period, the three people cooperated tacitly, and various attacks were seamlessly connected. However, even so, the three Kizaru still fell into a disadvantageous position, and were injured by Barrett's heavy blows from time to time. And their attack, in the face of Barrett's powerful armed arrogance, only played a role in hindering his actions. Time flies. Barrett was very dissatisfied, and the three people who fought against him, although they were known as the three major monsters among the rookies in the navy, were even older than him but the object he wants to surpass is Roger. He was actually blocked by these three navies, which is unforgivable. These three navy soldiers are obviously not as strong as him, but their vitality is extremely strong. Especially Akai Nu, who was beaten by Barrett several times and vomited blood, still jumping around. Coupled with the cooperation of Kizaru and Okiji's abilities, Barrett was unable to solve the three in a short time. This is not what Barrett wants. What he wants is to sweep the demon slaughter order with absolute power, not even three navies can't solve it like it is now. Tread. Tread. In battle, Barrett suddenly left and flew to the side. The three of the Kizaru didn't know why, but they chased after them anyway. Soon, Barrett came to the side of the heights where a steel battleship was parked, and came to the battleship, with his hands on the plywood. Immediately, 
the entire steel battleship quickly disintegrated into particles like a nanrobot, then wrapped around Barrett's body and reassembled. After a while, a 20 meter high giant robot appeared in front of the three people who came over. This is a steel robot made by Barrett using the fusion fruit ability to combine him with a steel battleship. Get rid of you in an instant. The robot made the sound of Barrett's mechanization, and at the same time, it waved its huge mechanical fist, and punched it towards the location of the three of Cabru. Ling Lai's wind pressure hit, and the speed was not slow. The three of them quickly jumped away to avoid the attack. Boom. Kaz Kaz. The ground shook for a while, and then a 100 meter deep pit appeared. At the same time, the surrounding ground was also cracked with spider like cracks, as if it had experienced an earthquake. Bump. Boom. In the next battle, Barrett was invincible, and the three of Kizaru could only attack Barrett painlessly while avoiding fists. For a time, the whole island was shaking. Not only did Barrett's attack power become stronger, but his speed was not slow, and he was also very domineering. Soon, Okeanu and Okiji already had blue noses and swollen faces, and there was not a single spot on their bodies that was good. Only Kizaru was out of breath, but his body was spotless. As expected of the glittering fruit ability, this dodging ability is not covered, and he has never been attacked by Barrett in the whole process. Good thing. The three of Kizaru, who were about to be defeated came to a stalemate with Barrett because of the support of three lieutenant admirals of the Navy headquarters. Night. Bright moon. No, only stars in the dark sky. On Vico Island, the battle has fallen into a scorching state. After suppressing the pirates in the daytime, all the powerhouses above the admiral level besieged Barrett together, putting him in the endless sea tactics. At this time, the battlefield has gradually advanced from the highlands to the south bank port. The huge Gundam mechanic Barrett is still the most beautiful boy in the dark night, enduring the siege of Akainu and others. At this moment, I don't know whether to say Barrett is strong or weak. To say it is strong, before the top combat powers such as Carp Warring States can make a move, Barrett has already been held back by more than a dozen admirals led by the three major naval commanders in the future. You have to say weak, after all, they are the three major naval admirals in the future, and they are still capable of nature, and the naval admirals in this special period are not weak. But even so, the battle is actually still Barrett has the upper hand, even if Carp and others do not join, with Barrett's terrifying physique. Kizaru and others will eventually be defeated. It's just a matter of time. Therefore, Moriah does not know whether to say Barrett is strong or weak. But, let's not talk about the combat strength, this physical strength is absolutely terrifying. At an altitude of 5000 meters, Moriah stood on the back of the shadow servant giant eagle, looking at the island below, his eyes flickering. It was about 8 o'clock in the evening at this time, and Moria arrived here at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon during the day. At that time, Barrett had already used the ability of the fusion fruit to transform into a fusion robot and fight. Up to now, at least 6 or 7 hours have passed. Continuously using the fusion ability to fight for such a long time, coupled with the continuous use of the armed color domineering, the physical strength consumed in combination is absolutely terrifying. But listening to the sound of the battle below is still fierce, you know that Barrett is still very energetic and can fight for a long time. That's right, it's worth coming here for this terrifying physical strength. Moriah smiled, satisfied with Barrett's physical strength. Boom. Bump. The roar of the battle has been incessant and the time is slowly passing. Soon, the time came to one o'clock in the morning, when the night fell into the darkest hour. On the back of the giant eagle, Moria summoned an ordinary shadow attendant to swap places with him. 
Victor is still holding Perona and cannot be used to swap positions with him, otherwise Perona will enjoy the feeling of free fall in advance if she is not careful. Looking at Perona who was asleep in Victor's arms, Moria smiled. He felt that such a ruthless person still carried Perona's oil bottle, which was a bit incredible. I am still a good person after all. After sending himself a good person card, Moria let his shadow fly to the heights of Vico Island below. No one is there now, and Barrett's battleground has shifted to the plains town between the highlands and the South Shore port. Now, when the moon is dark and the wind is high, it is a good time for him to sneak into Vico Island. After all, it is too conspicuous during the day and easy to be seen by others, which is the most suitable now. You are waiting for me here. After Moria told Victor who was holding Perona, his mind moved, and he switched places with the shadow on the high ground of Vico Island and left. In the ruins of the Highland Palace, Moria stood beside the broken wall, and the shadow under him also returned to himself. Look through the broken window to the plains town below. Yellow light waves. Red lava. Blue and white ice. The attack of the three of Kisaragi illuminated the battlefield like a lamp in the dark night. Moriah could see that Barrett's 20 meter high body was covered by various attacks. The battle is still fierce, and I don't know what will end. Moriah is very patient, hiding in the dark, waiting quietly like a hunter, waiting for Barrett to fall, waiting for the opportunity to snatch Barrett. Chapter 21 Gar can't sit still for advancement, for collection. Soon, the night passed. The sun just showed its head, and an accident happened on the battlefield. The Warring States period did not underestimate the strength of Kizaru and others, but overestimated the strength of other navies. Not everyone is as resistant to beatings as a Kainu. When the sun was just showing his head in the morning, a lieutenant general of the Navy headquarters couldn't hold on because of his physical strength, and Barrett seized the opportunity to punch him into patties. Immediately, a chain reaction was created, and it became the beginning of a rout. Even though the three AK Ainu tried their best to stop him, within ten seconds, Barrett killed a lieutenant general and three rear admirals one after another. Warring states, I'm up. At this time, Carp couldn't sit still, he couldn't watch the Navy die because of training, and he quickly joined the battlefield after saying that. Although he is far away, now is his peak time. For more than ten consecutive steps in the air, Garp pierced through the air like a warhead and shot Barrett straight away. Cap. You bastard. Looking at Garp's disappearing figure, Sengoku scolded, isn't it normal for people to die in battle? Without going through a brutal battle, how could the three people he was optimistic about in the Kiwi can grow up quickly, and how can this explosive pirate era be suppressed? At this time, one more naval admiral level combat power is much more useful than seven or eight vice admirals of the naval headquarters. One more admiral can at least suppress an existence like the John Pirates. And the lieutenant general of the navy headquarters for those top powerhouses such as Whitebeard, can be seriously injured or even killed in a few strokes. Only generals can fight against such terrifying powerhouses. Therefore, to choose between one more admiral and several vice admirals who died, Sengoku no doubt chose the former. However, it is useless to think about it now, and if Garp makes a move, it will not have the effect of tempering. So Sengoku ordered Okeanu and the others to withdraw from the battlefield to recuperate, leaving only Garp and Barrett to fight, which is a respect for the strong. It's finally here, Garp. Barrett, who was excited when he sensed Garp's arrival, instantly gave up the chance to kill other navies, jumped up and rushed towards Garp. Barrett, it's not like that to surpass Roger. Garp's face was a bit complicated and he punched out with a domineering punch, which was like a car-sized fist against Barrett. Zheng. After the sound of metal explosion, it was the Zizizi lightning sound from the collision of the armed colors of the two. Then. Click. Click. 
Barrett's huge mechanical fist cracked like a spider pattern, and then the crack spread all over the body. Clang. Clang. Garp is worthy of being Garp. Before, the integrated Gundam robot, which couldn't be hurt by Kizaru and others, was directly smashed by his punch. Bump. Amidst the swirling shards of shattered metal, Barrett fell from the sky. Call out. As soon as he landed, Barrett rushed towards Cup. Loudly. Boom boom boom. The battle instantly entered a state of fierce head-to-head -head confrontation. Cup and Barrett came and went. There was no bells and whistles, just the ultimate confrontation between muscles and domineering. The speed of the two of them is very fast, and the fight is like a dragon ball, invisible to the naked eye only to see circles of white energy spreading in the air. From time to time, deep pits erupted on the ground, and the strong wind pressure smashed the town into ruins, and then the ruins and rocks were blown into the air and smashed around. Gradually, the original town disappeared, leaving only deep pits with a diameter of more than 10 meters. At the same time, around the outside of the town, a circle of rubble ruins that were blown here piled up like a mountain, surrounding the town in a circle. Garp and Barrett are fighting fiercely in the town. The terrifying aftermath of the battle forced the navy to withdraw from the battlefield of Garp and Barrett and came to the outside of the rubble and stone circle. There were only Akainu and other admirals in the circle. The battle between Garp and Barrett was a battle between top powerhouses, and they didn't want to miss this feeling. Maybe it will make them stronger. Really it is a terrifying fighting force. Morai was shocked to see that, as soon as Garp shot, the intensity of the battle instantly rose a few notches. The collision of extreme physical strength and armed domineering made Moria's eyes hot. At the same time, looking at Barrett, Morai was very satisfied. Although he could perceive that Barrett's armament was not as strong as Cap's. His powerful body also made it impossible for Cap to defeat him in a short time. And this kind of combat power that Garp couldn't solve in a short period of time was the reason why Moriah was staring at Barrett. During this period, Moriah had the opportunity to devour the shadow of such a strong man. For him, it was not much, and it was worth fighting for. Noon. After six hours of uninterrupted fighting in the morning, Garp is worthy of his title as a naval hero and his presence in the One Piece world power ceiling. Except for the bandit Dardan and Luffy, no one can make Garp shed a drop of blood. In the end, Barrett fell down covered in blood, with his eyes closed and unconscious, lying in a deep pit. Garp stood outside the pit without any injuries, only the blood was still dripping from the fist trapped in blood, and the blood was also Barrett's. Lieutenant General Carp wins again. Descendants of the Devil, Barrett lost. Lieutenant General Garp is too strong. The Navy soldiers outside the circle of rubble, knowing Garp's final victory through their binoculars, immediately cheered. At this time, Garp, whose reputation for catching one piece was still shocking the sea, was the most admired person in the Navy. For his strength, for his once again defeating a strong enemy for his another legend. Everyone is proud, and the feeling is like seeing what their idols have achieved, fans will be very happy. The navy at this time is very high. And Moria is not happy. Cap's strength is very strong. If he doesn't stay away from Barrett, I have no chance. Moria didn't act rashly. After Garp defeated Barrett, he stayed there and didn't leave. I don't know if I received an order from the Warring States period, or if I just didn't leave. Anyway. Moriah couldn't snatch Barrett from under Carp's nose. So. Have to get Garp out of Barrett. According to Moriah's previous plan, by sending the Shadow Attendants to the ordinary Navy in an instant to launch an attack, to force Garp to leave in order to protect the ordinary Navy soldiers. It stands to reason that with Garp's character, he should leave Barrett in order to save the lives of ordinary navy? Moriah thought to himself, not sure if Garp would leave to save the marines. He felt that he would be saved, 
but the image of the war on the top in his mind let him know that Garp did not see the death of the Navy soldier. When the battle was on top, if it wasn't for Marco flying over, Garp wouldn't have shot until the critical moment. Of course, maybe it was because Ace was the one to be executed, so Garp let it go. In the current situation, Moria is really not sure whether Garp will save the Navy soldiers. Think of a safe way. Moria didn't do it lightly. He had to have the opportunity to do it. Looking around, Moria quickly observed and analyzed the current situation, trying to find a way to let Garp leave. At this time, the sun was in the sky, and because of the aftermath of the battle between Karp and Barrett, a pile of rubble was pushed to the periphery of the town in a circle. These continuous circles of rubble and ruins are just connected to the ruins on the high ground. Under the sunlight, most of the shadows between these connected rubble and ruins are connected together. This made Moria's eyes light up and thought of something. Look at the naval soldiers at the scene, there are about seven or eight thousand people. Divided into three groups and gathered in three places outside the town where Garp and Barrett fought, three points in a triangle surrounded the battlefield. There were about five hundred people in a group, together with the Warring States period, in front of the South Bank port, the farthest from Garp. There were more than four thousand people in a group, outside the rubble and ruins circle on the east side of the town, not far from the Admiral Akainu and other admirals who were also in the east but inside the rubble or rock ruins circle. The other ordinary navy has more than three thousand people. In the west of the town, it is also outside the circle of rubble. The main thing is that this is where civilians are temporarily settled. Many civilians didn't leave. This is their hometown. They couldn't leave. They also wanted to rebuild their homeland after waiting for the navy to drive away the pirates. After a brief analysis of the situation at the scene, Moria smiled and had an idea in mind. Chapter 22 The Shadow Servant of the Per Capita Nature Department Carp may not care about the deaths of sailors, but the deaths of civilians, he will never sit idly by. Moria raised her brows slightly and made up her mind. Although it was not good for civilians to shoot, but in order to be strong and the means were worse, he also recognized it. Go. The battle has begun. Mind you, Moriah control your shadow to split into strips, enter the shadows of the surrounding rocky ruins, and then use the cover of these shadows to extend to the circle of rocky ruins outside the town. Soon, in less than ten seconds, Moriah's shadow had extended into the shadow of the circle of rubble and ruins where the three navies gathered. I didn't expect the shadow to move so fast in the shadow. Moria smiled, somewhat unexpectedly. The speed of his shadow moving in the shadows of other objects was like being accelerated in the acceleration channel. The journey that originally took three minutes, arrived in ten seconds. And it's very hidden. Moria laughed. Until now, Sengoku, Akainu and others have not noticed, his shadow has lurked in the shadow of the rubble next to them. But. Just get closer. Moria frowned slightly. His current position is halfway up the mountain, which is a little far from where Barrett is. If Garp really leaves later, after the navy reacts, it should not leave Barrett unguarded, and will send someone, and it is someone who can suppress him. So he needs to ensure that the first time Carp leaves, he rushes to Barrett and takes him away. No. After thinking about it, Moria had a stubborn head in his heart, and if he got closer, he would be perceived by Garp's arrogance and domineering, and he would have no chance at that time. Maybe. It can be like this. Extend the shadow to the heights first. When the battle begins, let the shadow attendant come out of the shadow. I'm swapping places with the shadow attendant, and then quickly rush to Barrett. After thinking about it, Moria felt that this idea was a good idea, and began to implement it. Separate a shadow through the shadow of the highland ruins and extend to the bottom of the highland. In terms of distance, it is closest to Barrett, closer than the Kainu Sengoku and the others. Everything's ready. 
Shadow Core, enjoyed the killing. After doing everything, Moria in the shadow showed a cruel smile. S-H-H-H-H-H-H-H. The shadow servants who received Moria's order rushed out of the shadows hidden in the ruins and rushed towards the ordinary naval soldiers. The killing starts instantly. Clank. Ziz easy. In just an instant, hundreds of naval soldiers who did not react were killed. The navy soldiers who reacted didn't have time to wonder where the shadow servant came from and what it was, so they became entangled with the shadow servants. What kind of monster is this? Aren't you afraid of dying? Wrong. It can't be killed. The shadow servants didn't want to kill them all together, which chilled the hearts of the navy soldiers. Shadow servants' body is like a natural flow, so that only High Lushi and those who master the domineering of armed color can kill shadow servant. For the first time, the navy encountered this kind of opponent who was not afraid of death and was a group of opponents equivalent to those with natural abilities. What? Help me. Kill these monsters. The navy soldiers were messing around, not used to this kind of attack, and had no experience in fighting a group of deadly natural based abilities. So. In another flash, hundreds more died in the navy. In just a few seconds, the navy had nearly a thousand dead. This bastard. Morlia. This sudden attack made Akainu angry again and again, and was also secretly shocked. Shadow Servant's body is like a natural ability person, making him change color. Aokiji and Kizaru were even more stunned as they looked at the Shadow Servants who could not be killed by the unarmed and domineering Navy soldiers. Um. Mr. Cup? At this time, Akainu, who was going to support, changed his face in vain. Instead of supporting the navy soldiers who were separated from his ruins, he called Kizaru together, and the two ran towards the center of the town. Only Aokiji was left to lead those admirals to support ordinary naval soldiers. On the other side, the warring states condensed an armed and domineering punch, blasting away more than a dozen shadow attendants. But there was an unbelievable expression on his face. These shadow servants, it actually has the physical characteristics that flow like a person with natural ability. Obviously, the Warring States period was also inexplicably shocked by the special physical characteristics of the Shadow Servant. Looking at the domineering naval soldiers who would not be armed, they slashed down and passed through the Shadow Attendant's body like a shadow passing through nothingness. Sengoku's face was solemn, and at this time, his attention to Moriah rose to the same height as White Beard. Morley must be caught, and if he can't be caught, he must be killed. You must not let him go unpunished, let alone join any pirate group. At this moment, Warring States decided in his heart that even if Moria could not be caught today, he would either catch him or kill him in a short period of time, and would never give him a chance to grow up. So, Barrett must not let Moria take it. The Warring States period was dignified. He could imagine, Dan Moriart as a shadow attendant with all of Barrett's strength, and he is also a powerful shadow attendant with the body of a natural person. Then he will gather a terrifying shadow servant legion through shadow servant Barrett in a very short period of time. To deal with Moria, who has these shadow attendant legions, the navy must pay a terrible price to win. This is what the Warring States did not want. You must show up, Moriah. Sengoku expects Moriah to take a chance today and let them catch it. While punching out, a shock wave containing armed domineering, instantly scattered more than a dozen shadow attendants. Today, as long as Moriah comes, as long as his target is Barrett, as long as he dares to approach Barrett. Then Karp will tell him that in the eyes of the top powerhouses, with his current strength, just a single blow can make him seriously injured and lose consciousness, and will not give him a chance to use his abilities to escape. So, you have to take risks, Moriah. While fighting, the Warring States period used the domineering sense of sight to perceive the quartet, looking for Moriah. He knew that with Moriah's strength, 
as long as he ventured out, he would never be able to stop Garp's blow. Cap. Asshole. Sengoku, who was enjoying Moria's adventure and was defeated and captured alive by Garp, suddenly changed his face and ran to Barrett immediately. Looking at the location of the town, Garp was gone, and the warring states were tired. Cap, you bastard, you actually disobeyed my orders and left Barrett's side. On the way forward, Sengoku looked bad. Although he was used to Garp's disobedience to orders, he was still very angry every time he encountered it. Across town, Carp left Barrett to support the civilians. Molia, this kid, actually kills civilians. Garp's eyes flickered coldly. He despised the pirates who attacked civilians the most, and he himself could not tolerate civilians dying in front of his eyes. So, Moria got it right. At the beginning of the battle, his shadow servants ignored the navy soldiers and went directly to the civilians behind. Because of the obstruction of the naval soldiers, the shadow servants did not kill the civilians who were protected in the rear at the first time. So Carp didn't leave Barrett's side for the first time. But the shadow servant, who is like the body of a person with natural ability, can't stop most of the navy soldiers who are not armed and domineering. So when the shadow servants who broke through the navy attacked the civilians, Garp couldn't sit still and threw aside the orders of the Sengoku and went to support the civilians. Because Garp discovered that, on the civilian side, there was no powerful admiral to lead, and the shadow servants could not stop the killing of civilians at all. Very good. The moment Garp left, Moriah and the shadow servant under the heights switched positions and then overridden the shadow and extended to Barrett at a high speed, releasing a shadow servant. Call out. Moriah and the shadow servant who appeared beside Barrett instantly switched places. At this time, Sengoku and Akainu and Kabu, who saw Garp leaving at the same time, were not halfway there. Chapter 23 The Yellow Ape That Habitually Releases Water Kizuna, stop him. When the warring states came, Seeing the sudden appearance of Moria, his brows froze, and he roared accusingly at Kizaru who came from the other side. The first time you left Garp, you could come to Barrett in an instant, but you ended up running leisurely with a Kainu. Wang Yu arms attitude of always letting go of water caused a headache in the warring states period. I don't know Salino, he will only use his full strength when he fights someone, Warring states could never have imagined that Kizaru could only do his best when he was fighting Zephyr, otherwise he might vomit blood now. Of course, maybe when fighting the warring states period, Kizaru might be very hard at work. Call out. Here, Kizaru, who was named by the warring states, changed his indifferent appearance before, turned his body into a beam of light and left, instantly leaving a Kainu behind to eat ashes. This bastard. Okay, I know, scolded secretly. If the speed is fast, it is not good to go early. If you have to accompany him to run, what does this mean? You want to show me? Okay, I knew, who was unhappy in his heart, stepped a little faster. Successful. This was Moria's thought at this time, at this time his hand had grabbed Barrett's arm, and the shadow also covered his body. But, just as he was about to fly away with Barrett. A dazzling and dazzling yellow light flashed in front of Moriah's eyes, and then a voice sounded that made him dream of the twelve supernovae gathered in the Chambord archipelago. Speed is weight, have you ever been kicked by the speed of light? Bump. Before Moriah's body could react, he only felt a sharp pain and twist on the left side of his face. His mouth was wide open, blood flew out and several teeth flew out, and then a huge force hit. At this moment, Moria's head flew away first with the body, and then the body flew away with the head involuntarily. Fuck. Under the severe pain, Moria, who was flying in the air, realized that he had just been forced to show off by Kizaru. A face. But. It was also at this moment that the secret curse in his heart just came out and a scorching high temperature hit, 
making his scalp tingle instantly. Big fire. But it was a Kainu who saw the direction Moria was flying from, and it was on his side, waving a huge magma fist and slamming into Moria who was flying. Fuck. What a tacit understanding. Moria scolded inwardly, but fortunately this time he reacted, and instantly switched places with Shadow Servant and left. Boom. Just as Moria left, a Kainu's magma fist slammed, and the shadow attendant who swapped places with Moria was instantly melted and dissipated. On the other side, Moria, who swapped positions with Shadow Servant and appeared on the battlefield on Akiji's side, didn't have time to make any moves, and Akiji seemed to have prepared a big move long ago. Ice Age. Green Pheasant sent out his ultimate move. A large frozen ball with a diameter of 10 meters appeared in the middle of the battlefield. So cold. Almost lost consciousness. Moriah, who was in the ice hockey hockey game, woke up smartly. Mad, it's so dangerous, I almost fainted from the cold. Moriah was in a cold sweat, a little fortunate. The days when he was served by a whip at the king's rehabilitation center made his skin not feel much pain. It also indirectly made him a lot more resistant to low temperature, and he didn't lose consciousness from being frozen, otherwise he would be GG today. However, you have to leave quickly, otherwise it will be too cold and you may not be able to hold on. Moria didn't hesitate, and without waiting for Aokiji to make a move, he instantly switched places with the shadow servant on Garp's side and left. Bump. Unfortunately, Garp, who had been prepared for a long time, appeared beside Moria in an instant, and threw a punch with strong anger, and hit Moria, who had just appeared and was too stunned, in the face. The powerful force made Garp's fist sink into Moria's face. Moria's eyes instantly turned white and he was about to lose consciousness. I can't lose consciousness or it's over. At the last moment, Moria survived with a strong will to survive. As soon as his mind moved, when his head was punched by Garp and about to fall to the ground, he instantly switched places with Shadow Servant and left. Boom. With a loud noise, the ground shook, and a 100 meter diameter deep pit appeared like a glass-like crack. This ability is really troublesome. And also. When did Moria's bastard's body become so strong? Looking at the shadow servant disappearing under his feet, Garp frowned. With his strength and domineering strength, Moria absolutely couldn't hold it, and would lose consciousness or even die if he hit him. But in the end Moria managed to escape with her ability. Why? Garp didn't understand because they didn't know that Moriah could also gain physical strength by swallowing shadows. They are still based on the previous information, thinking that Moriah's only strong ability is to create shadow attendants, and it is not strong in itself. So what they have been worried about is that Moriah has been acquired by top pirate forces such as Kaido and Whitebeard, thus becoming very dangerous to the navy. But through the blow just now, Garp understood that Moria was not a simple man, and if he didn't stop it, he could become a strong man like Kaido himself. That's when it's the most troublesome. Thinking of these, Garp quickly sensed Moria's position with a domineering look. What? Where did you go? No, Garp jumped up in the air and looked around, but he didn't see Moria, nor did he sense Moria when he saw the arrogance. Tatata. The warring states came from a distance and asked, where's the little devil in Moria? Gone. Garp smashed a shadow servant away with one punch while responding to Sengoku. Gone? Sengoku frowned, while attacking the shadow attendants around him. He also sensed Moria's position with a domineering look. Can't even feel it. Did that guy leave? Sengoku's face was not very good looking, Moria appeared and even almost succeeded Barrett, but they didn't catch Moria. What happened? Sengoku approached Garp and asked, frowning and asking, with your strength, Moria can't stop your blow, right? Kapuye Oyao nodded and said solemnly, 
we all underestimated Moria's physical strength and strength, first suffered a blow from Kizaru, then was frozen by Okiji, and finally was punched in the face by my angry punch, still able to use the ability to leave. His strength is definitely not what we thought before. With his age, I'm afraid it will be difficult to deal with in the future. Damn. Sengoku scolded, and after hearing Karp's evaluation of Moriah, he felt even more depressed. Unexpectedly, Moriah escaped in the end. Clean up these annoying shadow attendants first. The two Karp Sengoku, who never saw Moriah reappear, could only speed up the cleanup of Moriah's shadow attendants. The other side, Kizaru also ran to help Okiji clean up the shadow servants and only Akainu was still guarding Barrett. He wasn't going to give Moriah a chance to take Barrett. Just guarding here, if Moriah dares to come, he will let Moriah know how hot his magma is. On Vico Island, on the side of the sea close to Car, a pirate ship was parked on the sea not far from the shore. John, there is news from the Dark Forces that Moriah appeared and has already fought against the Navy. Diran came to the bow to report to Captain John. Then go get our companions back. Brothers. John said loudly, jumped his legs hard, jumped over a distance of 100 meters, and jumped directly from the bow to the shore. Up. With Moria, we can dominate the new world, just around the corner. Ha ha ha. The other members of the John Pirates, the stronger ones followed behind Captain John and jumped to the shore one after another, while the weaker ones took boats to the shore. Kill the Navy, take Moria. After getting ashore, a group of people killed Cup. At this time, the John pirates did not know that Moria did not fight the Navy at all, but was beaten away by Kabu and others with a combined punch. At the same time, there was also a pirate ship in the waters near the Okiji and the people on it were the fighters of the Big Mum Pirates led by Category. At this time, they also received news from the Dark Forces. Like Captain John, they all knew that Moriah appeared and they also dealt with the Navy. Chapter 24 Be Your Tool Man, Kaido. Let's go too. The main purpose is to prevent Moriah from falling into the hands of the Navy or other pirates. When necessary, kill Moriah first. Category turned his head and ordered, and jumped high from the boat to the shore. Can the overpass? Perospero waved his hand and used his ability to build a bridge between the shore and the bow, and the others quickly passed over the bridge. Obviously, the people from Category and the John Pirates came here today for Moriah. At an altitude of 6,000 meters on the edge of Vico Island, Moriah, who was lying on the back of a giant eagle, recovered from the injuries caused by Carp and others by absorbing life energy. Fuck. It's been calculated. Moria got up and sat on the back of the giant eagle with a gloomy face. At this time, he recalled it, and the momentary kick of Kizara let him know that this was a trap aimed at him. Otherwise, at Kizaru's speed, as soon as Garp leaves, he will be able to rush to Barrett immediately and his speed is definitely not as fast as Kizaru's. Once I see that Barrett is guarded by Kabu, I will never take the risk, I will just continue to wait for the opportunity, and even if there is no chance in the end, I will just give up and leave. But apparently, the Navy seems to want to kill him. So after Garp left, Kizaru leisurely ran towards Barrett with a Kainu. The purpose is to give Moria a chance to take a risk. Then Kizaru appeared in an instant, a light speed kick, kicked Moria to the direction where a Kainu came, and let a Kainu kill Moria with one blow. If Moria didn't react at that time and was hit by a Kainu's high damage magma fist, it might have been melted directly. Even if he dodged a Kainu's attack, the situation where he and Shadow Servant switched places afterward would still be counted by the Navy. At that time, Moria subconsciously exchanged positions with the nearest shadow servant, and the nearest shadow servant happened to be within the attack range of Okiji. So Moria, who just appeared, was instantly frozen by Okiji. If it wasn't for Moria still having a little bit of cold resistance, 
he would have been frozen unconscious, and the result could only be caught by the seafloor stone or killed directly. In the end, his actions were taken into account. As soon as he appeared, he was punched in the face by Garp, almost killing him. If he hadn't switched places with Shadow Servant and left at the last moment, and had really been punched in the face by Garp and made contact with the ground, the enormous force poured out, and he suspected that his head might explode like a watermelon. That guy Garp is so scary. Looking back on that punch now, Moriah still has lingering fears. The extremely condensed arm domineering is very hard and hard, and Garp's fist is terrifyingly powerful under the blessing of that level of arm domineering. It's troublesome. Moria frowned, the navy is obviously prepared, if you try again, you will die. After the thrill just now, Moria understood that the plan to capture Barrett this time was a failure. But it's not a pity. Without Barrett and other strong people, if you really can't do it, you can cultivate yourself and wait for the opportunity. After all, Barrett isn't dead, he's just locked up in the advanced city. That's all. Yup. Advance the city. Moria smiled. How could he forget this key point again? As long as you can sneak into the advancing city and face those who are surrounded by rocks with the power of the suppressed devil fruit, with his current strength, could he still be killed? At that time, a strong man like Barrett will not let him kill and swallow the shadow, and then he will leave by switching places with the shadow attendant, without worrying about being caught. He can even leave a shadow attendant in the advanced city, making the advanced city his cash machine, a treasure place to extract the shadows of the strong. Of course, the premise of everything is that he can sneak in. For now, no. Moriah shook her head slightly in her heart, but it might not be possible in the future. As long as the shadow fruit ability he envisioned in his mind can be developed, it would be absolutely fine to use the advanced city as a back garden. Zheng. Boom. Zheng. Moria, who was thinking about advancing the city with an excited face, suddenly heard a fierce collision from Vico Island below. This is. Is the legendary protagonist Halo? Looking at the roar of battle coming from below, it was a fierce collision sound that only Garp and Barrett could make when they were fighting. With this level of collision, Moriah understood what it meant. It means that there is someone who can fight Garp, and it seems that it is not alone. The color of the Navy's uniforms is uniform, and the Shadow Servants are all black, which are all conspicuous. At this time Moria saw other different colors on Kapu, the Ko Island below. Um. There are people on the other side. The battle seems to be fierce. Ha ha. Moria smiled. This situation was beyond his expectations, but it was in line with his heart. No matter who came and why, it provided Moria with a chance to retake Barrett. Thinking to himself, Moria stood up just when he was about to find the shadow servant to switch places and leave. Hot breath. A hot pillar of fire came from the air in the distance from the rear, and the high temperature air wave made Moria's face change violently. Get out of the way. Moria roared and jumped to the right to dodge. At the same time, the shadow servant giant eagle leaned to the left with Victor and Perona to avoid. Boom. A pillar of fire with a diameter of 10 meters in the air roared past the original position of the giant eagle, piercing the sky. Moria dodged the fire pillar instantly, controlled the shadow to turn into a bat to hold him, and then hurriedly looked to the side of the shadow servant giant eagle. Didn't see it. Um. It fell, and one of the wings of the giant eagle was burned by a pillar of fire, and its body was falling. Victor grabbed the bewildered Haha -ha Perona with one hand and the giant eagle's feathers with the other, hanging on the giant eagle's back. With a thought, Moria injected life energy into the shadow servant giant eagle, which instantly recovered its burned wings. The giant eagle was in midair, stabilized his body, and Victor stood up again. Perona seemed to think it was something fun, she stared at Moria with big cute eyes and opened her mouth, he he he. 
Looking at Malia Yeoyao's head, she is really a fearless child. She almost died, and she is still ha ha. Malia. At this moment, a loud roar came, and a cyan oriental dragon flew towards Moria from a high altitude in the distance. Kaido. How did this guy get here? Moria frowned slightly, then stretched it out again, looked at Vico Island below and smiled, thinking, come on, be a tool man for me. Fly away, don't stop. Moria turned her head to give instructions to Giant Eagle and Victor, then retracted her shadow and fell to Vico Island below. Call out. The shadow servant eagle opened its wings obediently, and flew to the side with Victor and Perona at a high speed. That is? Forget it, it's important to take Moria back first. After Kaido glanced at the flying shadow servant giant eagle, he ignored them and twisted his dragon body to fly towards Moriah. Moria. Come back with me, you can't escape. Kaido put pressure on Moria, and since he knew Moria's shadow servant ability, he decided not to kill Moria and give him another chance to quit his addiction to the king. Ha ha. Be your tool man. The corners of Moria's mouth twitched, and without saying a word, he stepped down, using the acceleration of his fall, coupled with the acceleration of the moon step, to quickly fall to the bottom of the island. Chapter 25 If you want me to work overtime, you can. I have to pay more, please ask politely. Ha ha ha. Cap, didn't you say Moria wasn't on the island? Who is that? During the battle, Captain John and Garp made a single blow, then backed away for a moment, looking at Moria who was falling in the sky and said with a smile. Moria. That kid actually came back, and Garp was a little surprised. And. One slash. Captain John's sharp slashing wave hit Garp at the moment he caught Cap's thoughts. Zheng. Garp swung his arm and punched away Captain John's slashing wave opening a crack in the ground next to him. Zheng. Zheng. Then the two fought fiercely together, and they fought a few moves in an instant. The collision of the iron fist and the long sword, because of the domineering look of the armed, broke out with a stlike fierce head-to-head -head sound. Zheng. Karp punched low on Captain John's sword, wrestling on both sides, and the invisible lightning sound of Kazkaz was heard in the air. Kaido. This madman is here too, it's really troublesome. Cap didn't blush or panted, and even after the battle with Barrett had just ended, he still firmly suppressed Captain John. Kaido's arrival made him frown, and turned his head to look at the giant dragon behind Moria in the sky, his heart was slightly dignified. Zheng. Captain John and Garp suddenly exerted force on their hands and backed away. Cap, our goal is Moria. Just let us take it away, there's no need to fight with us. Captain John pointed at Moria, who was getting closer and closer in the air, with a knife in his right hand, and said with a smile, Also, let us pirates kill each other, isn't it what your navy has always wanted to see? Kapu, after the shockwave of the warring states metamorphosis Buddha repelled Scarlet Delon, he came to Garp and looked into the air and said, that guy Moria is coming here, we will deal with him first. Hey hey hey. Before Carp could respond, Captain John suddenly exaggerated, in front of me, discuss the priority of solving my companion, is it really okay? After saying that, Captain John rushed to Carp, Diran rushed to Sengoku, and the other carders fought fiercely with Kizaru who came to reinforce. The battle started in an instant, and Delong, relying on the powerful defensive power given by the fruit's ability, resisted the shockwave of the warring states period, making it impossible for him to solve him for a while. Kizaru still had that indifferent attitude and fighting style, shouting, so scary, and moving slowly. But if you look carefully, a pirate has not been killed and has been walking. S-H-H-H-H-H. In the air. The strong wind straightened Moriah's hair, and at this time he had reached the height of 1,000 meters above Vico Island. The form on Vico Island can probably be seen clearly. 
There are people from the Big Mum Pirates. Moria glanced at the battlefield to the east and saw some strange soldiers, guessing that they should be from the Big Mum Pirates. The guy who fought against Okiji should be category. Just right. Moria smiled. Okiji was also entangled, and with Garp, he would lead Kaido to the warring states later, and Nadran would be freed, and Akai Ainu would deal with it. That way, no one on Barrett's side can stop him, perfect. Hot breath. Seeing Moria falling straight down in one direction, Kaido chased after him and opened his mouth to condense a hot dragon breath. Kaido. That's even better. Feeling the high temperature breath behind him, Moria's expression changed slightly, and then smiled, the speed was a little faster, the direction of whereabouts did not change, and it shot directly at the place where the civilians gathered. That bastard. I shot at civilians again, this time I must kill him. Looking at the position of Kaido's scorching dragon breath and Moria's direct shot in the sky, Cap suddenly understood Moria's evil intentions and with a look of anger, he punched Captain John with a hard punch. I'm coming, Carp. Salino, stop being lazy. Sengoku stopped Garp without waiting for him to act. By the way, he said a word to Kizaru. Then he turned into a Buddha and got up and jumped, intercepting Moria in the air and shooting directly at the civilian gathering place, and then pushed it out with a palm. Hum. The condensed spherical shock wave instantly enveloped the rushing Shadow Servant. At a critical moment, Moriah and Shadow Servant switched places. Shadow Servant instantly dissipated, but the shock wave of the Warring States period did not end. Boom! The heat breathing flame with scorching high temperature collided with the transparent spherical shock wave of the Warring States period, the space was slightly distorted and the hot wind pressure spread to the surroundings, blowing a pile of rocks. Bump! The warring states that had just landed had not had time to find out Moria's location, and a terrifying power had already attacked him. Thundering gossip! After the heat breath, it was Kaido's big move to change back to his human form to directly take the Sengoku's head. Now that he sees the heart of the hunter, he just wants to have a good fight with the Sengoku. Moriah's matter can be suppressed for him. This lunatic. I was a fighting lunatic during the Rocks era, and I am still now. Sengoku secretly cursed in his heart, but he didn't dare to underestimate him. Facing Kaido, who was falling from the sky at an extreme speed, he clenched his fist and blasted out the mace he waved. Zheng. The moment the fist and the mace collided, the terrifying force and shock wave overflowed, and the surrounding space seemed to be elongated, and the silhouettes of Kaido and Sengoku looked strangely distorted. Boom! The severe wind pressure hit, like a typhoon passing through, and the surroundings were in a mess. Zheng! Zheng! Boom! The battle became fierce and white hot in an instant. Sengoku and Kaido faced each other head to head. They were both animal-type phantom beasts and had unparalleled defenses. Even if warring states' weapons were stronger and domineering, they couldn't defeat Kaido in a short time. Kaido came here to hone his body, and sometimes he even chose to fight hard in the face of Sengoku's attack. This made the warring states call, crazy. Bump bump. In the fierce collision, the battle between the two was stalemate for a while. The other side. During the fierce battle between John and Garp, Diran hesitated for Diran who was fighting Kabu, and said in a cold voice, Go to Moria, take him away. Or kill. At this moment, Captain John and Category have the same choice. They can't get Moria's heart and people, and they can't let others get them. The best way is to not get them. Then kill Moria, when this man never shows up. Clear. After Delong finished speaking, he quickly got rid of the yellow monkey, let others make up for it, and ran towards the middle of the town. The reason why Moriah came to Vico Island, as everyone knows, was for Barrett. So, as long as you stay by Barrett's side, Moriah will come to you. However, 
As soon as Delong left, the expression on the warring states side changed, and while fighting, he shouted at Kizaru, Salino, don't let them leave alone, stop them. Well, Kizaru, who was in the middle of a leisurely battle, heard the roar of the warring states period, his face changed, and he sighed helplessly. After all, he has been working overtime on this island for one day and one night in a row, and the salary is not much, and he has to be yelled at by his boss. Wang Wanjun said that if you want him to stop people, you can. You have to pay more. Chapter 26 Akei Ainu's Killing Intent However, thinking about it this way, he is still very serious about the warring states order Kizaru. As a result, the yellow monkey's face turned positive and turned into light and left. Metverse app, Filu Meteorite Novel Downloader From Meteorite Pavilion 143-131-600 Meteorite Pavilions 143-131-600 Call out. The yellow light flashed, and the yellow monkey radiated dazzling light all over his body, appearing in the direction Delong was heading. It's so bright. My eyes hurt so much. The dazzling light caused Diran to close his eyes subconsciously, and at this moment, a wretched voice suddenly sounded in his ear. Speed is weight. Have you ever been kicked by the speed of light? Bump. A powerful kick emitting a yellow light, quickly and accurately kicked Delong's face. The serious yellow monkey has the powerful combat power of, the salary is in place and the four emperors are destroyed? Delong probably believed that the strength of his companions could stop Kizaru, so he didn't take much precaution and didn't expect Kiwi to come to him so quickly. Outside the battlefield. Boom. Delong crossed a straight line in the air and smashed to the ground. At this time, he didn't hurt much, but he was just confused. He didn't expect Wang Yuan's strength to be so strong that he could actually beat him. When I fought with him before, I was just a Kiwi who was dodging all the time, how did he suddenly become a savage man? Diran didn't understand. So strong worthy of being a monster of the new generation of the navy. Even Lord Delong was knocked back by a single blow. The rest of the John Pirates were also lost for a moment, and it was incredible how powerful Kizaru was. But don't worry too much, Diran's defense is still very strong. But Shiki and Gu. At this time, Kizaru, who kicked Delong, was not satisfied, and soared to a height of 100 meters using the eight-foot stroked jade that he used to Luffy during the war. S-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
Facing the siege of Sirius Delong and another powerful Kada, Kizaru could only remain undefeated and could not do extra things. Kizuna, this guy actually restrained Delong and another powerful Kada of the John Pirates by himself. Fuck. Moria cursed inwardly. What's the matter with this guy's strength? How do you feel that this guy can fight anyone, no matter how strong or weak? Everyone is 55% off. Trouble, now I have to find a way to deal with the Kainu. At this time, Moriah, who was hiding in the ruins on the edge of the highland, was not looking very well. According to the short term assumption, Diran asked a Kainu to deal with it, and now it is done by Kabu. The Kainu is still guarding Barrett, and he can only snatch Barrett under a Kainu's hands. A Kainu's strength is not something I can deal with now. Moriah understood the strength gap between him and a Kainu. If he was alone, it would be difficult to steal Barrett from a Kainu, and there was basically no chance. But, after sensing the powerful shadow servant who was still alive, Moria smiled. Hey he. I'm not alone. At this time, he was in the circle of rubble and ruins on the side near the high ground. Here, his shadow can quickly extend to the shadow servant's side through the ruined shadow passage, and transfer the shadow servant to his side. Do what she thinks, and Moria controls the shadow to quickly extend to those powerful shadow attendants. You guys quickly enter the shadow space. Moria ordered in her mind. So far, Moria has lost more than a dozen shadow attendants who can be armed with arrogance and domineering, but there are still ten such strong shadow attendants alive. Among them, the CP0 black clothed man who was transformed into a shadow servant in the pirate town is still there, and his strength is also the strongest among Moria's many shadow servants. Together with the other shadow attendants, Moria felt that he should be able to stop a Kainu for him. These shadow attendants, after receiving Moria's order, quickly left the battle and sank into the shadows, ten in total. Zheng. A major admiral of the navy headquarters slashed past with a knife, and suddenly found that the shadow servant who was opposite him was gone. Where did you go? The navy was very stunned, and the shadow servants sank into the shadows very quickly and he disappeared without reacting. It seems to be sinking into the shadow. Said a rear admiral, who happened to see the scene of the shadow servant sinking into the shadow. Be careful. Those guys will come out of the shadows. A lieutenant general of the navy headquarters reminded that everyone's expressions changed, and they all paid attention to the shadows on the ground. However, they found that the shadow could not be seen after retreating to the circle of rubble and ruins, but everyone was still on guard. After all, the black monster around him at the beginning came out of the shadow of the circle of rubble. However, after being on alert for a while, there was still no movement, these admirals began to concentrate on dealing with those ordinary shadow attendants. For a time, ordinary shadow attendants dissipated several times faster. Taking advantage of this time, after taking the shadow attendant into the shadow space, Moria quickly manipulated the shadow to extend to a Kainu. Come on, this time justice must not be blasphemed. In the center of the town, next to Barrett, a Kainu saw the shadow swimming towards him like a black python. His eyes flashed coldly, his body gathered strength secretly, and magma emerged from his clenched fist. Everything is ready, he is ready to attack the moment Moria and Shadow Servant show up when they switch positions, not giving Moria a chance to react. Call out. When the shadow was close to a Kainu's ten meters away, a black shadow rushed out of the shadow at high speed. Kill. Ming Dog. The Kainu jumped out in an instant, condensing the armed color domineering to cover the crimson magma fist and blasting out. The target directly took the shadow servant's head that came out of the shadow. Go. Just as a Kainu's punch was about to hit the shadow servant who sprang out of the shadow, his expression changed suddenly before he finished speaking. I saw that the shadow servant who came out was already prepared, 
and punched a K. Inu's fist. Bump. The magba burst. The first shadow servant to appear was the big man in black, CP0. His strength is still very strong, and he is not a role that a K. Inu can easily solve with one punch. This thing, the strength can be so strong. A K. Inu's face was gloomy, and as soon as the two fists met, he felt that this shadow servant's strength was unusual. Not only was his strength strong, his defense was like steel, and his armament was not weak. Even if he is stronger in strength, in a short time he understands that he cannot solve the shadow attendant in front of him. This made a K. Inu's killing intent towards Moria almost materialized. Chapter 28 Success Ask for a collection ask for a recommendation, ask for a monthly pass, and ask for a polite three. Morlia. This guy's ability is too dangerous for the world. He must not be allowed to continue to develop freely outside. This bastard. Must accept justice. At this moment, Akainu and Sengoku both thought that Moria could not be given a chance to develop outside. S H H H H H H H H H H H H H H And also, a K I knew, who was thinking about it, changed his expression again, and around him, nine more shadow attendants sprang from the shadows that extended. Eight of them rushed towards him in an instant, either condensing armed fists or slashing at him with a long knife. The other person jumped over him and went straight to Barrett. Don't think about it. Okay, Inu shouted loudly, and his fist against the upper shadow servant CP0 was like an erupting volcano, and suddenly a huge force erupted, slamming the flying shadow servant CP0 all at once. Big fire. Okay, Inu, who got rid of shadow servant CP0, turned around and jumped dodged the attacks of other shadow servants, and when he came to a height of 100 meters, he instantly condensed a magma fist the size of a hill and blasted towards Barrett's position. The hot air wave hit, although the attack was aimed at Barrett, but because of the breadth of the attack range, even all the shadow attendants present were within the attack range. Fuck. Okay I knew is a lunatic. Moria roared in her heart, her brows wrinkled and after a flash of cold light in her eyes, she quickly made a decision and ordered, hold him all for me. Even if it dissipates, it has to be delayed. Okay I know's purpose, Moria understands, would rather kill Barrett than let him get Barrett's shadow. This is also what Moria is afraid of, so he did not let the shadow go to Barrett at the beginning, but directly let the shadow attendant appear in front of Barrett. He was afraid that a Kainu would be ruthless, and when he attacked the shadow servant, he destroyed Barrett's corpse and wiped out the traces, and he would not get the shadow. Only. I didn't expect a Kainu to be so decisive. Moria secretly hated. This is not to blame for a Kainu. After experiencing the power of shadow servant, the fool will give Moria Barrett's shadow. Good thing. Touch. After all, the K. Inu is not the admiral of the future, although he is a master level navy. But under the full resistance of the nine shadow attendants who could cover the whole body with armed arrogance, his attack was blocked for a while. The shadow attendant who ran towards Barrett came to Barrett at this moment. No hesitation. With a thought, Moriah and the shadow servant exchanged positions successfully. Continue to pester him with all your strength. In a flash, Moria ordered the nine shadow attendants to continue to resist a K. Inu's huge magma fist. He himself immediately controlled the shadow to cover the whole body, and then separated a shadow to wrap Barrett's body around his back. Call out. Moria put Barrett on his back and flew out of the magma fist, and then accelerated towards the high ground. There is no one to stop him, over there, it is the safest. This bastard can't let him go. A K. Inu's complexion sank when he sensed Moria's success, and he glanced at the ten shadow attendants who continued to resist his magma fist. Go to hell. A K. Inu roared, 
and the huge magma fist suddenly swelled and burst, swallowing the nine shadow servants in an instant. In the end, only shadow servant CP0 survived with his own armed arrogance and did not die, and the other eight shadow servants were melted and dissipated. Tread. Tread. After the Akainu in the air beat the flying shadow attendants, he directly stopped towards Moria with a moon step. His position was just above the high place where Moria flew. Marda. Can't you let me take Barrett away smoothly? Moria, who was stopped in the air, cursed inwardly, and flew down instantly without fighting a Kainu. At the same time, he ordered, Stop the Red Dog. Tread. Shadow Servant CP0 ordered Moria to fly towards the air with a moon step. You can't escape, Moria. A Kainu followed Moria reluctantly. It seems that this guy can't use that kind of escape ability. Looking at Moria, who still has no ability to leave, a Kainu smiled, understood something, and did not hesitate to start. Big Fire. Hearing the loud shout in his ears and feeling the heat wave behind him, Moria wanted to complain at this moment. This is another move, doesn't a Kainu have any other moves? However, the spit is returned to the spit, and he still dare not take the attack from a Kainu. Call out. A black shadow quickly passed by Moria, facing the magma fist that a Kainu slammed. Bump. The magma burst, and a Kainu's attack was blocked by Shadow Servant CP0, but he was also burned by the magma. With a thought, Moria injected life energy into Shadow Servant CP0, allowing it to recover instantly. Do your best to stop him. After giving the order to Shadow Servant CP0 again, Moria flew into the air again, but this time he was going to fly straight up into the sky first, and then fly away towards the heights to leave Vigo Island. Don't want to go. Okay Ainu roared, and Uabia flew towards Moria, but this time he was stopped. Shadow Servant CP0 rushed towards a Kainu desperately, opening the fatal attack method used by Shadow Servant, not defending but attacking. Zheng. Bump. Boom. A Kainu and Shadow Servant CP0 instantly fought three moves in the air, but failed to break through. In the face of Shadow Servant's desperate attack, even as powerful as a Kainu was stopped allowing Moria to successfully fly over 200 meters above Akainu's head and fly towards the high ground. Bump. Boom. The attack collided, the magma burst, and Akainu could only watch Moria leave. Is this thing immortal? During the battle, Akainu looked at the shadow servant CP0, who had been knocked out half of his body by his punch, and instantly recovered his original body with an unprecedented dignified expression on his face. If all shadow servants have this terrifying resilience like undead, then Morliasia's threat is too great. Thinking of this, Akainu glanced at the direction where Moria left, and said in his mind, I hope the teacher can keep that guy Moria. Success. The corners of Moria's mouth, who had already passed the Akainu and was flying towards the high ground, twitched up. He was very happy. He didn't expect it to be so easy. Yes. It's easy. In Moria's opinion, this is the case. After all, he has not suffered any injuries, and it has not even been ten minutes since he used his ability, so his body can still bear it. Call out. Moria, who was secretly rejoicing, was approaching the highest point of the heights when she suddenly felt a darkness in front of her eyes and a gust of wind sounded. Then a domineering fist with a terrifying and armed color instantly shattered the shadow covering Moria's head and hit the front face, making him feel the severe pain of the collapse of the front face once again. Who? There was only a moment of doubt, and Moria was hit by a huge force from the air into the ruins of the high ground, and Barrett also fell out of the air without his control. Call out. Boom. In the air. Moria swept through a white energy like a ballistic missile, and quickly fell into the ruins of the high ground, smashing a 100 meter deep pit. Kaz Kaz. Because of this huge force, 
the entire highland cracked open countless dark cracks. There are still strong men lurking in the navy. The body in the deep pit was covered in blood, and Moria, whose face was bloody, moved in his heart and thought of something. The navy has clearly made arrangements to prevent accidents from happening. It can also be seen from this how much the navy has guarded against him. Letting the ordinary navy die will not let an admiral level shot. This kind of emphasis made Moria know that he basically had no chance to take Barrett away. Chapter 29 Don't kill, Zephyr. At least there is no chance to take away the living Barrett. We can only fight to see if the dead Barrett can be brought into the shadow space. If you can, then it's worth fighting again, if not, then go decisively. At this moment, Moriah, who was thinking quickly in his heart, was very decisive. At this time, there were still naval powerhouses lurking, and he did not report any luck. Then. Call out. Looking at Barrett falling from the air, Moriah thought, and controlled the shadow to turn into a sharp shadow gun and shot Barrett, who was still in the air at this time. Divert attention? Or. Seeing Moriah's action in the air, Zephyr frowned secretly, wondering if Moria was trying to trick him to stop him so he could take the opportunity to escape. Never mind. Zephyr, who couldn't understand, chose to ignore it, and Barrett was just a pirate. He only needed to keep an eye on Moria and not let him take Barrett away. After all, this is the only reason Sengoku called him to come, to prevent Barrett from being taken away by Moria and he doesn't care about everything else. Here. Without Zeph's interference, the sharp shadow gun shot into Barrett's flat mouth, pierced through the back of his head, and then the shadow gun turned into a shadow vine and wrapped Barrett down quickly. Bump. When Barrett landed on Moria's shadow, Zephyr, who attacked Moria, also landed ten meters in front of Moria. Only then did Moria see clearly that it was Zephyr who attacked him. Ha ha. Moria smiled bitterly, forgetting that there is such a general in the navy. I surrender. Cough, cough, cough. Seeing the moment when Zephyr, the burly purple-haired man who looked down on him, waved his fist to attack him, Moria's expression changed, and he immediately begged for mercy. Zephyr paused and looked at Moria with some surprises. There is a play. Moria's mind suddenly moved, and the big move. Shadow Emperor, was automatically activated. He gave up his plan to use his life energy to recover his injuries, and with the corners of his mouth overflowing with blood, he said again, General Zephyr, I surrender. As he spoke, his body shook unnaturally a few times, as if he was in severe pain due to a muscle strain involved in speaking. I hope that my tragic situation will make Zephyr, who, doesn't kill, be pitiful and not take action. Moriah thought. If it can be delayed for a while, Moriah is delaying time. At this time, his anxiety is also shaking, and Barrett is not dead yet. His head was shot through, and he still wasn't dead. What a monster. Surrender. Interesting. Zephyr's mouth was slightly raised, and he smiled unnaturally, his laughter was somewhat mocking. Zephyr didn't know about Moria's delay. He only knew that there was a group of pirates who said surrender to him before, but turned around and killed his wife and children. To this day, he heard a pirate in front of him saying surrender to him, should he stop as before? Zephyr didn't think that a daring person like Moria could do such a thing as surrender. So. Let's stun or kill him first, Zephyr doesn't want the tragedy to repeat itself. He knew Moria's ability. As long as he was not killed or lost consciousness after being beaten, Moria could escape at any time. So Zephyr raised his fist and punched Moria in the chest, trying to kill him or knock him unconscious. He doesn't kill, he's not stupid, and he also has the ability to make decisions at critical moments, so he has nothing to do with Moria's shot. Show mercy. Fuck. Moria's face changed and at this moment, in the face of Zephyr's attack, he could only give up Barrett and escape. But. Finally dead. Moriah was overjoyed, 
and just when he was about to switch places with Shadow Servant to leave, Barrett finally died. Although Zeph only paused for a while, it was just this time that Barrett finally died completely. So, Moria immediately opened the shadow space and asked the shadow attendant to reach out and pull Barrett's body into the shadow space. Just a little bit. At this time, the attack even made Moria look anxious. At this time, two shadow servants stretched out from his shadow and grabbed Barrett's body. They were pulling him into the shadow space, but they hadn't completely sunk into the shadow space. Middle. So at this time, he can't switch places with Shadow Servant and leave, otherwise without his control, Shadow Servant in Shadow Space can't pull Barrett's body into Shadow Space. Fight. Moria's heart was ruthless, her eyes were firm, and she struggled to move her upper body to the right. At this time, Zephyr's attack came, and a punch hit Moria's left shoulder. Bump. The blood burst, and one arm flew out. Moria gritted her teeth and held back the pain. Anyway, the arm could grow back, and she was not distracted and focused on pulling Barrett's body into the shadow space. Don't run away. Zephyr looked at Moria, who was so pale that he was about to grit his teeth, and a trace of doubt flashed in his heart, and then he punched Moria on the head again. This time, Moria didn't move, but looked at the rapidly enlarged fist showing a pressure-releasing smile. Because, at this time, Barrett's body has been pulled into his shadow space, and he can now switch places with Shadow Servant and leave. Zephyr, I'll give you the left hand. After saying a word in his heart, Moria and Victor switched places and left. Victor, who appeared here in an instant, was obviously stunned. Then. Bump. Boom. The earth shook for a while, and another 10 meters spread on the ground of the 100 meter diameter deep pit. Escape. Zephyr frowned as he looked at the dissipated shadow servant. If you can run away at any time, why don't you run away at first, but run away after you lose a hand? Zephyr couldn't understand, until his eyes glanced at the place where Barrett fell, and his face suddenly became ugly. When? When did Barrett disappear? Zephyr frowned could it be? Was taken away by Moria. Thinking of this, Zephyr quickly recalled the previous scenes. First, Moria attacked Barrett with his ability, but Barrett's breath was still there, not dead, so he didn't care. After that, he attacked Moria himself, Moria didn't use her ability to dodge, but just moved her upper body, resulting in her arm being broken. Then. At that time. Zephyr suddenly remembered that at the time, at the moment when his attack cut off Moria's left hand, Barrett's breath also disappeared in his domineering look. Before, he just thought that the breath disappeared because Barrett died, but he was taken away by Moriah. After thinking about it, Zephyr sighed, it seems that his ability to swap places with Shadow Servant, although he can't bring living people, can transfer corpses together. In this way, there has been another difficult pirate in this sea. Zephyr understood that once Moria could use his ability to teleport away the corpse and leave the battle, his army of shadow attendants would be hard to stop. What's more, with the shadow of Barrett this time, if the shadow attendant is created, it will also have the strength in front of Barrett. That. Thinking of this, Zephyr looked solemn, and secretly said in his heart, it's not a question of stopping, but how to stop Moria from destroying the world. Chapter 30 Didn't it say that the redhead only broke the arm? Ask for a collection, ask for a recommendation, ask for a monthly pass, and ask for a polite three. The other side. At an altitude of 5,000 meters, Moria, who swapped places with Victor, appeared on the back of the giant eagle in an instant. Without caring about anything else, he hurriedly devoured his life energy to heal his bleeding left arm. With the injection of life energy, Moria breathed a sigh of relief, and her face returned to blood. Well. It seems like something floated away. Just now. Moriah looked around and frowned. It always feels like something is missing. West. Fuck. 
Where is Perona? Moria's face changed, and she finally reacted. Perona was gone, and she quickly turned on her arrogance. Behind. With a thought, he manipulated the shadow into a radan, and shot it at the back of the giant eagle. After a while, the shadow ratan rolled up Perona and came to Moria. I saw Perona, who used to be he he, but now she doesn't he he anymore, her pale face seemed to be smeared with white wax, and she was obviously frightened. Perona's resentful eyes stared straight at Moria, feeling aggrieved. Originally, she was fine in Victor's arms, but Moria switched positions for a moment and ignored her, plus the giant eagle was flying all the time, making her fall to the ground. On the back of the giant eagle, it was blown away directly by the wind, and fell freely from the sky. Although Perona is young, she also knows what she has just experienced because of a certain man. The fear of almost dying is very frustrating. Ha ha ha. Facing Perona's eyes, Moria laughed and tilted her head unnaturally. Without looking at Perona, she sneered, don't worry about it. After saying that, Moria ignored Perona, looking happy, and he was about to start enjoying the fruits of victory. With a thought, Moria asked the only navigator shadow attendant left in the shadow space to bring Barrett's body out of his shadow. Slow down. Destination, high altitude with no wind. After the bodies of Shadow Servant and Barrett were brought out, Moria handed Perona to Shadow Servant and asked him to direct the giant eagle to fly to the windless belt, and then stop there. At this time, in the windless zone, Vegapunk has not yet developed the technology to allow naval warships to sail in the windless zone, so it is still very safe. At least it is very safe for Moria, who is flying at an altitude of 5000 meters. Neither the navy nor the pirates will come here, and there is little chance of being disturbed. Puff. After giving everything, Moria lay on the back of the giant eagle and closed his eyes, while resting. He continued to devour life energy to recover his injuries. After all, the injury this time is more serious, and the life energy of one person is not enough, and it may take ten people to do it. At the same time, Moria manipulated the shadow and began to devour Barrett's shadow. Now that Barrett has not been dead for a minute, the life energy obtained by swallowing should not be lost much. Um. What do you mean? Opening her eyes and looking at the position of her left arm, Moria frowned. The shadow that devoured Barrett had just begun, and the injury that he originally thought could only be recovered by consuming ten people's life energy, recovered after the second person's life energy was devoured. But this is not the recovery Moriah wants. What he wants is the kind of recovery that grows an arm again, not the kind of recovery where the fracture is wrapped in a layer of flesh and does not bleed. Fuck. My hair isn't red either, so why is it one emd? Perceiving the empty left hand, Moria couldn't help complaining after being silent for a while. Loss. I thought that as long as it was fast enough. I could make the left hand grow again, but I didn't expect it to. Moriah wasn't feeling well, he thought his arm would grow back. In the end, although he was fast enough, the whole process from the broken left hand to the recovery of his life energy did not take more than half a minute. But in the end he still failed to grow an arm. Alas! Moria sighed deeply, I don't know if it's worth it or a loss in the end. It all depends on how powerful the life energy and fighting instinct skills I get after swallowing Barrett's shadow can make me stronger. At this point, Moriah is no longer tangled, and swallows Barrett's shadow with peace of mind. Three minutes later, Barrett's shadow was devoured by Moriah, and Barrett's body also weathered and dissipated, leaving only the torn trousers and clothes, which fell behind the giant eagle when the wind blew. Barrett's fighting instinct skills were swallowed and digested by Moriah, and his life energy was stored in the shadow. I don't know how much life energy can make my body stronger. It's Barrett's fighting skills and instincts, very nice. After digesting Barrett's fighting instinct skills, Moriah's eyes narrowed slightly. 
At this moment, I don't know if it's because of the great improvement in fighting instincts and skills, Moria feels that her arrogance seems to have become much stronger. I didn't expect that fighting skills and instincts could also enhance the domineering effect of seeing and hearing. Moria smiled at Yotu and thought, actually, think about it carefully, isn't the so-called fighting instinct just an alternative kind of domineering? I remember that in the original anime, in the Battle of Sky Island, Luffy couldn't be beaten by an I lose domineering show. In a fit of anger, Luffy thought of a move, closed his eyes, did not attack, and fought completely by instinct. Let Anilu also not be able to attack his figure, and achieve the same effect as seeing the domineering. The most primitive instinct of this creature, it is not too much to say that it is a special kind of domineering. Moria smiled. After he got the fighting instinct that Barrett had grown up in the fight since he was a child, he saw that the arrogance seemed to have taken medicine, and he also became much stronger. Not to mention the sharpness of the perception of breath, the perception range of seeing and hearing domineering has also expanded a lot. If it used to be the size of a small village, it is now the size of a small town. The arrogance of seeing and hearing can increase, and I hope that the arrogance of armed can also be strengthened by swallowing shadows. The corners of Moriah's mouth twitched, and after speaking, he thought, and began to devour the life energy that belonged to Barrett. It's so warm. The whole body seems to be placed in the mother's body and the cells in the body are developing and growing again. So comfortable. Moria couldn't help groaning, feeling that every cell in her body was enjoying great health care and it was relaxing. I didn't expect the physical evolution to be so comfortable. There is absolutely no feeling of dying because of the physical transformation and devolution that the predecessors said. This is the first time that Moria affected by the comfort brought by this kind of physical evolution. The life energy he devoured in the past may not be as strong as his physical body, so he can't feel the feeling of being drunk in the clouds now. However, this just shows that Barrett's body is indeed very powerful. Moria smiled, all the previous efforts seemed to be worth it. Next, Moria lay on the back of the giant eagle with peace of mind, enjoying the pleasure and comfort brought by the evolution of the body. After one day, at about four o'clock in the afternoon, Moriah lay on the giant eagle and finally flew to the windless zone. Just stop here. Looking for a sea area where the island could not be seen from all directions, Moriah made the giant eagle hover in the air, like a floating island. No one should come here, you can sleep in peace. The windless zone, the lair of the sea kings, should be very safe, at least for Moriah who is at an altitude of 5,000 meters. So Moria closed her eyes and got ready for a good night's sleep. Chapter 31 No. Oh. Um. It's over. Chapter 33 Restoration of Broken Arms. Ask for collection. Recommend. Ask for monthly pass. Ha ha. Ha ha. A series of hee hee sounds like a magic sound, making Moria unable to sleep. What's wrong? Opening her eyes, Moria looked helplessly at Perona in Shadow Servant's arms. Ha ha. Perona's face was pale, her lips were chapped, and she rubbed her belly with both hands, protesting ha ha to Moria. What do you mean? Isn't it just that you almost fell from a height of 5,000 meters by accident? Didn't I rescue you in the end? Moria spread out her hands and said angrily. As for the fact that she has been so scared that her face has turned pale until now, it is getting more and more serious. Perona stared at Moria with wide eyes, opened her mouth, and couldn't come out. It's okay, don't bother me. Moria closed her eyes again. Ha ha. Ha ha. Seeing that Moria was going to sleep again, Perona became anxious, and kept making an attacking sound of ha ha. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Moriah kept hypnotizing herself. The strong willpower quickly made Moriah used to Perona's hee-hee sound, just when he was about to fall asleep. Oh. 
Um. A difficult voice came out of Perona's mouth. Teng. Moria woke up from her drowsiness, sat up straight, looked at Perona, and asked happily, Did you just talk? Ha ha. It turned out to be an illusion. Moria closed her eyes and continued to lie down. I'm hungry. Teng. Moria turned over and stood up, this time he heard clearly, looked at Perona, who was also looking at him happily, and said, You. You can finally speak. Perona's delighted face froze for a moment, and then she opened her dry mouth and said word by word, I'm. Hungry. Moria's face suffocated with joy. Looking at Perona who kept rubbing her belly, and then looked at her chapped lips, pale complexion, and a look of weakness. Moria was embarrassed and touched the small corner on her head, as if she had made a big mistake. From the night before yesterday to now, Perona has not been eaten. Of course, he didn't eat himself, but he had life energy. Life energy is like a concentrated nutrition express, it is the essence, so that Moria's body is always in a full state, not feeling hungry, and the body is also in good condition. So he never thought to find something to eat, and the shadow servant didn't need to eat, so he forgot that there was another Perona who needed to be fed. I'm hungry. Perona said again, this time the words were very smooth. There was no way, she was afraid that she would be starved to death by this obsessed man. I see, I'm waiting, I'll find you something to eat right away. Moria replied embarrassedly and then began to think about how to find food for Perona. Looking at the endless sea all around, Moria's mouth twitched, feeling that she had made a wrong decision before. Why are you here? Moria was a little remorseful. There was no island in the vast sea, so how could he find food? Fly back, go to the new world. In the end, Moria could only make the giant eagle turn around and fly back and after finding the island, make some food for Perona to eat. Ugh! You said it would be better if you said it earlier, and now where can I find you something to eat? Moria had a headache, but looking at Perona, who had closed her eyes and didn't speak, his heart suddenly ached. This little guy, I don't know what happened before. I don't tell myself when I'm hungry, don't make trouble, just bear it. Looking at Perona's appearance, it was obvious that her body was really unable to bear it before she opened her mouth to Moria, otherwise she might continue to endure. This kind of behavior that others don't give food, and would rather be hungry without making a sound, looks familiar. Moria frowned, thinking of the little human slave girl who was brought aboard by Fisher Tiger in the original book, just like Perona at this time, she endured everything. To achieve this level, it is impossible to develop such a behavioral habit that is almost instinctive without going through some painful torture. Looking at Perona, who was already weak at this time, an invisible anger burst out in Moria's heart, but it quickly dissipated. Moria looked sad, he thought of what he had done on Vigo Island. In essence, he is not a good person, and he will also attack civilians in order to improve his strength. This is actually not much different from the human traffickers who slave Perona. Maybe in the eyes of the Navy, people like me are also scumbags. Moria laughed at herself. Forget it. The strength will be stronger in the future, and there shouldn't be such an opportunity to attack civilians. Molia Yeoyao decided to let herself go. If you are not a good person, you are not a good person. In this world of the weak, you can live as you want. This little guy, it must have been difficult before. Looking at Perona's pale face, Moria frowned, then let go, and sighed, after this time, I'll settle you first. It is obviously inappropriate for Perona to continue to follow him. He will continue to hunt the strong in the future. This process will not be smooth and will be very dangerous. And if he continues to follow him, he will definitely be rewarded by the navy, and Perona will be in danger. He can use the move to switch positions with Shadow Servant to leave, but Perona will not. So, 
I have to send Perona to live in a sea with few pirates. For this sea area, Moriah already had an idea in mind. But now, let's think about how to solve Perona's food and clothing problem. This little guy has survived until now, his body has reached the limit, and he has no time to find food. It took only a few minutes to fly back to the new world from the giant eagle, and I felt that Perona was dying, and she had to eat something right away. How to do? Moriah frowned, unable to think of any way to solve Perona's food and clothing problem for a while. Or. Try life energy. Looking at Perona's shadow in the sun, Moriah muttered to herself, her eyes getting brighter and brighter. It should be okay. After thinking about it, Moriah's expression was certain, his heart was not as good as action, and he quickly manipulated the shadow to merge into Perona's shadow. Um. Is this? Moria raised her eyebrows slightly, a little surprised. After his shadow merged into Perona's shadow, he felt Perona's psychological emotions, and even something deeper. Maybe it can even be remodeled. Moria has a feeling that he can transform Perona's shadow to make Perona's shadow his shadow attendant, and then control Perona through the shadow attendant to achieve an effect similar to mind control. In other words, as long as I transform and control Perona's shadow, Perona will obey him like other shadow attendants. My dear, it's incredible. Moria smiled again and again. This is the favorite ability of the Behindessence boss. Although Moria is not a big boss behind the scenes, he likes this ability very much. It's decided, let's develop this ability first. After making up his mind, Moria quickly input his life energy into Perona's shadow through his own shadow. It went very smoothly, and the life energy was naturally absorbed by Perona's body. It seemed that Perona's shadow absorbed the life energy, which was the same as the body absorbed the life energy. It can also be seen from this that Moria's ability to control the living person by transforming the shadow of the living person, the key to what he can do or can achieve lies in this special connection between the shadow and the living person. With this special connection, the ability to control the master of the shadow by controlling the shadow is achieved. The next step is to do a few more experiments, and we should be able to develop this ability. Moria thought to herself. Soon, Perona, who absorbed the life energy, regained her rosy complexion and her breath became healthy. But the little guy fell asleep and didn't wake up. His mouth opened wide. Obviously, he had everything related to food in his dream, and he was enjoying himself. Moria smiled and said to the giant eagle under him, Return to the original position. Chapter 30 To the best actor a bounty of 1.020 billion Bailey. Flash. Two days have passed, and three days have passed since Moria left Vigo Island. For the past three days, Moria stayed in the windless zone with peace of mind, waiting for the completion of the physical evolution, not knowing that the outside world was boiling because of the Vigo Island incident. Hello. Have you heard about the Vico Island slaughtering order incident three days ago? In the lobby of a hotel in a city in a certain country in the New World, it was lunchtime. When people from all walks of life gathered, suddenly a young man in the corner asked excitedly. How could I have not heard of it? Barrett died in battle, and the John Pirates were destroyed? Such a big event spread all over the world in an instant. How could we have not heard of it? Yes. Especially the entire destruction of the John Pirates can be said to have shocked the whole new world. I didn't find out that there have been a lot fewer pirates coming to our country recently. This is the deterrent power of the Navy. In the hotel, as soon as I heard about Vico Island, the enthusiasm of everyone was instantly ignited, and there was a lot of discussion, and the entire lobby was like a vegetable market three days ago. After Moria fled, Shadow Servant CP0 was quickly killed by Akainu and Zephyr, and then Zephyr joined Garp on their battlefield, and Akainu joined Akiji's side of the battlefield. Kaido felt bad when he saw that Moriah had left and Zephyr came again. 
Without a head iron, after a confrontation with the Warring States period, he turned into a dragon and left the sky. Warring States did not chase, Kaido may not be as strong as him, but he is absolutely durable and can fly. It is unrealistic to want to keep Kaido who wants to leave. But it doesn't matter Kaido's departure. When the John Pirates wanted to leave, they couldn't go. The other side. At the critical moment, Katagari saw the domineering breakthrough to the point where he could briefly see the future, predicted the arrival of a K.I. Nu, and also knew that Moriat had left Vico Island. Then retreat and leave while fighting in advance. Aokiji and the others did not block too much. If they were serious, there would be a chance to keep Katagari. One trick I sage froze the sea, and Katagari and the others were definitely not able to escape in the end. However, considering that Charlotte Lingaling is still alive, the Navy is afraid of Crazy Aunt's revenge, especially in this era of rampant pirates. The Navy can't afford to pay too much, it's not worth it. So Katagori led the brothers and sisters to a safe retreat. After Okiji and the others finished solving the Shadow Servant, they turned around and besieged the John Pirates. Think about what the Navy on Vico Island was like back then. Garp, Sengoku, and Zephyr are all strong men who can fight against Roger Whitebeard, plus the three major monsters of the new generation of the Navy, the Keanu, Kizaru, and Okiji. It can be said that there is an attack to attack, a speed to have speed, and a control to have control. With such a lineup, Whitebeard cried when he saw it. What's more, the John Pirates, when Zephyr appeared at that time, directly stunned them. One more general, for the John Pirates, is an additional shackle, firmly locking them on Vico Island, and there is no hope of escape. In the end, the John Pirates did their best to fight the Navy and all were killed. Only Captain John's treasure was circulated, which attracted Bucky's drool. Bump. In the hotel lobby, everyone who was discussing the Vico Island slaughtering order incident was quiet. Hearing the sound, I saw that the young man who caused the topic at the beginning, with a look of admiration, took a reward list on the most conspicuous blackboard in the middle of the lobby. The Navy, the pirates, the reason why so many terrifying powerhouses gathered on the little Vico Island is because of this man. The young man introduced, the great pirate, the best tact Moonlight Moria, the bounty is 1.020 billion Bailey. This is a man with sharp intelligence, first in the pirate town of the John Pirates, as if he inadvertently revealed his intention to hunt Barrett. Then, by hunting all the pirates in the pirate town, he enriched his shadow attendant army, and by the way, his shadow attendant abilities were exposed. The young man raised his head, like a faithful believer, and said, through the terrifying power of shadow servant, attract the attention of Kaido. Captain John, Aunt and other powerhouses. Finally, on Vico Island, all the previous intentional or unintentional layouts finally contributed to the situation where Kaido, John Pirates, and Category from the Big Mum Pirates gathered on Vico Island. The Navy had to split up to face this bad situation. And that's what this man got in the first place. Speaking of this, the young man said excitedly. There is no doubt that the act Moonlight Moria is the most dazzling man in this Vico Island slaughtering event, and he is worthy of his title of actor. Looking at the two appearances of this man, although the time was very short, the opponents he faced were all famous people. The first time I played, I retreated under the joint attack of the four people of Kizaru, the Kainu, Okiji and the naval hero Lieutenant General Garp. In the second appearance, under the sneak attack of Admiral Zephyr, he paid the price of an arm, killed the descendant of the devil, Douglas Barrett, the crew member of One Piece, and took him away. Having said this, the young man looked around and saw that everyone in the lobby was listening quietly, and a sense of pride filled his heart. So, looking at the Vico Island slaughtering order incident, there is no doubt that the biggest winner is the big pirate who finally killed Barrett and led to the destruction of the John Pirates, the movie King Moonlight Moria. Horrible.
This was the most direct feeling everyone had towards Moriah after listening to the young man's words. Moriah gave them the feeling that he had a plan, a determination to take action, and a ruthless man who did not hesitate to break his arm in order to achieve his goals. It can be said that this is a heroic character who kills decisively. A bounty as high as 1.020 billion Bailey is enough to show the Navy's fear of Moriah. Be nice. That's why Moriah was not there, otherwise he would call that young man the strongest brain tonic. God is a step by step, he just takes a step and sees a step, and as a result, he is praised as a hero, and he is also called a movie king. Kulalala. In a calm sea in the new world, on the beluga, Whitebeard released the bounty list in his hand and smiled, there is more on this sea. A troublesome guy, the ability of shadow servant, the navy must have a headache now. Marco, who was on the side, took the flying bounty and asked with a frown, Dad, is that guy's shadow attendant really as scary as the reports say? To be honest, Marco still doesn't quite believe that Moria's shadow servant can retain all the strengths he had before his death. The most important thing is that even the power that only living people can have, such as armed arrogance and seeing arrogance, can retain shadow servants, which makes Marco very suspicious. Yes, Dad, it is said that the shadow servant can even retain the domineering look of armed color. This is not something that ordinary devil fruit abilities can do. Speaking of which, Diamond George, the captain of the third division, said solemnly, three days ago, that guy Moria took Barrett's body away. A live action Barrett with a naturally flowing body. Horrible. Barrett is already very strong. A Barrett with a flowing body of the natural system will only become stronger. The people around Whitebeard all hid a solemn look on their faces. If it was as reported in the report, then Moria's threat was too great. In the future One Piece battle, Moria is definitely the formidable enemy of their Whitebeard pirates. Shadow Shadow Fruit still has such a terrifying ability. In the corner, the quiet Blackbeard Tiki's eyes lit up when he heard this, and then disappeared instantly. At this time, Blackbeard was still an honest man on the Whitebeard pirates who would not fight or rob. However, after the honest man glanced at the reward in Marco's hand, he had another target on the list of devil fruits that he would capture in the future. Alalala. Whitebeard laughed and said indifferently, regardless of whether the report is true or false, that kid is just a troublemaker. This vast sea can accommodate and devour everything. For Whitebeard, even the man rocks failed in the end. It's just a Moriah, no matter how strong the Shadow Servant's ability is, in front of his ability to destroy the sky and the earth, he is weaker than him, and the number of people is meaningless. Whitebeard smiled and said, so, don't care too much about others, and I'm here, I won't let anyone hurt you. Dad. And us, we will swear to protect you to the death. Listening to Whitebeard's solemn and caring words, Marco and others were moved, and they said that they should also protect Dad. The fear of Moria's shadow attendant's ability was instantly forgotten by them. After all, the power of Whitebeard has been deeply rooted in the hearts of the people, and they still can't feel what it means to be a hero. Only at the beginning of the plot will they regret that they didn't get rid of Moria at the beginning, so that they do the nightmare of being turned into a shadow attendant by Moria every day with Whitebeard, which in turn will destroy them all. Chapter 33 Another Magical Effect of Shadow Fruit, Broken Arm Recovery Ask for a collection, a recommendation. A monthly pass. No wind belt. The outside world is chaotic, Moria doesn't know. At an altitude of 5,000 meters, he stood firmly on the back of the giant eagle, like an iron mountain. He just closed his eyes and saw no movement, but a powerful aura like a wild and ancient beast was always surrounding him. Suddenly, Moria opened his eyes, and a lingering aura spread from him instantly. It wasn't overbearing, but it was full of oppression. Affected by this momentum, Perona shrank in the arms of the Shadow Servant, 
and looked at Moria cautiously with fearful eyes, as if she was afraid of disturbing a man-eating beast. Kong. Moria clenched her fist in her right hand to condense the domineering look of armament, and after feeling it, Yeoya nodded. This is far from what I expected. Moria pouted, very dissatisfied. The strength of the armed colors domineering hardening is not obvious, and it is very different from the knowledge cull domineering that devours Barrett's fighting instinct skills. It seems that the strength of the body cannot directly increase the strength of the domineering of the armed color. Moria shook her head regretfully, feeling a little lost in her heart. In the past three days, the physical evolution brought about by devouring Barrett's life energy was finally completed. He got his wish and got. No. A body stronger than Barrett. But his domineering armament is not because of his strong body but also to the same level as Barrett, but only 0.1 times stronger than his original foundation. With this level of domineering armed color, Moria, who has experienced the domineering strength of Garp and Zephyr's armed color, knows that he is still far behind. Think about it too, if someone's physical body is strong, whose armed is domineering, then Kaido and Charlotte Lingling's armed domineering are the strongest. However, the fact is that Garp, Roger and others are the strongest with their armed arrogance, and their physical strength is not as strong as Charlotte Lingling and Kaido. However, it's not that the physical strength is not without bonuses to the domineering of the armed color. After analyzing it, Moria smiled, a strong body can't drive the power of the armed sex domineering, but it can increase the amount of the armed sex domineering. If Moria's armed color domineering can only be used at high intensity for half an hour while covering the whole body, now the time has increased to 10 hours. It can also be seen from this that Moria's body is now the intensity is much stronger than before. This kind of domineering in the armed color is very nice. No wonder Barrett in the theatrical version. The domineering in the armed color can cover an arm the size of a town. It's a pity that such a powerful Barrett met the king of the movie Luffy. Feeling his own situation, he suddenly thought of Barrett in the theatrical version, and Moria shook his head secretly in his heart. Be nice. If you think about it this way, Kaido and Charlotte Lingaling are more aggressive than Barrett. At this moment, Moria suddenly thought of it. Lord Moria, I'm hungry. Perona's milky voice came from the side. Moria calmly manipulated the shadow into Perona's shadow, inputting her life energy. Speaking is getting smoother and smoother. Taking back the shadow, Moria thought to herself as she looked at Perona, who had a contented face at this time. I don't know if it was the experience that she almost died of starvation last time, which made her still have lingering fears, afraid of being starved to death. So in these three days, Perona and Moria were able to communicate in normal language soon. But Moria is more inclined, Perona has spoken before, but it has degenerated for some reason. Once spoken again, it resumed. Go, go to the East China Sea. Moria ordered that this was the adoption place he chose for Perona. East China Sea, the weakest sea is also the strongest sea, where One Piece and naval heroes come from. At the same time, this is also the sea area with the lowest average bounty for pirates in the four seas, and the pirates are also the least. Of course, it is only relative to other sea areas. In the East China Sea during this period, there were a lot of pirates. After all, this period was the stage when the era of the Great Pirate continued to erupt. Every day there are people who want to become one piece and go out to sea for fame, wealth and power. Call out. Call out. Ling Lai's wind swept across Moria's empty left arm and flew into the air of the East China Sea. Moria thought in her heart how to restore her left arm. No clue. After thinking for a while, Moria sighed. The only way he knew of restoring his arm was that in the original anime, the healing fruit of dress rose as Dongidong to princess could restore his arm. Is that princess born now? Moria is not sure, 
even if he was born and ate the healing fruit, it is also a question mark whether he can heal and restore his arm. Ugh! What a headache! Moria looked sullen, looked at her shadow with the sun behind her back, and complained. A broken hand, even the shadow is not complete. It is complete. Shadow. Incomplete. Moriah muttered to herself, her thoughts fell into contemplation. After a long time, Moria, who had been staring at the mutilated shadow, suddenly smiled. Maybe try. Thinking of the original anime, Moria controlled the shadow of the hand to stretch, and achieved the attack that stretched the arm like the ability of the rubber fruit. Moriah thought he could try it out, control shadow to grow his left hand, and see if his arm could grow back. After all, there is a special connection between shadows and living beings. Stop. Moria stopped the giant eagle in the air, and then he controlled his shadow to change the shadow of his left hand. He tilted his head to look at his left arm, which was still empty, and did not grow an arm again because of the shadow of the arm. But Moria was not lost, on the contrary, he was very happy at this time. Ha ha ha. Moria couldn't help laughing and said, Sure enough, I said, my hair is not red, how could it be a one-imed person? Although the arm hadn't grown back, after the shadow of an arm grew out of the shadow just now, Moria felt that the fleshy bun on the broken part of his left arm was itching all the time, as if it was about to protrude. He really wanted to see what could stick out in the end, and when he thought about it, Moria immediately swallowed ten people's life energy. These life energies, as soon as they entered Moriah's body, gathered at the broken left arm. Then, under Moriah's gaze, at a speed visible to the naked eye, his left hand grew back. Soon, a left hand as smooth as a baby's skin appeared on Moriah, the size of which was the same as the projected shadow. Fortunately, although it looks a little tender, the strength is no different from other places. She pinched the muscles of her left hand and felt almost the same as her right hand. Moria was relieved. Next, as long as he basks in the sun more, after a period of time, Moria will still be complete. Affecting the body by controlling the shadow, this ability seems to have other uses. At this time, Moria's eyes flickered slightly. The height of nearly four meters once made him very melancholy. His sword had not been sheathed for a long time, and had been maintained. This is all because it is too big to find a matching scabbard. Fortunately, the shadow's ability to affect the body now gave Moria hope. Try it again. Under the sun, Moria stretched out evil intentions towards his shadow and controlled his shadow to grow bigger. At the same time, Moria carefully perceives her own situation. Soon, Moriah showed a meaningful smile, he will return his life, it is very clear feeling the eagerness of my own cells. Thinking of this, Moriah's mind moved and swallowed twenty people's life energy at one time. It's really possible. Moriah's eyes lit up, maybe his heart was too eager to change, and as soon as life energy entered his body, the cells in the whole body were dividing rapidly. Kaz Kaz. The bones are proliferating like gears turning, supporting Moria's height to grow, while the muscles are growing wildly. Soon, a seven-meter tall Moria appeared on the back of the giant eagle. Float. The giant eagle flapped its wings desperately to maintain its flight. Moria not only got bigger, but also gained weight. Mo. Mr. Moria. Perona's small mouth opened into a circle, her eyes were round, and she was obviously surprised by Moria's change. The strength seems to have grown a little bit. Moria said happily while clenching her fists. But I feel that my body has become a lot duller. Moria frowned again, her body was not as flexible as before. Compared with this increased strength, he values the original flexibility and speed a little more. Try to make it smaller. This is the key to determining whether the big sword can be sheathed to receive moisture. Moria once again controlled the shadow to become smaller, but this time, the body did not have the feeling of cell division, but a feeling of compression and aggregation. After that, 
with the injection of Moria's thoughts, through the connection of the shadow, the body seemed to have received some kind of order. Cells are shrinking, muscles are compressing, bones are getting denser, Moria's body is shrinking. Soon, Moria's height dropped to three meters. Looking at the big sword below, he was relieved, the day of returning to the sheath is just around the corner. Being able to stretch and bend is a manly man. At this moment, Moriah had a deeper understanding of this sentence. Go, go to the East China Sea. Moriah was arrogant, staring forward, and when he went out, the sword would return to its sheath. Chapter 34 Pirate Devourer Jack Cheers! Celebrate the demons of the East China Sea, the tiger pirates are finally destroyed? Ha ha ha! That's right, let's toast. I'm going to sleep with Makino tonight. Bump. In the lively tavern, an old man about fifty years old slapped a young man on the head, causing him to have a close contact with the table. You bastard, don't say such strange words, Makino is still young, give me some influence. The old man roared at the young man. Got it, old man. I mean it's just an all night drink tonight, nothing else, after all, Makino is still so young. And the young man patted his hot head, looked at the old man and said, Is it necessary, everyone supports you, you don't need to use me for surgery when you just become the village chief. You. The old man was a little annoyed, raised his hand and wanted to greet him again. Makino who was behind the bar hurried over to grab the corner of the old man's clothes and said with a smile, Grandpa village chief, don't be angry. Hearing Makino's, village chief, sound like a bell, the old man showed an embarrassed expression and said gently, don't be angry. Don't be angry. Today is Makino's first day as a store manager. I'm not angry. But, you guys said the old man looked at the people drinking in the tavern, and said solemnly, before ten o'clock in the evening, you must leave Makino's tavern. Well. No. In the tavern, everyone was reluctant for a while, and they couldn't drink until midnight, so what's the fun? But the old man insisted that he must leave before ten o'clock. Makino was still young, and he inherited the shop from his parents alone so the necessary safety measures were still to be done. Although the people who come to drink here are all from the windmill village, human nature cannot be tested. Who knows what bad things these bastards will do when they get drunk in the middle of the night. At that time, when there is no one in the middle of the night, it is too dangerous for Makino. As the Mev windmill village. The old man felt that he had to maintain the stability of the village and protect the safety of Makino. Thank you, Grandpa Village Chief. Makino narrowed his eyes and smiled gently. Looking at the smile that seemed to melt all the sadness, the old man felt that it was even more necessary for him to supervise every day. Make sure everyone in the pub leaves by ten every night. Just when Makino's tavern in Windmill Village was lively. On a calm sea in the East China Sea, a pirate ship quietly docked there, like a ghost ship. It still doesn't work. In the cabin room, an irritable voice sounded. Under an oil lamp, a bald man had just died with white eyes and foaming at the mouth. A shadow exited from the shadow of the bald man and returned to the feet of a handsome man with two small horns on his head. The man was about twenty-four five years old, three meters tall, and his muscles were abnormally condensed, like a body of steel. It was Moria who came to the East China Sea for a month. At this time, Moria changed his identity. Through the change of shadow and the plastic surgery of life return, he is now called Jack, and he is a bounty hunter who can conquer the world by his looks. What he has just done is developing the ability to control living people by transforming shadows. However, come it has been a month in the East China Sea, and during this period, I have found hundreds of pirates, but they have not been successful. 
In the process of transforming the shadow of a living person, the person is often dead before the transformation is completed. Clean up the ship first, rest here at night, and continue to develop shadow slave tomorrow. With that in mind, Moriah left the cabin and walked out. Shadow slave is the name Moriah gave to the ability developed, which means that once a living person is successfully controlled by his shadow, he will become a slave of his own shadow and be controlled by the shadow. From the cabin to the plywood, during this time, several chefs and shadow attendants of shadow attendant have already prepared meals. Perona sat beside the prepared meal, and after seeing Moria come out, she wiped her saliva and said, It's dinner, Mo. Mr. Jack. In the middle of the conversation, Perona quickly changed her words. This was Moria's order. When she saw him like this, she should call him Jack, or she would not be given food. If you're hungry, you eat first, but it's not that you are not allowed to eat first. Moria said helplessly, walked over and sat down, picked up a piece of barbecue and began to enjoy the temptation of delicious food. Perona is obedient in everything, except that it is not good to have to wait for Moria to eat. No matter what Moriah said, she pretended not to hear. I had to wait for Moriah to come and say it before I started eating. The next day, when the sun was almost at noon, Moriah got up and was woken up by the sound of cannons. Don't come out. In the cabin, after instructing Perona, who also woke up, Moriah came to the plywood. Three hundred meters to the left, a pirate ship was approaching here firing guns. However, the shells seemed to have the stroke mode turned on, none of them hit the boat, and they all put water around the boat. Why stop? As soon as he came to the plywood, Moria found that the shelling had stopped. On the pirate ship in the distance, a captain-like man stopped the shelling. I saw the man looking at Moria with the telescope in his hand, then put it down, looked at the photo in his hand, and then looked at Moriah in the telescope. After confirming it again and again, cold sweat unnaturally covered his head. Why did it stop? My beautiful melody. The big man with a height of 3.2 meters, wearing a pirate triangle hat, walked up to the man holding the binoculars with a murderous look, and said coldly, hurry up and continue to fire on me, my pirate symphony is about to be completed. You I don't know how important this is to me. Captain. The man pointed to Moria on the boat in the distance, and said in a trembling voice, The boat over there is a bounty hunter who recently said that one person killed the tiger pirates and took the tiger Hank's head to the Navy Division to offer a reward. Thief devourer Jack. Let's leave. The man suggested. Yes, Captain, that man is terrible. It is said that every pirate group that encountered him was devoured by him, and no one survived. No one knows how he murdered. It's terrible, that man. Not only that man, but the others who heard that he was the pirate devourer suddenly remembered the terrifying legend that was popular in the East China Sea Pirate Circle recently, and they all scrambled to persuade their captains to leave quickly. You bastards. What if he beats the tiger Hank? What do you think of me? Just leave like this, where will I put my face? The captain of the captain looked like I had the most face, and he had to do it, which made his younger brother's liver hurt for a while. Captain. Be rational. That's the ruthless man of the tiger pirates who killed the overlord of the East China Sea with a total bounty of more than 100 million bailey. Roll. The captain of the captain kicked a little guy who persuaded him, looked at Moria on the plywood on the ship in the distance, and said coldly, let me lean over and prepare to fight. In a minute. The captain, the captain, knelt at Moria's feet in fear, begging Moria's mercy and letting him go. It's me whose eyes but doesn't know the actor, I'm willing to swear to follow him. The captain. Looking at the shadows all over the ship and the gradually weathered and dissipated bodies of his companions, suddenly remembered the news newspapers and reward lists he had read, and he didn't understand that he was pretending to hit the alloy steel plate. 1020 million Bailey. 
this kind of terrifying big pirate with a bounty does not stay in the new world, and comes to the weakest East China Sea to be a bounty hunter, you dare to believe it. Captain Han was speechless at this time, and despair filled his heart. It still doesn't work. Mori aside, just now he performed shadow slave transformation on these pirates, and the result was the same as before, the transformation was not completed, and they all died. Only this captain is left. Moria looked at the captain with a faint gaze. Sir, I am willing to follow you to the death, let me go. The captain, the old man, was very clever, and hurriedly wept bitterly, how pitiful it was. But Moria was unmoved, but just when he was about to shoot, call out. A cold light flashed before his eyes. But it was the captain of the captain who was kneeling on the ground and pulled a dagger out of nowhere, and instantly climbed up and stabbed Moria. Between his legs. Moria felt a chill in her lower body, and her eyes narrowed. Noisy. Thump. Moria retracted the shadow gun and looked at the mouth covering her heart. The captain, who fell to the ground, said indifferently, in the end, he is still a pirate captain. Even if he knows he will die, he still has the courage to fight. Chapter 35 Shadow Slave Invitation from the Navy Ask for a collection, a recommendation, a monthly pass. Um. Not dead yet. Moriah was surprised that the captain was full of vitality, and he didn't die immediately when his heart was pierced. However, the person has already passed out, and he must be dead in a minute. Maybe. Moria's eyes suddenly lit up, looking at the captain who was not dead yet. His mind moved, and he manipulated the shadow into the shadow of the captain and transformed into a shadow slave. I see. Moria breathed a sigh of relief and smiled. His shadow slave development was successful. With the help of life and death, when consciousness is weak, on the basis that there is basically no self resistance, the transformation of shadow slaves is completed quickly. Shadow slave transformation is like modifying the program. When people were alive before, the program was intelligent, with self-feeling and defensive wit, and even the setting of self-destruction mechanism. Once it encounters a powerful shadow slave transformation attack and cannot repair itself, it will start the self-destruction program. Therefore, before Moria was successfully transformed, people died. This time, because of the weak consciousness and lack of intelligence at the time of life and death, the self-destruction setting cannot be activated. After being transformed by Moria's shadow slave, the program was easily modified, and the program was modified into a setting based on him. Therefore, Captain Han successfully became a shadow slave and he has become a shadow slave who obeys Moria. But at the same time, it retains the original character, which can be said to be the most perfect mind control. But, it seems that if we don't save this captain, he will die. Shadow slaves are different from shadow servants. They are still alive and naturally die. Moria controlled the shadow to integrate into the shadow of the captain and input life energy to it which is different from the shadow attendant. Shadow servant's words are connected with Moria's shadow space, and he can put life energy into shadow servant's body with his thoughts. For shadow slaves, it is necessary to input life energy by integrating shadows, just like the input to Perona. Owner? The captain, the captain, who woke up after inputting his life energy to recover from his injuries stood up in front of Moriah and bowed his head respectfully. Noisy. The shadow gun once again penetrated the heart of the captain. This time the captain died very quickly. From the beginning to the end, the captain did not have any thoughts or actions to resist. On this point, Moriah is confident that under his domineering perception, he will not be wrong. Very good, shadow slave. Moriah praised that this ability is very nice. He has already thought of several ways to use it, and one of them is very exciting. If you can enslave Kaido and the Beast Pirates, and become a Behind Essence boss, it seems not bad. 
Thinking of this, Moria smiled and felt that she really had that strength in the future, so she could try it. Now, let's find a good family for Perona to entrust. With the ability of Shadow Slave, I am not afraid that the entrusted person will treat Perona badly and even sell Perona. Thinking in her heart, Moria moved slowly, took off the captain's head, put it in a box, and then took the valuables from the ship and put it into the shadow space. I don't know how much it's worth. Moria thought to herself when she flipped the box in her hand. The headquarters of the East China Sea Naval Division is set up on a ring-shaped island. The island is under militarized management, and there are no civilians, but the Navy. It is in charge of all naval affairs in the East China Sea. At the same time, it also has the largest gold exchange in the East China Sea, a naval institution in exchange for pirate bounties. Walking into the money exchange, Moria took the box, walked to the counter, and handed it to Miss Navy inside. Help me see how much it's worth. Ah good. Carter. Miss Navy's face was blushing, while peeking at Moria's face after plastic surgery, she opened the box and glanced inside. What? Miss Navy was startled, looked at the box again, and opened her mouth slightly. This is Iron Head Thrall, with a bounty of 40 million baileys. You are? Pirate Devourer, Lord Jack. Miss Navy is a newcomer. This is the first time I have met Moria, who goes by the pseudonym Jack. I didn't recognize Moria at first, but now when I see the head of Iron Headed Thrall, I know that there is only one bounty hunter in the entire East China Sea. Can do it. For a time, Miss Navy looked at Moria's pretty face even more ruddy. Handsome, good looking, and strong, isn't this my future husband? Miss Navy thought. Uck. Even Iron Head Thrall was killed. If this goes on, we won't have any work to do. Yeah, I haven't opened for a week. The Pink Islands UI Ozawa and Boto Maria have not been explored for a long time, and they are all blurred. In the Hall of the Gold Exchange, the other bounty hunters talked a lot after hearing Miss Navy's words. Since Moria came to the East China Sea to start a bounty hunter journey, because of his super mobility, he can ride a giant eagle. As a result, the famous pirates in the East China Sea were all killed, and the rest were also hidden, which made many bounty hunters now have a lot of leisure. But they only dare to discuss already, those who dared to provoke Moria disappeared. Although there is no evidence, these bounty hunters understand that those people are not missing but dead, killed by Moria, but there is no evidence. So they only dare to talk behind their backs. Jack. After exchanging the bounty, Moria declined Miss Navy's future appointment, carrying a box containing 40 million baileys. As soon as he walked out of the gold exchange, someone stopped him. On the left side of the exchange, a rear admiral came, looking at Moria with a kind face. There was also a middle-aged man dressed as a businessman who came with the rear admiral. Seeing that he nodded and bowed behind the rear admiral, he must have asked for something. Jack, I just heard that you took out Iron Head Thrall as well. It just happened to be solved easily. Looking at the rear admiral who came to the front with an unabated smile, Moria asked, Major Aaron, is there anything you need to come to me? If you still persuade me to join the Navy, you don't have to. Already. Since Moria came to the East China Sea and caught a few pirates with a bounty of over 10 million baileys over to collect the bounty, she was taken in by the Navy and invited to become a Navy. Moria refused at first, and the Navy did not follow up. It seems that every famous bounty hunter will be invited, just for official business. It wasn't until Moria killed the tiger pirates that had the most bounties in the East China Sea that it attracted the attention of the Navy. Rear Admiral Aaron personally came to recruit several times, but Moriah did not agree. He thought that this time, Rear Admiral Aaron also came to recruit him to join the Navy. Alas! Really? Looking at Moriah, Rear Admiral Aaron felt a little helpless, 
you said that you are so jealous of pirates, why can't you join the navy? This is where Major General Aaron has always been puzzled. Every pirate who encountered Moria died, which is enough to show his attitude towards pirates. If Moriah killed the pirates just for the bounty, that's fine, and it's not worth the repeated solicitation of Major General Aaron. But every time Moria came to exchange the bounty, he didn't go to Pink Island to find out the depths, nor did he go to Lassie Island to gamble, and he liked food. Shouldn't a man of justice who killed pirates purely for peace like this actively join the navy that represents justice? Why did he keep refusing? This is something Major General Aaron has never figured out. Jealous of pirates. Moriah listened and smiled. It seems that although it is not very accurate, he is indeed more ruthless towards the pirates. Maybe he subconsciously thinks that the pirates are not good people. Major General Elon. Moriah shrugged and explained, I can't help but kill the pirates when I see them. I think, with my character, it should be easy to make mistakes in the Navy. I don't want the Navy to not take it as it is, but to be wanted and become a pirate that I hate. Forehead. Hearing Moriah's explanation, Major General Aaron was stunned for a moment, then thought about it, it was true. Among the pirates, some cannot be killed and need to be imprisoned in the advancing city. If Moria does not obey the order, he will kill the pirates who cannot be killed. Once or twice is fine, but more often, it is really possible to be kicked out of the navy. With this guy's slaughtering character, it is really possible to do something wanted. Thinking of this, Rear Admiral Aaron did not persuade Moria to join the navy, and turned to the businessman and said, I've already stopped you, you can talk about it yourself. After all, Major General Aaron glanced at Moria regretfully, then shook his head and left. Chapter 36 Beauty Chamber of Commerce, Seeking for Collection, Recommendation and Monthly Pass Major General Elon, walk slowly. The middle-aged man said respectfully behind him. After Major General Aaron walked away a little, the middle-aged man immediately turned around to face Moria, and said, Lord Jack. With that, the middle-aged man walked to Moria and handed out a business card, nodded and introduced himself saying, I'm the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce, Skoda. Moria stood in place and didn't pick it up, and Skoda was not embarrassed. Naturally, she took back her business card and continued, I'm looking for you this time because our chamber of commerce is an important commodity to be shipped to Rogtown. I would like you to escort us to our destination safely. Don't worry about money. Our beauty chamber of commerce serves the great Tianlong people, and we will definitely give you enough money. How about this? Skoda waved a big hand and said proudly, the price is up to you. As long as it does not exceed my ability to bear, I can call the shots for you. Beauty chamber of commerce? Dragon people? Commodity? A cold light flashed in Moriah's eyes, as if she had seen the most annoying person. Looking at Skoda, Moria smiled and asked softly, May I know what it is? Um. Hearing this, Skoda's expression condensed, looking at Moria, there was no flattery, only vigilance. Moria's expression didn't change, as if he just asked casually, Skoda couldn't see anything. However, the goods must not be talked about nonsense. This time the goods are not ordinary goods. They are definitely the kind that have been fattened for three years. If it's inconvenient, don't say it. I'm just asking by the way. Seeing that Skoda didn't speak, Moria waved her hand to show that she didn't care, and then walked out. Grown ups. Master Jack. Skoda's face changed slightly, and quickly caught up with Moria. Why? I really can't tell you about the goods because of the regulations of the Chamber of Commerce, but I can tell you that the ultimate seller of the goods is the most powerful Tianlong people in the world, that is to say, we are serving the great Tianlong people. Of. Skoda said excitedly, Sir, you should know what the status of Tianlong people is in this world, as long as you help us this time. 
those garbage pirates in the sea, the so-called treasure of the so-called pirate king, are in front of the creator of the world. Farts are not. Moreover, what you have gained is not only wealth, but also monstrous power. Skoda talked a lot with emotion, but Moria was unmoved. Still monstrous power? You need to nod your head and bow in front of a major admiral of the naval branch, you need to have a warship escort you, you need to beg me to escort you. I also want to use the deterrence of the Tianlong people to make myself surrender. Ha ha. Moria gave Skoda a double use, and continued to walk out without looking back. Grown ups. Roll. Skoda still wanted to entangle, Moria made a soft sound, and an invisible momentum was concurrent. Skoda seemed to be haunted by evil spirits, and instantly froze, watching Moria leave in horror. It wasn't until Moria was nowhere to be seen that she ran away. Have you heard? There's still half a year, and it's time to move the guards that rotate every four years in advance city. Advance the city? Guard transfer? On the straight road to the outer port, Moria's attention was drawn to the conversation of the two Navy soldiers approaching. The footsteps slowed down a little, and the conversation between the two soldiers came into my ears one after another. Ugh. This time, our East China Sea branch has allocated 2,000 people. Why did it suddenly increase so much this time? I don't know, the only thing I know is that there will definitely be a lot of pirates in the city. Damn pirates, wouldn't it be better to kill them directly, why would they send them to the advanced city? There are so many places this time, what if they are selected? In the dark place of the advancing city, it has been four years since I left. There is no vacation in the middle, I can't contact my family, and I don't even know that my wife and children have run away with others. Who said it wasn't? Fortunately, my wife never gave up on me, and has always been attached to her right hand. Why are you looking at me like that? No. Your wife is very good. By the way, you know whether the allocation of the guard rotation is a lottery or a roll call. Do not know. If it's a roll call, I have to go for a walk. I must not be selected. My wife will not be attached to the right hand. The voices of the two navy soldiers gradually faded away, and Moria also walked out of the straight road and came to the port road. He turned around and glanced at the plaque of East China Sea Naval Division Headquarters. Moria felt that in half a year, he could come to the Admiral Errant to apply for the navy. The condition is that he wants a place to advance the city's rotation of guards. Taking a boat, away from the naval division, in a sea where no boat could be seen around, Moria took the boat into shadow space. Then the moon strode up into the sky, came to the back of the giant eagle, and flew up to an altitude of 5,000 meters. Lord Jack, I'm hungry. Perona was like a lazy cat, lying on the back of the giant eagle weakly indicating that it was time for dinner. Don't eat today, give you life energy. Speaking of which, Moria gave her own life energy through the shadow. Go, go back to the headquarters of the naval division. Moria ordered the giant eagle. Call out. The giant eagle crossed an arc and took Moria back to the headquarters of the naval division. I didn't promise him. The general manager of the Beauty Chamber of Commerce should find other bounty hunters. In terms of time, it should still be at the East China Sea Naval Branch. Moria judged in her heart that when she went back this time, she would naturally follow the middle-aged man from the Beauty Chamber of Commerce to find their transport vessel and catch them all. However, the identity has to be changed. Jack has to become a navy who hates hatred to advance the city rotation. He can't do things like attack merchant ships. Thinking in her heart, Moria thought, and asked the shadow servant to move Perona aside, so that he wouldn't see her. Then control the shadow change, and swallow ten life energy at the same time. Soon, a tall eagle with a height of five meters, a well-proportioned and harmonious body, a face that is synonymous with the two great handsome ratios, 
and swaying back and forth between Wu and Wu appeared on the back of the giant eagle. The only thing that doesn't go well with being handsome is that the clothes and pants are not artifacts, but become a beggar's outfit. Fortunately, Moriah was already prepared, and took out the prepared clothes from the shadow space and put them on. Next, please enjoy the performance of the movie King. Moriah smiled, and now he suddenly had a clear understanding of why the Navy gave him the title of best actor. What am I going to call my lord now? Perona showed her cute head from the shadow attendant's shoulder and asked curiously. Um. Moria thought for a while, and said softly nostalgically, just call Mopa. Mo. Pa. Sir. Perona looked at Moria's face and figure at this time, and memorized it word by word to ensure that she would not call it wrong in the future, lest Moria not give her food eat and starve her. S -h, 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 H. The giant eagle was very fast, and after a while, Moria returned to the headquarters of the East China Sea Naval Division, but this time it was at an altitude of 5,000 meters. See if you're gone. Moria took out the binoculars and looked at the naval branch below. What? It's very fast. Just after arriving at the headquarters of the Naval Division, Moria discovered through the telescope that a large merchant ship with a length of 200 meters was gradually sailing out of the port. Skoda, the former general manager of the Beauty Chamber of Commerce, was on the plywood board, discussing something with a dozen or so bounty hunters. Then it seemed that something had been made clear, and Skoda just walked into the cabin room and closed the door. It seems that the so-called important commodities are in that cabin. Moriah retracted the telescope and let the giant eagle follow the merchant ship below. I don't know what kind of slave, it's worth the general manager to recruit more than a dozen bounty hunters at one time. From here to Rog Town, it will take ten days and a half months at least. This is still the case of smooth sailing. If you stop for training or encounter pirates on the way. Without a month, don't think of Rogue Town. For such a long time, plus the risks along the way, every bounty hunter will not give 10 million bailey, but no one will take this job. If you calculate it, a dozen or so bounty hunters are more than 100 million baileys. Really willing. Moria sighed, admiring the boldness of this beauty chamber of commerce. But. Isn't the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce not afraid of the dark? If this is a remote sea area, these bounty hunters come to guard and steal once, then they will lose their lives and money. Maybe those bounty hunters were frightened by the draconians, not necessarily. Ha ha. Moria smiled, thinking of Skoda, the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce, and his boasting. Not to mention, for people in this world, the name of Tianlong people can indeed scare many people. But you can't scare me. Moria smiled and continued to follow the merchant ship on the back of the giant eagle, preparing to wait until the evening before shooting. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon, it's still early. Chapter 37 Hunting Time is up, Seeking Collection, Recommendation and Monthly Pass. I lost a lot this time. At least 100 million bailey. In a room in the merchant ship's cabin. Skoda, the general manager of the Beauty Chamber of Commerce, who didn't know that his merchant ship had been targeted by Moriah, was calculating something on the table, and at the same time babbling in pain. It's all because of that hateful bounty hunter, pirate devourer Jack. If it wasn't for that bastard who killed the tiger Hank, I wouldn't have to be so passive. Skoda scolded Moria for a while in her heart. The tiger pirates have always been their partners in transporting commodities, and this time the goods will also be handed over to the tiger pirates. We had already contacted each other, but a week ago, the tiger pirates met Moria, and the group was destroyed. This forced beauty Skoda had to go to the gold exchange to seek the help of bounty hunters. At first, he took a fancy to Moria's vest jack and he thought that he would spend tens of millions to recruit Moriah. As a result, Moriah refused. 
he had no choice but to find a few more bounty hunters. After all, not everyone was a ruthless man like Moria who could make pirates actively hide. Only in this way, Skoda feels a loss. Maid, I hope everything goes well this time, otherwise the top management of the Chamber of Commerce will kill me if I spend so much money. Skoda secretly prayed that this trip was also a coexistence of risk and wealth. If he succeeded, he could live a life of drunkenness in the next three years. If he failed, he could only go to hell to enjoy the devil's encouragement. Soon, the time came to around twelve o'clock in the evening, there was no moonlight in the sky, and the surroundings were pitch black. Except for the part illuminated by the lights of the merchant ship, it was dark everywhere. At this time, the merchant ships had come to a sea area with no surrounding islands. Thanks to the smooth sailing of the merchant ship, I did not encounter a pirate. Most of the people on the boat were asleep, except for the sailors on duty, only the dozen or so bounty hunters who were still drinking on the plywood. Thanks to Jack, I feel that this trip is just a trip back, and I will earn ten million. Tourism isn't, but it certainly isn't dangerous either. After all, there are only those pirates with a bounty of more than 10 million baileys in the East China Sea. Most of them were killed by Jack. The rest either went to the Great Route to die, or they didn't know where to hide. Visually, they will only emerge if Jack leaves the East China Sea. That's right, even if there are some who dare to come forward, don't be afraid. With us here, even if Jack arrives, we have to wait. Yes. Ha ha ha. Drink. Drink. There were sixteen bounty hunters in total, drinking fine wine and talking big words on the plywood, completely forgetting the scene where no one dared to talk to Moriah at the money exchange. Call out. At this moment, a black shadow fell from the sky, like a cannonball hitting the plywood of the merchant ship. It's time to hunt. With a voice falling. Bump. Moria appeared in a standard Iron Man landing method and slammed firmly on the plywood. Boom! The huge force plunged the bow into the sea, the stern lifted up, and then fell back to the sea. Bang! Whoa! The water dispersed, and after a while, the merchant ship returned to calm. What happened? Is the tsunami coming? A group of people emerged from various places on the boat and then quickly noticed Moria on the plywood. After all, the height of five meters is too conspicuous among these people who are only three meters tall. Who are you guy? The sixteen bounty hunters tensed up and stared at Moria solemnly. Years of fighting made them feel very sensitive, knowing that the big man in front of them was not an ordinary person. Because a tingling sense of danger always surrounds them. Hi. I'm a pirate. Moria said lightly, showing her big white teeth. Um. Pirates. A sailor on the ship reacted, and immediately ran to the wall near the cabin to pick up a speakerphone bug, and said loudly, Enemy attack. There are pirates. Enemy attack. There are pirates. Very good. Moria smiled inwardly and did not stop it. When everyone came out, he could clean up together. Soon, Tatata. Almost everyone on the boat came out and surrounded Moria. In his domineering perception, except for the commodity in the room deep in the cabin and the two guards, everyone else came to the plywood. Skoda, the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce, also came out, but he was leaning against the door of the cabin, as if he was ready to hide in the cabin at any time. Whoever you are, faced with so many of us, you are dead. The bounty hunters saw that there were about 200 people surrounding Moria, and the stinging sense of crisis before seemed to have weakened, and the courage in their hearts increased a lot. All of them stared at Moria with a gold light in their eyes, and their swords or firearms were already raised. Superior. I don't know who said it, and the people surrounding Moria suddenly made a move and slashed at Moria with a long knife. Shave call out. Bump bump. In an instant, Moriah disappeared, 
and the long knife that slashed Moriah fell on the plywood. What about people? Where did you go? Everyone was puzzled, Moriah's speed was too fast, and their naked eyes couldn't see it at all. There. Someone reacted and pointed to the location of Skoda, the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce. I saw Moria put one hand on the shoulders of Skoda who was sweating coldly, looked at the people facing him, smiled, and said, very good, just stand like this and don't move. Saying that, Moria squeezed Skoda's neck slightly. Carter. The sound of the bones being crushed sounded, Skoda's eyes were instantly dull, and the breath dissipated and died. Bump. Released his hand. Skoda fell to the ground, and then Moria flattened his right hand into a knife. You bastard, you actually killed my Bailey. Unforgivable. Before the others could react, the bounty hunters who saw Skoda's downfall were furious, and with Skoda's death, their Bailey was not paid. This is like killing one's parents. Sixteen bounty hunters attacked Moria together at this moment. Lance you, chop. Moria's indifferent voice sounded, and her right hand quickly drew a semicircle forward, and a crescent-shaped slashing wave shot out. Ziz easy. The slashing wave swept across everyone in an instant and flew away to dissipate. Thump. Thump. A series of sounds of falling to the ground sounded, all the people on the splint were cut in half, and the whole splint was stained with blood. Some people are not dead yet. Some people are shouting help, some people are scolding Moriah, some people are looking at everything in front of them, their spirits have collapsed. In a minute. Everyone died, Moriah opened the cabin door and walked into the innermost room. Zizi. The two guards who guarded the gate were killed by Moriah's pointing gun. Clang. Opening the door and entering, a giant transparent water tank appeared in front of Moriah. Under the bright yellow oil lamp, a sleeping mermaid was quietly suspended in the water tank, like a charming black lotus. The black hair that spread to the waist of the tight water snake was very similar to the appearance of Yan Lingji, the No. 8 wife in her previous life, when she first appeared. These people are quite good at playing. Moria smiled. I have to say that the mermaid is very beautiful. Her slightly thick lips reveal a trace of unspeakable urge, her closed eyes are like sleeping lotuses, waiting for the moment to amaze the world, her eyebrows are like willow smoke, which is impressive. I made a decision. This woman, I want it, and it will also be mine. Moriah's mouth was dry. This was the first time he wanted someone other than strength after coming to this lawless world. He had to win. Try first, if you can conquer by charm, then conquer by charm, if you can't, then by strength, in the words of the previous life, it is to throw money. If you can't conquer it by spending money on your strength, then. Shadow Slaves. Moria, who has never been in love in his previous life, is not very confident about his charm, even if he is now a little more handsome and Shuang Wu after transformation. On the contrary, he is very confident about his own strength, but not everyone in this world succumbs to strength, so shadow slaves are the last thing he has to do. Selected. With this in mind, and looking at the huge mermaid in the water tank, Moria understood why the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce was so willing to pay. With this body type, if you get the Chambord Archipelago for auction, there will be a billion baileys at least. It's no wonder that the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce is willing to spend more than 100 million baileys to hire people. Moria smiled. The mermaid was very big, about 8 meters in size including the tail, which looked like a shark's tail. Specifically what kind of shark tail, Moria didn't know, it could be seen that the shark tail was already his limit. Chapter 38 This Woman, I Want It Ask for a collection, a recommendation, a monthly pass. Whoa! Whoa! The water in the square water tank flows out from the lower pipe, the water level gradually drops, and the mermaid in the water tank sinks. Soon, 
When the water in the tank ran out, the mermaid lay sideways at the bottom of the tank. Clang! Moria put down the water gate in his hand, walked to the other side of the tank, and dropped another gate. Clang! The square water tank sank slowly, leaving only a square crack on the ground. The design of this water tank is definitely to catch mermaids. It seems that the wrong person was killed. With a smile in her heart, Moria went into the water tank and squatted down. Looking at the mermaid lying on her side posing a seductive picture, Moria suddenly thought to herself, it seems to have been reported in a previous life that sharks do not have urination organs, and the urine is volatilized in the muscles, so the meat of the sharks has urine smell. Moria was wondering if the mermaid in front of her was like this too. She glanced at the lower body of the mermaid, but she did not see any special organs. In other words, if a beauty sweats, it is called body fragrance. If this mermaid sweats, what is it called? Yixiang? What the hell? Can't think about it anymore, no more beautiful people are beautiful, Moria quickly got rid of the distracting thoughts in her heart. This is the world of One Piece, which is definitely different from the previous life. After all, shark-shaped mermaids are not real sharks. Speaking of which, facing a sleeping mermaid. How should I wake her up, be gentle? Or rude? It's a little confusing. Moria stretched out her left and right hands and walked towards the two mysterious transparent white veils in front of her. It's a mermaid. As long as he doesn't sweat, he can still. Um. Just when he was about to touch by Shah, Moria suddenly stopped with both hands, slightly forehead facing a pair of big eyes that were still a little sloppy. He calmly retracted his hands and calmly said, I just want to help you do CPR. That's it. Hearing the voice of the mermaid, her scattered eyes suddenly woke up. Immediately, he saw that his body with almost no cover was exposed in front of a human being. Human. The mermaid shouted angrily. Contrary to Moria's expectations, she didn't put her arms around her chest to block the spring, but raised her huge fist and slammed into Moria's head. This reaction can only be experienced by people who have experienced countless battles. Moria was a little bit curious about this mermaid. It seems that it is not only beautiful, but also has a lot of experience. It is not a vase, maybe it can be cultivated. A thought flashed in my heart, staring at the mermaid's beautiful face, Moria didn't take a look at the fist that came over. Because. The mermaid's fist swung in the air like a straight line was broken in vain, it softened, and the white and tender arm thumped back to the bottom of the water tank. The mermaid's face changed, and she found that she was weak all over, and she couldn't even move her arms but she still stared at Moria with eyes full of murderous intent. Moria ignored the killing intent of the mermaid, and continued to admire the graceful front half of the body. Forget the back half, he couldn't appreciate it. Human, you. The mermaid was wrinkled and charming, seeing Moria just staring at her, combined with her current situation, the mermaid would react somewhat. Moria didn't seem to be the group of humans who caught her, so the killing intent in her eyes gradually weakened, but there was still a hint of vigilance. It was a human gaze that made her uncomfortable. My name is Mopa. You were caught by the traffickers, and then I killed the traffickers. Moria briefly introduced himself and explained the current situation. You saved me? The mermaid obviously didn't believe it, how could humans save her? What's more? She saw a familiar look in the eyes of the man in front of her. This was just another human being who wanted to play with her. I was at the headquarters of the East China Sea Naval Division, and I knew that this ship was going to deliver goods to the Tianlong people, so I judged that this was a ship for human traffickers to transport slaves. Next, Moriah shared the conversation with the general manager of the Beauty Chamber of Commerce and everything that happened after that including killing all the traffickers. Heavenly Dragon. Hearing these three words, the color of fear in the mermaid's eyes was obvious, 
and it took a while before she regained her composure. Aren't you afraid of Tianlong people? The mermaid asked. What? The mermaid's question made Moria happy. According to the routine, is he going to say, dragon people or something, they are just the moths of the world. Sooner or later, I will remove these moths, and the world will be brighter. Then the mermaid fell in love with him at first sight. But, I don't want to say that. Moriah thought. I'm not afraid, I'm just afraid not enough strength. Moriah finally said this, which means that the strength is not good enough, and the strength is enough to be afraid of a ball, you will be afraid of someone weaker than you. You. The mermaid was shocked, she understood the meaning of the man in front of her, as long as the strength was in place, it didn't matter if the Tianlong people came. What's your name? Moria asked casually. I didn't expect. You are human. Will save me. The mermaid didn't reply to Moriah's words, and at this moment, her heart fell into an unspeakable shock and complexity. Through the remarks and questions and answers just now, and the fact that she saw the two guards in front of the door who could not afford to fall to the ground, the mermaid basically believed what Moriah said. It was Moria who saved her, even at the cost of offending the Tianlong people to save her. People who have not experienced darkness do not know how precious sunlight is. Only when you have felt full of malice, can you feel incredible about the sudden kindness. For the mermaid, whether in the days of living on Mermaid Island or now, the human beings she has experienced are either greedy or fearful towards her. In short, except for a brain dead. Oops, Sidoro. Steel Mill. You can't mess around. The mermaid's face was anxious at this time. She woke up and arrived here after being caught. She didn't know how many days had passed. She quickly asked Moria, Mr. Mopa, do you know what day it is today? What day is today? Familiar question? Fuck. Isn't this the question that every traveler loves to ask when he first crosses over? Moriah secretly complained in her heart, but said confidently, I don't know. Serious people who will keep a diary, who will remember what day is today. Moriah said that after he came to the world of One Piece, he never looked at the date. That. Thinking that before she was caught, there was a bounty hunter hunting powerful pirates in the East China Sea. And the mermaid asked again, Do you know which famous pirate has been caught recently to receive a bounty? Moria replied, Today, during the day, Iron Head Thrall was killed and put on a bounty. I did it. Moria added silently in her heart. Iron Head Sal? Daytime today? It was close to night when she was arrested, that is to say, at least a day had passed but it was not enough to determine exactly how long. The mermaid thought to herself, and then asked, anything else? A week ago, the tiger pirates were exterminated and exchanged for a bounty. I still did it. Moria added silently again in her heart. What? A week ago? Hearing that, the mermaid's face turned pale. Before she was caught, she was sure that the tiger pirates were still there. That is to say, at least more than a week has passed since she was caught. Then Sidoro and Gunmir must be looking for her, if the navy finds out. Thinking of this, the mermaid's heart darkened. From being targeted by human traffickers, she knew that their identities could not be hidden in the East China Sea. Can you take me back to Kling Village, Fawnt Island, right away? I need to go back there as soon as possible. My brother is still waiting for me. If he doesn't go back, I'm afraid he will do something stupid. Please, Mo. Lord Mopa. The mermaid had tears in her eyes. Although she didn't want to do this to a human, she still begged Moria to send her back. She knew how important she was in her brother's heart, and she was afraid that her brother would do something stupid in order to find her, causing the navy to encircle and suppress her. At present, the progress of the strategy is still. I can't see it. Moriah was depressed, and it was really distressing that she had never been in a relationship. 
Fortunately, his purpose of coming to the East China Sea has basically been achieved, and he has time. The development of Shadow Slave is completed, and the rest is to find an ordinary family, settle down with Perona, and then return to the New World to continue hunting the strong. But now the plan has changed. After half a year, he will go to advance the city's rotation of guards, and he wants one. So he still has to stay in the East China Sea for half a year, and the pirates can't kill anymore. Wait until it's almost half a year before you kill, and when you give the Navy a certificate, you can successfully enter the Navy and become the Navy that rotates to the promotion city. Just use this half year to see how your own charm is, if you can't do it, you can only force it. Moria, who was determined, met the mermaid's pleading gaze and said, Okay, let's go. Thanks. Before finishing speaking, the mermaid watched in amazement as a shadow came from under Moriah, quickly rolled up and hung herself in the air, and walked out behind Moriah. This ability. Shadow. The mermaid thought for a while, then her pupils shrank, looking at Moriah walking in front of her, she was shocked. Moonlight Moria, the best actor with a bounty of 1.020 billion Bailey, why did he appear here, in the East China Sea? Also, save yourself? And, how is the real person different from the photo on the bounty list? The mermaid had a lot of doubts and incomprehensions in her heart and she didn't solve it until she got on the back of the giant eagle. Chapter 39 Someone is trying to grab my meal ticket, polite three requests. That is to say, Lord Moria came to the East China Sea for Perona. On the back of the giant eagle flying to Fount Island, the mermaid looked at Perona, who was asleep in the shadow attendant's arms. For this girl who had the same experience as herself, and was even worse than herself, there was a hint of distress in her eyes. From the conversation just now, she learned that Perona was caught by human traffickers and made a slave when she was only about two years old. If Moriah hadn't rescued him, the days to come would be imaginable. Absolutely life is better than death. Thinking of this, the mermaid looked at Moriah without a trace of alertness. He's a good guy to trust. The mermaid sent Moria a good person card without authorization. It seems that the favorability has improved a lot. Looking at the mermaid's eyes, Moria seemed to have misunderstood something. He had a feeling, this woman is about to be conquered by him. That's right. Moria explained with a smile, Perona is too young after all, it is very dangerous to stay by my side. I came to the East China Sea this time to find a family for Perona to adopt her. That's true. Hearing this, the mermaid nodded inwardly. Thinking of the reports on Moriah in the newspapers, the enemies of the battle are all terrifying and powerful such as naval heroes and generals. Under such circumstances, Perona was still well protected by Moria, and finally, for safety, she sent Perona to the East China Sea to settle down. Sure enough, he is a good person who can be trusted. The mermaid secretly sent Moria a good person card. Moria, who didn't know why, looked at the mermaid and smiled, and suddenly remembered, by the way, my current name is Mopa, which is my nickname, because I was very timid when I was a child, so I took such a nickname. Neither the Navy nor the world government know. You can call me that in the future. My current identity is not easy to reveal. The mermaid nodded in understanding, then looked at Moria's face and asked, Why is your lord different from the photo on the bounty list? If it weren't for your special devil fruit ability, I wouldn't dare to confirm it was you. This. Moria thought for a while, the original appearance seemed a bit unsatisfactory, and it was not helpful for the strategy, so he smiled. This is my original appearance. The photo of the Navy's reward was disguised by me, mainly to have some peace. Des. After speaking, Moria told the mermaid again, I hope you don't tell anyone about this secret. Don't worry. The mermaid's heart tightened, and she nodded quickly, I won't tell anyone, Lord Mopa. Um. 
Moria smiled, and then asked the mermaid's name and how she came to the East China Sea. What? Only then did the mermaid react. She had never introduced herself, her face turned red, and she was a little embarrassed. My name is Hera, from Mermaid Island, six years ago. As the mermaid Hera slowly approached, Moria knew the tragic experience and great ideal of this mermaid. She studied medicine on Mermaid Island since she was a child, thinking that one day, if the mermaid came to live on land, there would definitely be some changes in her body, and she would get some diseases that humans have, even some diseases that humans don't know about. So, in order to prevent and treat these possible diseases in advance, she chose to leave the Mermaid Island and come to the human world to study medicine. Then, through my life in the human world, I personally experience the changes in the body and the diseases that occur, and write a medical book on the treatment of the mermaid after it came to the land. In short, like the protagonists in all stories, the greater the ideal at the beginning, the more tragic the later encounters. As soon as she left the mermaid island, Hera, who was not deep in the world, was deceived by the traffickers and caught as a slave. Of course, like the other protagonists, Hera was rescued by her brother at a critical moment. Then came the two brothers and sisters, who were rewarded for killing someone while escaping from the traffickers' pursuit. Mermaid Island can't go back, and Hera doesn't want to go back. The siblings wandered in the first half of the Great Route until the Navy's pursuit and the human traffickers' pursuit became more and more severe. As a last resort, the sister and brother entered the East China Sea from the Twin Gorge to live in seclusion, and this was a peaceful day. Until now, he was caught by human traffickers again and rescued by Moria. It seems that the previous view is correct. It is not a vase. It has experienced many twists and turns. Looking at Hera, who calmly described the past, Moria thought to herself. Although she didn't say it in detail, she thought that there was a lot of suffering in the middle. After that, the two chatted all the way, and Hera's affection for Moria rapidly increased. Moria herself came from a five a good youth in a harmonious society, and Hera was delighted by her equal treatment in her words, behaviors, and behaviors. And not long after Moria took Hera away, an uninvited guest with a height of eight meters came on the merchant ship. Just a trick. Standing outside the door of the cabin, the tall man beside the general manager of the beauty chamber of commerce looked at the human beings divided in half on the plywood and guessed in his heart. It's very strong, it should be a swordsman. The tall man's wet body was a little hot at the moment, and his eyes flashed with excitement. Clang. The tall man opened the door and entered the room where Hera was before. Looking at the two guards who fell to the ground at the door, and there was no sign of a fight in the room, the tall man frowned slightly. Depending on the situation, it's either that my sister is powerless to resist, or that she voluntarily left with the strong swordsman. The tall man thought to himself. His sister is not a softy a weak and powerless woman cannot be defeated by people in this place in the East China Sea. There is no sign of fighting, it can only be said that the elder sister at the time was either restrained and unable to resist, or voluntarily. No matter which one, they shouldn't have gone far. Thinking that the blood on the splint was not completely coagulated, the tall man, Hera's younger brother, guessed. So he immediately left the merchant ship, entered the sea, and searched with the merchant ship as the center. If my sister is willing, then she will definitely rush back to Klin village. Thinking of this possibility, brother Hera decided to search until dawn, and go back to Klin village to have a look before finding any trace of her sister. Soon, the night passed and the sun rose. Moriah and the mermaid Hera are not weak. They haven't slept all night and are in good spirits. Instead, Perona, who had slept all night, woke up in a bad mood. What should I do, someone is coming to grab my meal ticket. Looking at Hera standing beside Moria, Perona thought in her heart, 
staring at a pair of fierce cute eyes, trying to scare Hira away. Ha ha! What a cute kid! Hira was adored by Perona. The corners of her mouth were raised, and Yin Ying's laughter came out. But in Perona's ears, it was so irritable and unpleasant. Sure enough, this woman is here to grab my meal ticket. How to do? This woman is too big. I don't know how much to eat at one time. Will Lord Moria give this woman my portion too? Perona, who was full of drama in her heart, couldn't sit still when she thought of it, and felt that she should take action. Mo. Master Pa, I'm hungry, I want to eat. Didn't I just input life energy to you? I still want to eat. No, you eat too much life energy, and your body can't bear it. I'll find you something to eat when I get to Clean Village. Really? Hearing this, Perona pouted and glared fiercely at Hera. Lord Moria must have eaten my share for this abominable woman, and you have to pay me back the meal ticket. Moria didn't know and didn't care about Perona's thoughts. The giant eagle was still very fast. Under the guidance of one of his navigator shadow attendants, it arrived at Klin village at about nine o'clock in the morning. Chapter 44 No Honey Badger Fruit, Flat-Headed Brother Form, Courtesy Three Requests Air A princess in Moria hugged Hera and fell from the back of the giant eagle. Perona lay on Hera's stomach and grabbed the corner of her clothes reluctantly. Now Hera put on a white shirt that Moria used to wear for a height of five meters. Because of her body shape, she showed an enchanting waist of a water snake. Tread. 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 After a few months of buffering in the air, Moria landed firmly on the open space in front of a house. Thump. As soon as she landed, Hera hurriedly got rid of Moriah's body, crossed her huge tail, and walked towards the house like a penguin. That gesture. Made Moria silently turn around. Sidoro, Gangmir, are you there? Hera pushed open the door and went in. Outside. Moria looked around, it was a remote coast. Hera's house behind her is half on the shore and half in the water. It should be built like this to facilitate Hera's entry into the water, Moria thought. Looking at both sides, the sharp rocky hill at the top extends out of the island in a trapezoid shape, which just isolates the shore. There is a small forest in front of it, and there is a trail leading to the outside, which should be the road to the center of Klin village. HMM. Beast? Still? Moria frowned and looked at the path in the forest, where a violent aura was rushing towards here at high speed. SHHHHH. A black shadow emerged from the forest, quickly leapt a hundred meters away and rushed towards Moriah from the air. This is. Moria looked up with a strange expression. The person in the form of a half-orc, about five meters tall, is a person with animal ability. It's just that the flat head and the flat white hair on the head make Moria somewhat familiar. I go. Isn't this the first brother in Africa? The flat-headed brother who will do it if he doesn't agree with his life and death. I didn't expect that the One Piece world still has this animal type devil fruit. Moria, who sighed in her heart, turned slightly to the side, dodged the sharp claws that slipped down in the air, and slammed a punch on Brother Flathead's stomach. Boom. Call out. The huge force erupted, and Moria punched Brother Flathead into the distance, like a bowling ball, and broke five or six trees with a click. Arm domineering? Retracting his fist, Moria looked surprised. If he didn't feel wrong, Brother Pingtu's stomach was covered with a domineering look of armament. Although because of the huge power gap, even if he didn't use his weapons to be domineering, Brother Flathead's domineering defense was still broken by his pure physical strength. But, in a place like the East China Sea, the person who can temper the domineering look of armed force is still a boy under twenty years old. It's not even a pirate, just an ordinary person. Moria was a little curious, how this flat-headed boy inspired the domineering armed look. S-H-H-H-H-H. 
The flat-headed brother who was beaten by Moriah in the forest flew towards Moriah at a very fast speed. The movement, even the direction of waving the claws, has not changed, but the speed is a little faster than before. Although the previous blow didn't use all his strength, the huge power gap should make him understand the huge gap between himself and me. But looking at it like this, he really has the spirit of brother Bing too, anyone dares to do it. Thinking in his heart, Moria smiled and clenched his right fist to condense the domineering armed look. This time, he wanted to let brother Flathead know how terrifying the powerful armed look domineering attack was. Stop. Just when brother Pinkt's attack was about to fall and Moria was about to shoot, Hera's expression changed when she heard the movement, and she quickly stopped brother Pinkt. Call out. A cold light flashed in front of Moria. Moria's expression remained unchanged, her clenched fists relaxed, and her arm domineering was also withdrawn. The flat-headed boy, withdrew his sharp claws, turned around and tried to pass over Moriah's head. But how could Moriah allow someone to flip over his head? He stretched out his hand, grabbed brother Flathead's ankle in the air, and threw it again. Bang! Moriah didn't exert any force just rolled up a dust. Stop, Gangmir. Hira came to Moriah and stopped brother Flathead who got up and wanted to attack again. Sister Hira, don't be afraid of me. Brother Bingtu, also known as Gangmil, came to Hira and looked at Moriah defiantly. Moriah touched her nose and didn't speak. Hira quickly said to Gangmir, this is Mr. Mo. Pa, he saved me from the traffickers. That. Isn't the enemy? Gangmir asked hesitantly. Not the enemy. Forget it. Gangmir regained his height of three meters, showing an expression of letting go of you, which made Moria a little dumbfounded. Where's Sidoro? Hira asked anxiously. Big brother Sidoro, I'm looking for you, big sister, and let me wait for you at home. Speaking of which, Gangmir was a little embarrassed, and said weakly. I just went to the woods to solve the three urgent problems. I didn't expect you to come back. Three urgent? Moria took a few steps back subconsciously. The forest is so big. If all three emergencies are in it, the past few years will be all tasteless. No wonder the woods are so tall and lush, and their feelings are nourished by Brother Flathead. Moria couldn't complain in her heart. How long have you been gone? Did he say when he would be back? Hira frowned, ignoring Gangmir's words, and asked two more questions. No. Gangmil shook his head and said honestly, Big Brother Sidoro just asked me to wait here for you to come back. After Hira heard it, there were no masters, and she didn't know what to do now. Are you going to find Sidoro? Still waiting here for Sidoro to come back? If you look for it, you are afraid that you will be separated again. If you don't, you are afraid that Sidoro will cause an accident. You guys wait here for two days. If you can't wait for your brother Sidoro, then leave here. After all, this place has been exposed. Moriah explained, what happened on the merchant ship will definitely be discovered by people from the beauty chamber of commerce or the navy in today's at the latest. At that time, there will definitely be people here to search. It is good. Hira agreed as soon as she heard it, and felt that Moriah was right, and Gangmir had no opinion, he listened to Hira. Kindness. At this time, Hira suddenly reacted, looked at Moria, and asked, Lord Mopa, aren't you with us? Just after finishing speaking, Hira looked apologetic again and said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that to you. After all, this matter has nothing to do with you. You'd better leave early. Mopa's identity, but the actor Moriah, Hira, remembered at this time that Moriah didn't want to reveal her identity. That with them, obviously not good, too conspicuous. I'll take Perona out for a trip now, and I'll find you after I've settled down. Moriah looked at Hira and smiled. Okay. Hira nodded. 
Then Moria took a happy Perona to leave the air with the moon step and flew to the other side of Fant Island. Looking at the back of Moria leaving, Hera's eyes flashed, and she suddenly thought of Moria's last words. Hey! Did he say he wants to come back to find me? Yes. Steel Mill glanced sideways. Ah! What does he mean? Hera suddenly cried out with a blushing face, and Moria's eyes began to appear in his mind when he looked at him along the way. Desire. No. He's a good guy, and he must be in love with me. What should I do? How am I going to reject him? Hera was entangled in her heart and fell into her own fantasy. She doesn't want to hurt Moriah, she knows Moriah is a good person, but she doesn't want to be with humans either, she still has unfulfilled dreams. In short, Moriah is destined to accept this good person card. Chapter 41 Future Plans I want a lot. Don't want. Don't want. I do not want. Woo -oo 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 -oo. On a boulder on the southwest coast of Fant Island, Perona flew in front of Moria, crying, and she was unwilling to accept Moria's settlement for her. Don't leave me, Lord Moria. Woo -oo 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 -oo. Perona cried and self examined, I will never urge you to beg for food again. After that, I will definitely eat on time, and I will definitely not eat until the meal time. Moria was speechless and had a headache, begging. For your sister's meal. I'm very dangerous with me. Wouldn't it be nice to give you a stable life? Moria couldn't understand a little bit. After experiencing hardships, shouldn't he yearn for a peaceful and stable life? How is Perona different? I don't want it, I'm going to follow Moria's armor. Perona ignored, she insisted on following Moria. For her, it was Moria who saved her, and after more than a month of getting along, she and Moria were already acquainted. Now she wants her to be with a few strangers, and she doesn't want it. Woo! I don't want, don't leave me, Moria's armor. Perona continued to cry incoherently, dangling in front of Moria. Okay. Stop crying, let me think about it. Moria was impatient and waved Perona aside. When Perona heard Moria's words, she immediately gritted her teeth and stopped crying, and quietly came to sit next to Moria. One side is a stable life, and the other is a dangerous adventure, which side should I choose? Moria closed his eyes and pondered, and Perona's reaction caused him to think. From the past to the present, if he just pursues a peaceful life, he can already do it. With his current ability and strength, in this world, as long as he is quiet, he can basically live to the end. But? Does he want a peaceful life? Obviously don't want to, Anton Perona is for unscrupulous shots. He wants to become stronger, he wants to enslave Kaido, he wants to rule Wano, he thinks a lot. He wanted to see how far he could go in this world. He can't see the finale of The Hunter, the primary school Conan and the rise of the national football team, but he wants to see the finale of One Piece for himself. In short, Moriah wants to do a lot, and now has won. He wanted to form a pirate group as Mopa and experience the feeling of building a pirate group from start to finish. Just now there are three companions to choose from. Thinking of Sister Hera and Brother Flathead, Moria smiled. With my strength, can't I conquer the three of them, and Hera was saved by me, plus everyone hates the Anlong people, I believe they should not refuse my invitation. Moria thought. In this way, Perona continued to follow him, and someone could take care of her when he left to hunt the strong. After thinking about it for a while, Moria also looked away. Perona would follow if she wanted to. Could it be that he couldn't protect a Perona? Walk. Moria stood up and smiled at Perona, take you to eat delicious food. Yeah? Perona nodded heavily, a relieved smile overflowing from the corner of her mouth, which made people feel a little distressed. Let's go then. Moria told Perona to fly to his shoulder and sit down, and the two walked all the way to the town of Fant Island. In the evening, 
Moria took Perona back to Hera's house. Oh, Hera's brother is back. As soon as he landed from the air, Moria felt an aura in the house, guessing that Hera's younger brother Sidoro had returned. Clang. The door opened, and the Hera sisters and brothers pulled the ping to brother Gangmir out. You are that swordsman. Sidoro excitedly said to Moria, regardless of Hera's anxious eyes. Jan how? Moria was stunned for a moment, not understanding why Sidoro thought he was a swordsman. I'm not a swordsman. Moria shook her head. Sidoro and Hera are both shark-shaped murlocs, both eight meters tall, with bulging muscles all over their bodies, and a sense of strength. Hearing that Moria said it was not a swordsman, he didn't care, and said enthusiastically, whether it is or not, in short, you are a strong man, how about it, how about a game? You are going to challenge me. Looking at Sidoro who was desperately pulled by Hera, Moria smiled, just to let you on board and show your strength, which is not bad, so he nodded and said, I took it. After that, Moria told Perona to stay away and go to the side. No. I object. Hera was in a hurry, but she knew what kind of strength Moria was, and what if she got angry. She herself knows what character her brother is, and once he fights, it is difficult to hold back. What if this angered Moria? Hera, who was worried in her heart, pulled Sidoro tightly. But Sidoro, who was eager to fight, could not stop him, not even Hera. This is also the reason why Hera is in a hurry to come back, because she is afraid that her brother's character will easily cause trouble and be surrounded and suppressed by the navy. Unexpectedly, in the end, I forgot that there is such an unstable factor as Moria. Bang! Sidoro broke free from Hera and jumped in front of Moria. Hera was helpless and could only ask Moria, Lord Mopa, my brother's brain is not very good, you don't have the same knowledge as him, I know you are powerful, you must be gentle. Hey, elder sister, that's enough. Sidoro turned his head to Hera in dissatisfaction and said, I have the highest bounty in the entire East China Sea, a full 96 million baileys, and I use others to make them. Saying that, Sidoro turned to face Moria and smiled, use all your strength, don't worry, I'm very strong. Hera was speechless. The man in front of you offers more than ten times as much bounty as you, and if you show the bounty in front of him, where does your confidence come from? Hera, who was unable to complain in her heart, could only look at Moriah with a request. Don't worry. I'll take it easy. Moria smiled reassuringly. Hera nodded and received it, relieved a lot. The flat-headed brother Gangmir was silent the whole time, and his face towards Moria was calm, as if Moria was just a passerby in front of him. Are you ready? Sidoro said excitedly, his body trembled, and his fighting spirit was rising. Bring it on. As soon as Moria finished speaking, Sidoro instantly appeared in front of Moria. It's quite fast. Moria turned her head to avoid Sidoro's huge fist, and stepped back at the same time. Call out. The sound of the lingering wind sounded, and Sidoro swept across the place where Moria was standing just now. Don't run. Sidoro shouted loudly, followed Moria in one step, and punched again, pointing directly at Moria's head. Let you make three moves. Moria smiled then bowed her head to avoid Sidoro's fist, and bullied her forward. Before Sidoro's response, Moria condensed her domineering punch and slammed into Sidoro's stomach. Forehead. A huge force, like an ocean wave, spread out from his stomach in an instant. Sidoro's eyes went blank and he almost fainted. Bump. Sidoro knelt on the ground with his stomach covered, his face dripping with cold sweat and his eyes stared at Moria blankly. How can the gap be so big? Sidoro couldn't believe it. Sidoro. Hera quickly walked to her brother's side and asked with concern, Are you all right? I'm fine. Zido la o ye o head, the power was very strong for a moment, but it was scattered, 
and he had recovered after a while. Sidoro understood that Moriat had left his hand just now, otherwise the strength would not spread and condense, and his stomach would be pierced. It's fine. Hira breathed a sigh of relief, then looked at Moria with a grateful smile. You are strong. There is no way that there is a strong person like you in the East China Sea. You should come from the Great Root. Sidora looked at Moriah with bright eyes, and he longed to fight against such a strong man often. Have a strong mentality. Seeing that there was no fear in Sidoro's eyes, only the desire to fight, Moria's eyes filled with admiration. This kind of person is qualified to be my companion. Moriah thought. Chapter 40 To This Is The Reality Hera, Sidoro, Steel Mill At dusk, in front of the house, Moria solemnly invited the three of them, join my pirate group, let's go on an adventure together, and let's see the vastness of this world together. Call. Call. As soon as the voice fell, a gust of wind blew, and Moria had a few fallen leaves in front of her eyes. Opposite him, the Hera sisters and brothers were stunned after hearing Moriah's words, and they couldn't recover for a long time, while Gangmir still looked calm and didn't care about anything. How about it? Moria invited again, get on my bed. Not. Get on my boat. Sweat. Moria secretly touched the cold sweat on her forehead, she almost didn't make it late and she didn't know if she was influenced by her previous life and almost said the wrong thing. Cough. Cough. At this time, the Hera sisters and brothers coughed for a while, recovered, and understood what Moria meant. Sidoro looked at Hera and said, You decide, sister. That. Hera looked at Moria cautiously. I saw Moria frown at this time, and when she heard that her hesitant words, that, she had a premonition that she didn't want to. I feel like I'm going to be slapped in the face. Moriah thought. Really? Then I heard Hera say, after coming to the human world, we also understand that the humans who have been destroying and robbing Murlocs on Mermaid Island are basically pirates and human traffickers. Of course. Having said this, Hera quickly waved her hand and explained, the same is a pirate, but you are different. Mr. Moper, you are a good pirate, just let us do it. Before he could finish speaking, Moria frowned and suddenly interrupted Hera, saying, Wait, it seems that someone is coming. In the arrogance of seeing and hearing, in the woods, more than a hundred auras rushed towards here quickly. One of the breaths made Moria feel not weak, similar to the former shadow servant Victor. They were all strong men who could be armed with domineering arrogance and cover the whole body. Who? Hera asked nervously. Sidoro and Gunmir came to Hera's left and right, and looked at the woods vigilantly together. Possible. Moriah, who was about to say it was the navy, turned his head and suddenly saw three warships suddenly sailing out of the sea in the distance behind him, surrounded by them. It's the navy. Moria turned around and said, pulling Perona to her side. Navy. Hera was startled, and the three of them turned around and saw the warship as well. Why did you find this place so quickly, when did the navy be so timely? Sidoro's face was ugly. Come from the woods it is also the navy, more than one hundred people. At this time, Moria reminded. Come on. There is no time before the warship is surrounded, we will leave the sea. Lord Mopar and Perona, you should come to my back. Call out. Before Hera finished speaking, a black shadow like a gust of wind swept across Moria's side in an instant, turning over in the air and falling in front of the three of Hera. It is a middle-aged man with a height of four meters, with a muscular body like a bodybuilder, with a big back and slightly white hair. The military uniform on his body should be vice admiral depending on the rank. Superior. Faced with the sudden appearance of the vice admiral, Sidoro did not hesitate the moment he appeared, he greeted him, and pinged to Ji Gangmir shot together. The two cooperated tacitly, one punched, and the other turned into a half hook and waved the sharp claws exuding cold light, one left and one right, 
and instantly attacked the vice admiral. Really, I haven't even done it yet, and the mere pirates actually attacked the navy first. With the words of spit in his mouth, the big backed vice admiral just took a quick step forward and kicked out one after another, as if a phantom flashed by. Bump! Under the absolute speed, both Sidoro and Gangmir were too late to react, and both were kicked in the chest, and their bodies were like bent shrimps in an instant. S H H H H H. -h. Bang bang! The two crossed an arc in the air and landed on both sides of Moria. Puff puff! As soon as they landed, Sidoro and Gangmir, who were lying flat on the ground, spit out blood like a fountain. The chests of the two collapsed with a deep footprint, the sternum was broken, and the internal organs were punctured by the broken bones, causing blood to flow out of the two mouths all the time. Sidoro. Steel Mill. Only at this moment did Hira react. After shouting, she squatted with her tail and jumped to Sidoro's side. You. Looking at Sidoro, then at Gunmir, who was on the side, at the sunken footprints on their chests, Hira, who was a doctor, was instantly stunned. For a while, there was nothing left for her, and she was completely unable to deal with this level of injury. This is the crushing of the weak by the strong. Moria sighed inwardly. The fact that Sidoro and Gunmir, who had already inspired their armed domineering, faced the attack of the vice admiral, were directly dying and lost their combat effectiveness. This is the reality. Unlike in the original book, Wang Wan Tangtang had a navy admiral and a supernova with one foot, but none of them died, and none of them were caught. So unreasonable. Moria groaned in her heart. Tatata. At this time, a group of navy soldiers sprang out of the woods and quickly surrounded the place in a semicircle. Click click click. The navy soldiers in the front row raised their guns and aimed at the five Morias. Moria turned her head and glanced at the two leaders, one of whom was Rear Admiral Aaron who Moria knew who had invited him to join the navy several times. Tatata. Vice Admiral also walked a few steps to Moria and others at this time. You are quite calm. The vice admiral glanced at Moria in surprise, and then took out a few bounties. See Giant Sidoro, with a bounty of 96 million bailey. See Mostahara, the bounty is 65 million bailey. Um. No? The vice admiral was surprised and turned around. He didn't see the bounty list of Moria and Gangmir, and Perona was ignored by him. Never mind. The vice admiral shook his head. Anyway, the people who were with the pirates were not good people. You scum pirates, I, Wayne, hereby announce that I will formally arrest you. Vice Admiral Wayne withdrew the bounty list and said lightly to Moriah and the others. We are not pirates. Hearing the words of the vice admiral, Hera, who was stunned, turned her head and roared. The people we killed are all human traffickers and pirates. Why do you want us to be wanted, we are not pirates? Ha ha! There was a hint of sarcasm on the corner of the vice admiral's mouth, and he said, Human traffickers? Pirates. Just say yes. Besides, four years ago, in the first half of the Great Route, the medical book of the Goosey Kingdom was robbed. You can't argue with that. And this thing? Moria looked at Hera unexpectedly. She had never said this in the previous chat. Sure enough, pretty women are all liars, regardless of race. We. Just borrowed. Hera blushed when she saw Moria's eyes, and said anxiously, We didn't hurt anyone, and we returned all the medical books later. Ha <laughs> ha. The vice admiral sneered again, If you rob it, you will rob it. This is a fact, and it will not change because you return it. So, pirates are pirates, no matter how many pirates you kill, you are still pirates. You guys just go to the advanced city and spend the rest of your life. After speaking, the vice admiral waved his hand, and from the surrounded navy, more than a dozen people walked out, bringing huge handcuffs to Momolia and others. Apparently, 
Moriah was also within the scope of their arrest. Clang! Clang! Hearing the sound of the huge handcuffs being dragged on the ground, Hera's face turned pale. Looking at Sidoro and Gangmir, who were unconscious and faint at this time, Hera understood that only one person could save them at this time. Mo. Master Pa, I'll replace Gangmir tell Sidoro, we want to join your pirate group, please save us. Hera prayed to Moriah with a stern face. Up to now, she also knew that if she didn't join Moria's pirate group, Moria would not help them. Chapter 43 Vice Admiral In a split second, life energy is not omnipotent. Courtesy 3 Requests. Ha ha. Call out. After Moria laughed, a shaved, instantly appeared in front of the stunned Vice Admiral, condensed an armed and domineering punch, and slammed into his chest with all his strength. What? Moria's speed was so fast that the Vice Admiral was shocked, it was too late to dodge, and he could only condense his muscles and cover his arms with a domineering look. Iron, steel. Bang. Crack clap. Lieutenant General Wayne's voice stopped abruptly, and the punch of Moria's terrifying power instantly shattered his arm domineering, shattered his sternum, and fell directly into his entire chest. Lieutenant General Wayne glanced at him and fell into a daze, only to feel a huge force explode in his chest, like a bomb exploded directly in the body, and the entire internal organs were shattered. Boom! A gust of wind pressure exploded from the position of the two men, and the clothes and hats of the navy and the men were blown up one after another, and dust was rolled on the ground. When the dust dissipated, all the surrounding navy saw the situation in front of them and their pupils shrank. Where? Lieutenant General Wayne. It's not true, how could it be true, Lieutenant General Wayne is invincible. Moriah's punching posture did not change, and Lieutenant General Wayne also remained standing still, but his face was dull and lifeless, and Moriah's fist sank deep into his chest. When all the Navy saw this scene, they couldn't believe it. They didn't believe that Lieutenant General Wayne, who was invincible in his eyes, was actually defeated by Moriah. And. Noisy. Moriah indifferently pulled out his blood-stained right fist, as if he had pulled it out of a quagmire. Thump. Leaning over to the Vice Admiral who fell to the ground, Moriah shook the blood on his fist and looked at the Vice Admiral's back. A huge fist print protruded. At this time, Vice Admiral Wayne was dead, and his heart was blasted by Moriah. This is the power at the top of the world. Hera was shocked and muttered to herself. Lieutenant General Wayne. All the Navy shouted, and as Moriah turned sideways, they saw the tragic state of Admiral Wayne's chest, and all of them suddenly showed anger. Shoot them and kill them. Quick, bring Lieutenant General Wayne back. The two rear admirals quickly reacted and ordered the navy to shoot, and at the same time the two rear admirals rushed towards Moriah. Ha ha! It seems that Lieutenant General Wayne is very loved by you. Faced with my crushing power, you can't make you feel afraid. Moriah smiled, facing the rushing navy, jumped up gently, raised her long legs and made a sharp stroke. Lan Jiao, cut it. Kong. A sharp slashing wave shot out from the air drawn by Moria's feet, like a crescent moon leaping over Hera's head and flying towards the navy at high speed. Not good. Get out of the way. At the moment of crisis, the two rear admirals were the first to wake up from their anger. After shouting a warning, they sensed the two powerful slashing waves. Sizzle. Sizzle. Except for a few clear-headed navy soldiers who stooped down and avoided the catastrophe when the slashing wave came, all the surrounding navies were cut in half by Moriah's sharp slashing wave. Boom. Boom. After the slashing wave cut through the navy, it continued to fly far away until it dissipated after cutting off countless trees. Let's go. There should be a boat behind the house. Without looking at the living navy, Moria came to Hera, picked up Sidoro and Gunmir one by one, and walked towards the house. 
Per owner obediently flew to Moria's shoulder and sat down. Ah! Yes, you have to leave quickly. Hera, who was shocked, reacted and hurriedly caught up with Moria. Tick! Tick! The two rear admirals who didn't die stood motionless, not daring to move even though cold sweat dripped from their faces. The two watched helplessly as Moria and the others left, not daring to say a word. Clang! With a kick from the back door, Moria walked out with Sidoro and Gunmir. A 12 meter long and mature wide boat was docked behind the platform of the house, without sails, like an enlarged version of a rowing boat. Moria walked over, put Sidoro into the boat first, then put steel mill on his stomach, and then sat down to the bow with Perona. What are you doing? Moriah yelled into the room. It'll be ready soon. Here a eager voice came from the room. Soon? Hera came out of the house with a large medicine box one meter wide in her hand. Sir, please help me bandage their wounds, and I'll pull the boat. After Hera got on the boat and handed the medicine box to Moriah, she went into the water and swam to the bow and reached out to pull a chain attached to the hull. Just rush over. Moriah put down the medicine box and said. Call out. Underwater Hera exerted a force and the whole ship was like arrows generally rushed towards the three warships. Moria stood up and faced forward, not in a hurry to bandage the wounds of Sidoro and Gunmir. There's no need, just leave here and give them life energy. I can't die for a while anyway, Moria thought. Bump bump. At this time, the three naval warships in the distance fired their cannons, but none of them hit the ship, and they fell around and blew up water. Lan Jiao, cut it. On the bow of the fast moving ship, Moria raised her right leg high, condensed her arm domineering, and instantly sent three huge slashing waves towards the three warships. Seng Seng Seng. There is no doubt that the three warships were cut in half like tofu in an instant, and gradually sank into the sea. Bang! Whoa! Hira pulled the boat, like a seagull flying against the sea and quickly passed by the sunken warship. In the eyes of the navy floating on the sea, they quickly left with hatred and horror. Five hours later, Hera pulled a boat and came to a crescent-shaped island. After the boat entered the bay, Moria used her ability to roll up Sidoro, Gangmir and Hera with her shadow, flew through a grove and entered a cave. Blah blah blah. Hera turned on the light and Moria saw clearly that the cave was like a medical research institute, with all kinds of medical equipment. Puff puff. Moria put Sidoro and Gunmir on the two operating tables, one large and one small, prepared by Hera. I'll leave it to you next. Moria said and Perona walked to the entrance of the cave and sat down. After Moria and Perona left, Hera put on surgical gloves and immediately began to operate on them. Go to sleep, Moria said to Perona, who was already very sleepy. Perona forced her sleepiness and said, I'm going to sleep with the shadow servant in my arms. No. Moria's mouth twitched, and she said firmly, Don't even think about it. Perona pouted in dissatisfaction, stared straight at Moria with drowsiness, and made a silent protest. I don't know when it started. Perona developed a bad habit and always liked some dark and terrifying things, especially when she was sleeping, she liked to hold a shadow servant. Since discovering Perona's special hobby a week ago, Moriah has been thinking about preventing future troubles. Before, there was no way for the shadow servant to watch her, but now that the three of Hera joined her pirate group, Moriah will definitely not let the shadow servant hold her to sleep again. You. Forget it, it's just that you changed from liking zombies to liking shadow servants. It's no different from the original. Moria, who was originally determined not to give it to the shadow attendant, looked at Perona, who was shivering with cold, holding on to the side, but in the end he slapped him in the face and ignored it. Do whatever you want. Moria thought, and summoned a shadow attendant. Who knew that just after she was summoned, Perona, 
who was originally pitiful and trembling, flew to the shadow servant in an instant and let the shadow servant hold her to sleep. Moria was speechless. He said that his title of, best actor, is very watery, even a little lily can't compare. Forget it, leave her alone. Moria's heart was yay oy ow, and she looked into the cave. It seems that life energy is not omnipotent. Be careful in the future. Looking at Hera, who was operating on Sidoro and Gunmir, Moria sighed. He was slapped in the face again before. After the original input of life energy, Sidoro and Gangmir's injuries recovered, but the broken bones in their bodies would not disappear, so it was a tragedy. Although the life was saved, the broken bones in the body need to be taken out, otherwise the internal bleeding will occur with a little movement. There's nothing Moria can do. It can only be taken out bit by bit by Hera's operation on them. Chapter 44 Please Captain Mopa. Courtesy 3 Requests. Flash. One night passed. When the whole body of the sun was exposed, Hera in the cave had basically completed the operation. All the broken bones have been taken out and the wound is being sutured. Moriah had woken up, Perona was still sleeping. Soon. The surgical wound was also sutured. Moria walked to Hera, looked at Sidoro and Gunmir sleeping on the operating table, and asked, Do you want me to inject life energy into them? No need. Hera Yeoyao said with a tired tone, It's not easy to expose the abilities of adults just let them recover slowly. That's it. Moria didn't insist. Looking at Hera's tired face, she said, you should also take a rest. When everyone recovers, I will tell you about joining the pirates. After all, Moria didn't wait for Hera to answer, and walked out of the cave, intending to take a good look at the island. It is good. Looking at the back of Moria's departure, Hera looked complicated and turned around, but she did not expect to become a pirate in the end. Hera won't go back on what she promised, what's more, after what happened last night, she now understands. Whether you become a pirate or not, it is not they who have the final say, but the navy and the world government have the final say, saying that you are a pirate, not a pirate but also a pirate. Thinking of this, Hera no longer resented being a pirate as much as before. Let's rest first, and talk to them when Sidoro and Gunmir wake up. Thinking of myself agreeing to join Mo for the two of them here I felt that she still needed to explain to the two about the Leah pirates. Walking to the corner of the living area in the cave, there was a huge soft bed, and Hera lay down and fell asleep immediately. The other side. Moria, who came out, flew into the sky and looked down on this crescent-shaped island. There are many reefs around, and it is difficult for ships to approach here. It is a secret base. Also, the ones swimming underwater on the reef should be sharks. After observing for a while, Moriah concluded that this was an island that was difficult for boats and people to reach. No wonder Hera took this place as a secret base for her own medical research, and it was indeed not easy to be discovered around two in the afternoon. The sun was high, and Hera and Sidoro, as well as Gunmir, had already woken up. At this time, the five people were sitting around a huge stone table outside the cave, and the table was full of fragrant barbecued meat and delicate and delicious fruits. Sidoro was not interested in the food on the table, his eyes were dull and he looked at the shadow attendant who was busy preparing the barbecue not far away and then looked at Moria. After turning his head and looking at it for a while, Sidoro finally accepted the reality. That is to say, what happened last night, what Sister Hera said was true. Sidoro looked at Moria and said with a shocked expression, the person who instantly killed the Vice Admiral and rescued us is actually a big man from the New World, the actor Moonlight Moria. Kaz Kaz. Moria said while eating the barbecue. You can just call me Mopa, this is also my name, and the name I will use in the future for my identity. Speaking of what Moria said to Hera, she explained it to Sidoro. Is this really good? Hera worried at this time, 
my brother's brain is not very good. If you reveal your identity, it will be bad. Hey! Sidoro said dissatisfiedly, sister, I am a navigator, how can I have a bad mind, don't talk nonsense. You! Hira's eyes narrowed and she wanted to speak, but Moria waved her hand and interrupted, it doesn't matter, since I want to invite you to join my pirate group, then I will be my companions in the future, so it is reasonable to let you know. As soon as the words fell, the anger on the table suddenly changed, and Sidoro's face was full of guilt. Gangmir, who was eating meat silently, also stopped and looked up at Hira in silence. If it wasn't to save the two of them, they believed that Hira would never agree to join Moria's pirate group. Thinking of this, both of them felt a little heavy in their hearts, not knowing how to face the words Moria said. Although I joined the pirate group of Lord Mopa in your place yesterday, but if you don't want to. Saying that, Hira looked at Moria and asked, I hope Lord Mopa can forgive them. I am willing to give everything I have in exchange for their freedom. Don't. Sidoro said to Moria quickly, I am willing, I am willing to join Lord Mopa's pirate group. Me too. Gang Mill glanced at Moria. They know that Hira is a person who will not go back if she promises. In this case, they do not want Hira to sacrifice anything because of themselves. And they didn't want to leave Hira, and they didn't worry that Hira followed Moria alone. You! Alas! Hira sighed, not knowing whether she should be happy or angry. Ha ha ha! At this time, Moria suddenly burst out laughing, thinking. It's time to start showing the acting of the best actor. Let's talk frankly and honestly. I hope you join my pirate group sincerely, rather than being forced to join by kindness. Moria put away her smile and said solemnly, If you don't want to, it means distrust. Companions don't trust each other, so is it necessary to become companions? This question of trust made Hira silent for a while. What Moria said was the truth, and she did agree. But from the way she addressed Moria you, it can be seen that being polite means an invisible alienation, an invisible distrust. In this regard, Moria felt that it was necessary to convince Hira to join in. Both Sidoro and Gunmir are based on Hira, don't care. The reason why you have always resisted becoming pirates is because the people who burned killed and robbed Fishman Island were all pirates and human traffickers. Yeah? The Hera siblings nodded. Moria understood and said faintly, Pirates have always played a role in hurting murlocs in your hearts. Then have you ever thought about the reason why Mermaid Island has not been destroyed by pirates since the beginning of the era of pirates, and is even relatively stable? Yes. Faced with this question, the Hera sisters and brothers both fell silent after saying a word, and their eyes flickered. In the minds of the two, a burly and domineering man with a crescent beard appeared. Although you were no longer on Fishman Island at the time, it should have been reported in the newspapers. Moria said in a deep voice, a pirate named Whitebeard brought peace to Fishman Island with his own name. Until now. There are still people from the Whitebeard Pirates stationed on Mermaid Island, guarding the stability of Fishman Island there. So, why are you entangled in hurting the pirates of Fishman Island instead of becoming the pirates who guard the peace of Fishman Island? Boom! The expressions of the Hera sisters and brothers changed. Leah's words were like a bell hammer, giving the siblings a heavy blow in their hearts causing them to be silent for a while. When Whitebeard announced that Fishman Island became his own territory, the sister and brother saw it in the news newspapers outside. At that time, they thought that Fishman Island was ruled by pirates, so they went back a little bit. Later, the sister and brother, who knew the actual situation, returned to the sea with peace of mind. But knowing in my heart is one thing accepting it or not is another. Today, all of this was stabbed out by Moria, and some of the burdens that the sister and brother had imposed on themselves were completely ruthlessly pierced. Ha ha! Moria saw the expressions of the two. 
He smiled and continued, Pirate is just a name, it has nothing to do with people doing evil. Just like the traffickers you hate the most, in the eyes of the Navy in the eyes of the world government, they are civilians. If you kill traffickers, if you kill civilians, you will be wanted. So, it's people who do evil, it has nothing to do with whether you are a pirate or not. Finally, what I want to say is, Moria said with a serious expression, Hera, your dream needs to learn more knowledge, need to walk in a wider world, and need strong strength and the help of companions. Without Sidoro's sailing skills, you can't reach many places, and you don't have the strength. Then you died yesterday, and your dream has really become a dream. So, facing the three of Hera, Moria invited again, join my pirate group and let us realize each other's dreams together. After speaking, Moria solemnly reminded, please consider it seriously, I will not invite you a second time, you can refuse, and the kindness from yesterday can be repaid in another way. I hope you really want to be my companions. After listening to Moria's sincere words, even Gang Maya, who had always held an indifferent attitude, looked at it squarely. This was a man's sincerity, and he felt it. Sidoro looked excited and trembled all over. He saw infinite possibilities in the man in front of him. Maybe being by the side of such a man will bring out the suppressed fighting spirit in his heart. Sidoro thought. Hiera opened her mouth and refused to say anything after all. She understands that her younger brothers Sidoro and Gangmir are both extremely fanatical people for fighting. If it weren't for themselves, they would have broken into the Great Root long ago. Up to now, the inner demon was untied by Moria's words, so she didn't need to insist anymore. And it seems good to go with your companions to realize each other's dreams. Hiera thought to herself, the corners of her mouth overflowing, and she smiled softly. I have to say that Moriah's words touched her deeply. Sidoro, Steel Mill. Hera, who had made up her mind, stood up, and Sidoro and Gangmir both smiled and looked at each other, and stood up together. The three of them faced Moria with serious expressions and solemnly said, From now on, the three of us will ask Captain Mopa. Chapter 45 The Establishment of the Pirate Group, Courtesy 3 Requests Ha ha! Moria laughed happily. I didn't expect that he would also have a day of convincing people. It was very cool. No wonder Naruto liked it. Come! Come! Moria stood up, raised the wine glass in his hand, and laughed at the three of Hera. Come, cheers! Congratulations on the official establishment of our pirate group. And I, I also want to join the pirate group of Lord Mopa. Aside, Perona still had a piece of meat hanging from her mouth, holding up a glass of juice larger than her head, speaking inarticulately. Ha ha! Ha! Everyone laughed when they saw this. Okay. And you? Moria smiled stretched out the wine glass in his hand, looked around, and said, after finishing this cup, we will be the companions of a pirate group. Dry. Touch. Touch. On the stone table, the wine glasses and juice glasses of the five people collided with each other. Grumpy grumpy. All five of them drank to the end, and not even Perona drank a drop. After drinking, the five of them clearly felt that the atmosphere was different. There was less separation and more harmony. Obviously it was just a joining ceremony, but because of the added sincerity, the five people directly passed the stage of adaptation, and it was too much to be a companionship that could trust each other back to back. After drinking and eating, Sidoro looked at Moria, with a hint of wine, and excitedly asked, Captain, what shall we do next? Shall we go directly to the great root? My fist is already hungry, ready at any time. Fight. Hera and Gang Milcher listened carefully. They don't know how to go next, and they want to hear how Moria arranges. You can usually call me Mopa or the boss, it's more convenient. 
Moria first corrected Sidoro and others' names for him, and then responded with a smile, It's too early to enter the Great Route, and your strength is not enough. Ship. Boss. Sidoro changed his words and said to himself, My sister and I retreated from the Great Route to the East China Sea. With our current strength, there is absolutely no problem in entering the Great Route. Gang Mia nodded in agreement, but Hera frowned, and only after looking at Moriah did she realize it. If it's just you and Gang Mill, then entering the Great Route, the strength is indeed enough. But with Mopano, he was the one who killed Vice Admiral Wayne, the highest commander of the East China Sea Naval Division, in one blow. Hera said solemnly, once we enter the Great Route, we don't even need to enter. Now, the Navy headquarters may have sent strong men to the East China Sea to find us. With such a big death of the top commander of the East China Sea Navy, it is impossible for the Navy headquarters to take no action, and the people who come here are definitely not simple. And such a strong man, Sidoro, do you two have the confidence to resist now? Sidoro and Gang Mill opened their mouths, but couldn't say the last word. Hero's words blocked them tightly, and there was no gap at all. Indeed. Recalling the battle last night, the two of them fought against Lieutenant General Wayne and were instantly killed by one kick. And Lieutenant General Wayne, who killed them with one kick, was killed by Moria with one punch. The strength gap in the middle is equivalent to a red soil continent, and it is impossible to see how big the gap between them is. If the powerhouses sent by the Navy headquarters are on the same level as Moria, then their current strength is indeed not enough. It turns out that we are dragging you down, boss. Sidora looked ashamed, and felt an indescribable sense of loss in his heart. Walk. Big Brother Sidoro. At this moment, Gang Mill suddenly stood up and walked out. Sidoro's eyes lit up, and he said loudly, Yes, yes. If you are not strong enough, practice, fight, and wait, and your strength will not improve. He also got up and walked out. Wait, your injuries are not healed yet. Tira reminded behind. Sidoro and Gunmir didn't listen to her and the two excitedly walked through the woods to the beach. After a while, the roar of battle came. Oh! Really, what if the wound gets worse? With the worried expression on her face, Hera wanted to get up and go to pull Sidoro and Gunmir back. Let them go. Moria smiled and said, I will inject life energy into them later, and their injuries will recover in an instant, so don't worry too much. Okay. Thinking of the life energy Moria said, Hera felt relieved, turned around and sat down. Correct. At this time, Moria asked Hera, This small island is generally not found by anyone, right? No, Hera shook her head and explained, There are reefs all around, and it's not on the route, so basically no one can find it here. Even if they are found, there are sharks blocking them and most people will not be able to come to the island. That's good. Moria smiled and said, I plan to stay in the East China Sea for more than half a year. If it is hidden here, it can be used as a secret base. Is there anything to do? Hera asked suspiciously. Not recently. Moria thought for a while and said, during this time, the strength of Sidoro and Gangmir need to be strengthened. I will take the time to guide them, and you will continue to study your medical skills here. What about me? Perona asked suddenly. You. Glancing at Perona's bulging belly, Moria said angrily, just eat well. Okay. Perona said happily, I will definitely complete the task given to me by Lord Mopa. Mulia Yeoyao, you just like it. What about you? Hira asked curiously. Me. Moria thought about it seriously, his armed domineering still needs to go to the strong to fight to improve, and said, Next, I also want to improve my strength, I may need to go out often, and Perona will give it to you. No problem. Hera nodded. After a break. Moria, Hera, 
and Perona walked through the grove and came to the beach in Crescent Bay. Bump, bump. Evenly matched battles often require only the simplest skills. In the collision of speed and power, Sidoro and Gangmir stopped. They saw Moria three coming, stopped fighting, and walked in front of Moria. Boss, have a fight with us. Sidoro said depressedly, my battle with Gangmir, there is not much room for improvement now. It is good. Moria smiled and said, go over there. After saying that, he stopped not far away, Sidoro and Gunmir followed, Hera and Perona didn't move. Come on, do your best to attack. Moria turned to face Gunmir and Sidoro and smiled, indicating that they could start. Superior. Sidoro and Gangmir knew Moria's strength and didn't think there was anything wrong with the two of them playing together. Tread. The two attacked Moria, one left and one right. In the moment of approaching Moria, Sidoro on the left took advantage of the superiority of the man and took the lead in making a move, with a Merle Karate straight punch, which took Moria's face a little to the left and left. Call out. As soon as the high spit moving fist pierced through the air, Moria felt it, and saw him move one meter across to avoid Sidoro's straight punch. At the same time. Fizz. Gang Maya who had already changed into the form of a honey badger, attacked from the right and just happened to meet Moria, who was moving one meter laterally. Chest. Successful. The corner of Sidoro's mouth smiled. Just now, his straight punch was slightly to the left, just to make Moria dodge to the right. In this way, Moria had absolutely no time to react to avoid Gangmir's attack. Ha ha. Naive. Moria smiled inwardly, her footsteps were light, her body floated backwards like flying leaves, as light as the wind. How come? Sidoro and Gangmir were taken aback. According to their calculations, Moria would definitely not have time to react with such a quick attack. But, why did they feel that Moria seemed to have known where their attack would come from? Superior. The two who couldn't understand continued to attack Moria. Call out. Tread. S-H-H-H-H-H. Sidoro's Merle Karate straight punches were swung like machine guns, and Gangmir's sharp claws were like perpetual motion machines, leaving countless scratches in the air. In the face of such intensive attacks by the two, Moria was like a willow, fluttering and twisting in the wind and their attacks always passed by Moria within the slightest difference. All the way. The attacks of Sidoro and Gangmir didn't even touch Moria's clothes. Woo-oo? After the intensive attack for a while, Sidoro and Gunmir stopped breathing. Do not fight. Not happy. The two of them didn't look at each other. The feeling that they were fighting with the air was uncomfortable, and it was not their preferred way of fighting. Chapter 46 Moria's Teaching Ha ha! Moria stopped in front of the two who bowed their heads and panted, smiled, and asked, Do you know how domineering you are? Seeing the domineering look, Sidoro and Gangmir looked at each other, and they both looked at Moria blankly. What is that? asked Sidoro. It's not a thing, it's a special power. Moria smiled and explained. That is the power to predict the next move of others by sensing the breath. You can actually predict the next move of others, and there is such power. Sidoro and Gangmir both took a deep breath. This is not a joke. Well. Wait. Boss, did you just use the domineering look and feel? Thinking of Moria's evasion action that seemed to know in advance when they would attack, Sidoro reacted and looked at Moria with burning eyes. Gangmil also looked into Moria's eyes and fell into shock. Right. Moria nodded with a smile, and explained, That's why your attack won't touch me at all, because I've already seen through your next attack. But this is also because your attack speed is too slow, so I can dodge easily. If your attack speed is fast enough, it will be difficult to defend against the domineering. Despite what Moria said, Sidoro and Gunmir both knew the power of the domineering. At least in an evenly matched battle, 
the side who meets the domineering will definitely have a huge advantage. Boss, how should we have this kind of power? Sidoro asked quickly, and Gangmir was also looking forward to it. They are not stupid, knowing that Moriah said it deliberately, it must be that they can also have this kind of power in some way. At this moment, they have completely forgotten the unpleasantness of fighting Moria before. I really want to learn to be domineering and domineering right away, and make others uncomfortable, then they will be very happy. In addition to self-awakening, the domineering arrogance can indeed be acquired through acquired training. Moriah smiled, and then told the two of Rayleigh's training Luffy. So simple. After listening to Moria's training method, Sidoro and Gangmir hesitated. I always feel that I just cover my eyes, hide from the stick and hammer, and I can predict it. That's too simple. The two thought. This is how I train to learn to be domineering. Moria shrugged. He also didn't know how the original owner Moria was so domineering. Seeing that Sidoro and Gunmir didn't believe it, he could only use himself as an example. Of course, not everyone can learn to be domineering through training. Some people are not qualified enough, and they can't learn how to train. Moria finally thought about it, it seems that although the method is simple, not everyone can learn to be domineering by training according to this method, so he added another point. You need qualifications. Then we must have enough. This time, Sidoro and Gangmir believed that if there was no certain difficulty, they could easily obtain such a powerful power, which means that their talents were nothing more than that. Although they were attacked by Lieutenant General Wayne and Moria one after another, the two always felt that they had the potential to be a big pirate. This is the legendary Honey Juice Confidence. Moria smiled when she heard the words of the two. Your armed sex is domineering, wait until I go to the new world to find you a stronger person to spar with you and improve your armed sex domineering intensity. What is the domineering look of armed color? Sidoro and Gunmir were stunned. Hey! You guys don't know the domineering of armed color? Meet Sidoro and Steel Mill nodding, Moria was also stunned. I don't know how to be domineering with armed colors. Haven't you all been domineering with armed colors? Moria was surprised, and looked at Sidoro and Gunmir with an expression like you don't tease me. Armed domineering? We already use it? Sidoro and Gunmir looked at each other, then looked at Moria raised their fists and condensed a special force to cover them. Is it this? Sidoro asked. Yes. Moria laughed. This kind of power is called armed domineering. Sidoro was a little surprised, touched his head, and said with a smile, Gang Mir and I both used this kind of armed domineering inadvertently half a year ago. At that time, we felt that there was a force in our body that suddenly extended out of the body, which could harden our fists. We didn't know that this was the arrogance you were talking about, boss. That's right, boss. Sidoro said with a happy face, and asked Moria, how can this kind of armed arrogance be enhanced? Sidoro now suddenly remembered the kick of Lieutenant General Wayne last night, which also had this kind of domineering armament and it was stronger than him. In this way, the boss of Lieutenant General Wayne can be instantly killed, and the armed look will definitely be stronger. He is desperate for this kind of power now. One of the ways to become stronger with armed color is to. Moria smiled and said, fighting, fighting against a high intensity armed cull domineering powerhouse is the best way to quickly increase the armed cull domineering power. The second is to hone it slowly. If you feel it yourself, you can also enhance the domineering strength of the armed color. However, this method varies from person to person. Some people have improved significantly, and some people may not have seen the armed color domineering for a few years. Then what are you waiting for? As soon as Moria finished speaking, Sidoro said excitedly, Let's get started, boss. Moria. What's wrong? Boss. Sidoro said in surprise, battle, 
didn't you say that only fighting with the strong can improve the domineering of the armed color? Is there a stronger person who is more suitable than you, boss? Steel Mill was also ready to move, and the form of the honey badger opened involuntarily. You are too weak. Moria smiled and said, This is true, my armed arrogance is too strong for you, and your armed arrogance and mine will shatter as soon as they touch, and they will not have the effect of tempering. So it's better for me to go to the new world and find a good sparring partner for you to improve the strength of your armament. Sparring? Sidoro asked suspiciously, does the boss mean that you go to the new world and catch someone to come to the East China Sea to spar with us? It's not a person, it's a shadow attendant. Moria summoned a shadow attendant and said. Seeing the dark shadow man in front of them, Sidoro and Gunmir were a little curious. You can fight him and see. Moria laughed. Sidoro clenched his fists and said with a smile, Boss, it's broken, don't blame me. Anyway, Moria said with a wicked smile, if you break it, it means that your strength is okay, and I'm afraid you can't break it. Hey he! The two laughed. Sidoro made the first move, and he came out with a full strength blow, condensing a straight punch with an armed look and domineering, and slammed into the shadow servant with a sharp wind noise. The shadow attendant summoned by Moria is the battle captain of a pirate group and his strength. Is naturally not Sidoro's opponent. But that means that in his lifetime, at least his defense is stronger than Sidoro now. So in the face of Sidoro's punch, Shadow Servant punched him. Zheng. Sidoro's complexion changed, and the armed arrogance on his fist almost collapsed. So hard. How can it be so hard? Sidoro was amazed and then he fought with the shadow servant a few times, and then attacked the shadow servant's back door and other places with the advantage of speed. After a series of attacks, Sidoro finally realized a truth, he was still very weak, and he couldn't even beat the boss, an ordinary shadow attendant. I come. Gang Mill, who was watching from the side, followed suit. Pity. As a result, like Sidoro, his sharp claws couldn't grasp the shadow servant's body. How can it be so hard? Gang Maya also shocked the shadow servant's hardness, unbelievable, and murmured, it's like hitting a piece of hard steel. Moria, who was on the side, smiled happily when she saw the performance of the shadow servant. When I was in Vico Island before, I didn't realize it but now I found out how strong the Shadow Servant with the defense of the Black Sword Autumn Water is. It's no wonder that when the Navy was on Vico Island, the Navy couldn't tell apart the extra powerhouses to protect Barrett, so Akainu could only come alone. In addition to the trust in Akainu's strength, the defense of the Shadow Servants is too terrifying, and the Navy who is not strong in the armed color can do nothing. Only those armed and powerful admirals and colonels can kill Shadow Servant. In this way, the Navy naturally has no way to have excess combat power to protect Barrett. Chapter 47 Shadow Version of Flying Thor Coordinates Spring Festival is coming, I wish everyone a happy new year. Next, let's fight this Shadow Servant for the time being. After you can break the Shadow Attendant's body. I will summon the shadow attendant who can use the armed color domineering to fight with you. On the beach, Moria and Sidoro and Steel Mill such as this said. The two nodded and didn't object. After all, the fact was in front of them, and the shadow servant stood and let them fight without hurting a single cent. Hera, Perona. Moria turned to look at the two women in the distance and said, I will be in danger when I leave this time so I will tell that to chefs and shadow attendants. There is a certain sense between the shadow servant and me, and I will be able to come back when the time comes. Moria left to chef shadow attendants, one is to cook for them, and the other is to be afraid that when there is danger, he can come back instantly through one of the shadow attendants. In case of any accident, it would be embarrassing if I couldn't make it back. Are you leaving now? 
Hera was surprised that their pirate group had just been established, so it was necessary to be in such a hurry. I'm going to. Perona flew towards Moria happily. Go back. Moria frowned, and it's fine as usual. When he's serious, he doesn't want anyone not to take his words seriously. Oh. Perona was startled, her mouth closed, and she quickly flew back obediently. She was also afraid of Moria, who frowned seriously. Okay. I know. If there is any danger, I will tell the shadow servant. Hera nodded, and then asked Moria how long she was going to be out. Moria was not sure about it, so she told Hera and others that she would come back in no more than a month. Then he flew into the air with a moon step and left in a giant eagle. Five thousand meters in the sky. Moriah sat on the back of the giant eagle and flew towards Rogue Town. He was going to go through Rogue Town to the entrance of the Great Root Upside Down Mountain, and then jump straight over Upside Down Mountain and fly to the New World. When entering the New World, who should I look for? Moriah thought, the purpose of this move is to enhance the domineering of the armed color. His current physical strength has reached the top of the world and the only thing that is still lacking is the strength of his armed arrogance. Once the domineering strength of the armed color is complemented, coupled with his shadow defense, the position at the top of the world must have his name of Moriah. Um. That's the newsbird. At this time, a newsbird with a newspaper below appeared in Moriah's sense of domineering and domineering. Seeing the newsbird, he remembered some grievances. After the pirate town incident, it's time for the news of the world to solve it. A flash of coldness flashed in his eyes, and Moria let the giant eagle fly down. Call out. The giant eagle dived and flew towards the news bird. When approaching the news bird, Moria's mind moved, and the shadow turned into a flowing shadow gun and shot out, piercing the panicked news bird's heart. Snapped. The shadow rolled the news surface back on the back of the giant eagle, and then flew back to an altitude of 5,000 meters. Shadow Servant With the same thoughts, Moria controlled the shadow to shadow the shadow of the news bird. Ten seconds later, news bird becomes Moria's shadow attendant. Animals in the world of One Piece generally have some wisdom and can understand some language meanings. Take me to where you came from. Moriah passed this idea into the news bird's mind. He wants to find the headquarters of the news of the world through this shadow servant news bird layer by layer, and find out their boss. Shadow servant you are, to relieve the hatred in his heart. BFFT. The news bird received Moriah's idea, and immediately waved its wings to turn around and fly to one side. Follow. Moriah and Giant Eagle followed the news bird. After an hour, a bustling city resembling the Middle Ages in Europe appeared below Moria, and the news bird stopped here. This is where the news of the world branch is located in the East China Sea? Moriah frowned, feeling a little surprised. He fell from the air when he came to the edge of the town where no one was there. Then the physical appearance changed and Moria appeared as the bounty hunter, the pirate devourer Rejak. Walking into the city, and asking about it casually, Moria came to a raised building in the middle of a cuboid. Clang! Clang! Just standing at the door, Moria heard the sound of the large machine working inside. This is a large newspaper printing factory, which is not owned by the news of the world. All the newspapers of the news agency can be printed here. This is what Moriah had inquired about in the town. But the top person in charge of the factory should have some connection with the news of the world. Moriah thought, and decided to find the top person in charge first, and then chat with him at night. Turning around and leaving, Moriah roamed freely in this city full of Europeans, tasted delicious food, and went to the foot-washing city to enjoy the legendary pink temptation. During the period, I also found out who the top person in charge of the printing factory was, where he lived, and when he was off work. Justin, 
This is the name of the top person in charge of the printing factory owner. At the age of 40, his family lives in the tallest building in the city. Late at night, Moria arrived carrying an oil lamp as scheduled, and came to a remote place beside the building. He put down the oil lamp and covered his body with shadows. Then he fluttered to the window sill of a bedroom, without pushing the door, because it was open, Moria went in directly. I slept soundly. Come to the bed, hair still black Justin, holding two beautiful young girls in his arms, with a satisfied smile on his face. Apparently, I did a lot of exercise before going to bed, and I am now reminiscing about it in my dreams. Clap clap clap. Moria raised the knife in his hand and turned it into a knife, slashing the three of them. Pull Justin out of the too smooth flesh, and then take it to a remote place under the building. The next step is naturally, with the help of the shadow mapped by the oil lamp, bloodletting, and shadow slavery 1s top service. Where is the headquarters of the news of the world? Moria asked directly after the shadow slavery was completed. Do not know. Justin, who has become a shadow slave, heard Yeoyao's head and explained, Our printing factory is only responsible for printing the news samples faxed by various news agencies, and then let the news birds distribute them. The news of the world has never contacted me, nor have other news agencies. After listening to Moriah frowned, he secretly said, Are all journalists so rigorous? In this way of sending newspapers only by fax, he couldn't think of how to find the headquarters of the news of the world for a while. This is a news agency, it's just an intelligence agency. Thinking that all newspapers operate in this way, Moria couldn't help but complain. Never mind. If you can't find it, just let it go for the time being. Moria's heart is yay or yow, since it can't be solved easily it is still important to improve her strength first. Then Moria sent Justin back to his gentle village, and then came to the door of the printing factory with an oil lamp. It's in the backyard. Seeing the feeling of domineering, Moria smiled, walked around the left wall, and walked towards the backyard of the factory. Coming to the backyard of the factory, rows of log cabins are neatly arranged on the grass in the backyard there should be thousands. Moria didn't count it carefully, but after a look, there were about a thousand cabins, and there was a news bird in each cabin. These news birds work during the day to deliver newspapers, come back to rest at night, and continue to deliver newspapers the next morning. Day after day, they are standard social animals. Sin, please become my shadow attendant. In a hypocritical voice, Moriah was well acquainted, and the shadow under her body was divided into countless shadow guns, flowing into each cabin. Then silently, the shadow retreated. It's done. Carrying the oil lamp, Moriah flew into the air with moon steps, came to the back of the giant eagle, and flew up to an altitude of 5,000 meters. Then take out the killed newsbirds one by one from the shadow space and serve them one by one. Okay, the shadow version of Flying Thunder God coordinates is available. The next step is to put these news birds and shadows in the air above important places such as the New World, the Four Seas, and the Navy Headquarters. The corners of Moria's mouth are raised, and his mobility will be greatly improved when the shadow attendant news birds are all over the entire One Piece planet. In the morning there was a big riot at the Naval Headquarters at noon to enjoy the Kaido dragon dance in Wano country, in the afternoon to drink tea in the world, and in the evening to soak in the hot springs on Fishman Island. This wonderful life seems to be realized soon. With this expectation, Moria flew to Rogue Town on a giant eagle. Chapter 48, One Punch Pirates, is very bald, Spring Festival is coming, I wish everyone a happy new year next day. Around 8 or 9 in the morning. The windless belt is close to the East China Sea. Aokiji, who has begun to believe in lazy justice, has just stepped out of the windless belt and entered the East China Sea on his beloved bicycle under the sun. Behind him, 
the ocean turned into a continent of ice, and on the continent there were several sea kings that jumped out of the sea with their heads down. It looked like he was giving someone a welcome, but it was actually frozen into an ice sculpture by Okiji's Ice Age move. It's really inspiring. Mr. Sengoku. Okiji had a sleepy look on his face, and tried to keep his spirits up. He rode his bicycle towards the headquarters of the East China Sea Naval Division while complaining to make himself more awake. After receiving the news that Vice Admiral Wayne was beaten to death by a punch on the East China Sea side, the Navy headquarters quickly made a decision on the incident. Okiji was sent to the East China Sea, because the Hera siblings are murlocs, and their freezing ability is the most restrained against murlocs. One move to freeze the sea, and the murlocs have nowhere to escape. So King Tsui was uncomfortable, and the Warring States period asked him to rush to the East China Sea Naval Branch as soon as possible overnight, which caused him to have not slept yet. This is a kind of torture for the sleepy Okiji. It's all my fault, one punch pirate Mopa. Okiji's riding skills are good. He drives a bicycle steadily with one hand, and holds a reward list in the other hand. He was very unhappy with the guy on the bounty list, five meters tall, handsome. Not to mention. With this strength, he is still around twenty for five years old. Instead of going to the New World, he went to the East China Sea to recruit pirates. Ill. King Pheasant Yeoyao's head can't understand the operation of this Mopa. However, what is certain is that this guy is indeed very strong, and he can also be the Lanjiao in the six styles, and the others should also be. Where did it come from? There is no trace of the past. Thinking about Mopa, Okiji gradually became distracted and stepped forward unconsciously on a bicycle. The Navy's intelligence and capabilities are quite powerful. After Lieutenant General Wayne was killed by Moria, he quickly collected information on Moria's vest Mopa. In the end, naturally nothing was collected. After all, the Mopa vest was just created. Built soon. However, according to the description of the rear admiral who survived the scene, the Navy generally knew the strength of Mopa, so it sent Okiji over. I feel that it is still possible to deal with the pure body technique powerhouse Mopa with the fruit ability of the green pheasant. When Okiji walked out of the windless zone and entered the East China Sea, Moria, who didn't know that her vest Mopa had been rewarded by the Navy and given the bald title of, One Punch Pirate, finally arrived over Rogue Town after a night of flight. Call out. At an altitude of 5,000 meters. On the back of the giant eagle, Moria, who had recovered his original appearance, glanced down. With a thought, the shadow spear shot down at a high speed. Soon, Shadow Gun brings back a newsbird. Moria took out the newspaper and a reward list from the newsbird bag. While reading the newspaper, I was smitten with the newsbird shadow. The new world is still very chaotic. After reading a few newspapers, Moriah smiled. The Navy originally thought that the group destroyed the John Pirates, and Barrett was killed and taken away by Moriah. The New World should enter a period of strong naval power. Unexpectedly, it is precisely because of the lack of the suppression of Barrett and John Pirates that all kinds of pirates have risen. Hawkeye, the 55-year-old boy crocodile, the king of evil, the wine barrel, and other pirates of the same period as Moria, were active in the newspapers during this time. Wang Zhai and Silver Axe were only ordinary characters when they were on the rocks pirates, and they also rose rapidly. Kaido and Charlotte Lingling are also restless masters. Currently, the whole new world is like a huge vortex battlefield. A steady stream of pirates is impacting the World Government Alliance countries in the new world and the Navy is tired of running around, constantly fighting against pirates. Both sides suffered losses, and overall the Navy was at a disadvantage. After all, there are too many pirates, and the Navy needs to protect the islands of the countries that are members of the world government. 
it cannot be like a pirate. They can do whatever they want, and they can fight wherever they want. Most of the time, they can only passively defend. Very good, such a new world is just right for you to improve your armament and domineering. By the way, it's time to add some powerful shadow attendants to the Shadow Core. Mori laughed, Wang Zhi, Silver Axe, Eagle Eye, etc. are all high quality shadow attendant candidates. Putting down the newspaper, Moria left the news bird that had just been transformed into a shadow servant beside the giant eagle and let it fly here all the time. On the way to Rogtown, Moria also left five shadow attendant news birds as coordinate points for swapping positions with him. Apply. The giant eagle flapped its huge wings and continued to fly towards the upside down mountain. Moria was not ready to go down to Rogue Town for a stroll. Mainly because he was afraid that the Vestmopa would be suspected by the Navy on him. After all, there suddenly appeared a strong man who could kill a Lieutenant Admiral of the Navy Division with one blow, and he just appeared in the East China Sea. It was hard to say that the Navy would not have some associations. So go straight to Upside Down Mountain and enter the New World. This is Upside Down Mountain. It's amazing. Rogtown is not far from Upside Down Mountain. Moria took a giant eagle for two hours and flew over the windless belt to arrive. Seen from a high altitude, the waterways that climbed upwards from the four seas converged on the top of the mountain, and then surged down together to the waterway in the first half of the Great Route. This natural landscape of water flowing to high places that Newton's coffin board can't cover can only be seen by passing through it. Moria sighed and was very satisfied with becoming a traveler. Upside down the mountain. It is the beginning and the end of the Great Route. On one side of the mountain is the first half of the Great Route. On one side is the second half, which is what people call the New World. Moria wants to go to the New World. Flying over the upside down mountain, Moria officially entered the New World. Susu. On the back of the high-speed flying giant eagle, Moria took out the bounty list that was on the news bird earlier. What the hell is this title? Moria was very satisfied with the handsome face on the reward list, but the title made him a little bald and touched his head subconsciously. Fine. Although it is not very lush, it is also qualified to join the funeral love family, at least the hairline is very low. Moria who breathed a sigh of relief, looked at the title of, One Punch Pirate, on the bounty list and pouted. Why not call it One Punch Man? The Navy is really perfunctory when it comes to nicknames. Just because he killed the Vice Admiral with one punch, he was given the title of One Punch Pirate. But, it's better than Luffy's title. Moria smiled, thinking of Luffy's title, and his heart was balanced. Who is Luffy? The boy with the straw hat. Who is One Piece? Or the boy with the straw hat? My god, Moria had a whim one day in the previous life, if Luffy became One Piece, what would the world call him? He wanted to laugh at the thought of, One Piece, the boy with the straw hat. Everyone else is, One Piece white beard, One Piece red hair, One Piece beast Kaido. When he arrived at Luffy's place, he became a boy with a straw hat in One Piece. I feel that One Piece is a force, and it drops several grades in minutes. At dusk, Aokiji, riding his beloved bicycle, came to the headquarters of the East China Sea Naval Division. Ten people in the conference room, there were only Aokiji and two rear admirals. Aokiji sits in the middle with Rear Admiral Aaron and another Rear Admiral sitting on either side. This is the confession letter of the Navy. Aokiji took a piece of paper out of the envelope and handed it to Major General Aaron on the right. The headquarters has decided that, in the absence of anyone else to respond, you will be the top leader of the East China Sea Navy in the future. I. Major General Aaron took the confession letter, both surprised and delighted. Positions like the top person in charge of the East China Sea Naval Division are generally held in the future. 
he thought that he was taking over the new generation of the Navy monster Lieutenant Admiral Akiji, but he didn't expect to be a rear admiral himself. After carefully reading the above content, it was determined that it was Major General Aaron who stood up and saluted Okiji. I, Elon, will definitely protect the East China Sea, destroy the pirates, and maintain justice. The other rear admiral showed a hint of envy when he saw this, but he wasn't jealous. Because he cares more about something else. Lieutenant General Kuzan, the headquarters sent you here, you must catch that bastard. King Tsi glanced at the Major General, this is the purpose of my visit to the East China Sea, but I only have one month. A month later, Okiji will go back to the New World no matter what. There is the main battlefield of the Navy, and it needs a lot of support. One month? Major General Elon frowned and said, if it's a month, you won't necessarily find them. If he can't find that Mopa, Aaron feels that he is the top person in charge of the East China Sea Naval Branch. What if those guys keep hiding? Another rear admiral resented. Rest assured. King Tsi said softly, with the strength of that Mopa, since he has already started recruiting companions, he will not stay in the East China Sea for a long time. The great route is their yearning. You should do a good job in the intelligence of various places. As long as there is news about Mopa's group, let me know, and I will deal with it when the time comes. Now, what are you going to do? After saying that, King Tsi walked out on his own, and he was going to make up for his sleep. Leaving Rear Admiral Elron and the other Rear Admiral looking at each other. Chapter 49 Shadow Golden Body New World The sun is shining brightly and it is close to an uninhabited island in the windless belt. On the golden sand, Moriah was fighting with the five shadow servants she summoned. No use of armed color domineering, mainly physical strength. Bump! Bump! While dodging and dodging, Moriah's attack fell on shadow servant, mainly attacking with his left fist. With his physical strength, he naturally beat the five shadow attendants as sandbags. It is also thanks to the strong defense of Shadow Attendant, after all, it is the black sword Kushui made with the power of the strong armed and domineering, giving it a strong defense. Without the domineering bonus, Moria doesn't have to use all his strength, and the Shadow Servant can still fight him. Call. After fighting for a while, Moria stopped and waved her shadowy left hand. It's close to instinct control. Moria said softly. Since arriving on this uninhabited island two days ago, he has begun to adapt, and has kept his left hand in a shadowed state, and did not immediately go to the strong to fight. Now, he can keep his instinctive left hand shadowing in battle. Since the Vico Island slaughtering order incident, the image of my body has not appeared in front of people. In the Navy's intelligence, I should be in the image of having my arm broken by Zephyr. Now that I appear in the shadow of my left hand, the navy must think that I still have a broken arm, and my left hand is condensed with shadows. After thinking for a while, Moria smiled, so that basically no one would associate Moria with Mopa. Let one punch pirate Mopa replace Moonlight Moria to become the new generation of King Shichibukai. Such a future should be very interesting. Moria smiled sinisterly. This was something he had in mind when he was planning to open a vest to form a pirate group. He is very aware of his shadow attendant ability. Once the scale is expanded, the world government will not be less afraid of him, and it must be a level that is enough to endanger the world. In the original work, the world destroyer, who got the title of this level was plotted by the undercover CP0, and Moria himself was afraid. At this time, it is very important to have a vest. After the wave is over, you can appear as Mopa, don't worry about CP0's various calculations, and enjoy some tranquility. The problem of keeping the shadow of the left hand has been solved, and then let's see if the recently imagined ability will work. Moria thought, if you can, you can go directly to Garp to hone your armament and domineering. 
when adapting to the shadowing of his left hand in the past two days, he suddenly had an idea of ability. Since the awakening of the shadow shadow fruit ability, the ability he has never used is the trick in the original book where the body integrates multiple shadows to enhance its power the shadow gathering place. Remember that in the anime, Moria blended into the shadows of hundreds of people, and had the power to smash an island with one punch. Moriah has always been useless, naturally it is not impossible, but unnecessary. The ability he now envisions is not to blend into the shadow of others, but into his own shadow. Try, if you can blend into the shadow of others, you should also blend into your own shadow. It was unexpected before, but now that I think about it, Moria feels that it should be possible to integrate into her own shadow. Looking at her own shadow under her feet, Moria crouched down and covered it with her right hand. Fusion. Thinking together, I saw Moria's own shadow under his feet, as if a mass of black liquid was absorbed by his right palm. At the same time, Moria's body also grew to seven meters in height because of absorbing his own shadow, a little taller than Moria in the original book. It feels so magical, the body seems to be truly fused with the shadow. Moria raised her eyebrows and looked at her body. The skin of her whole body was dark golden, as if she had become a half shadow and half flesh life. Unlike the original anime, the shadow is fused with every cell of itself, and even the color of the body has changed. And it seems that the strength of the shadow is also integrated into the body. Moria sensed carefully, his shadow originally had the strength of a black knife. Now his body is fused with the shadow, and it seems to have this kind of intensity. When the muscles are made of steel bars, the strength of the muscles must also be very strong. Similarly, the speed and defense of the body must also be strengthened. At least stronger than when he was flesh and blood, like having a superman's body of steel. Think of Luffy becoming a rubber man. The flesh has the characteristics of rubber, and he is not afraid of physical blunt blows. Using the elasticity of rubber, his strength has also become stronger. Moriah's current situation is similar to Luffy's. His flesh and blood body has the strength characteristics of shadows. Look at the improvement. Moria thought. Then on the beach, among the islands and trees, Moria turned into a flash, and shuttled through it. Of course, it is definitely not as fast as the flash, but the ability to bring out phantoms in the movement shows that Moria is also very fast at this time. Call out. Moria, who was running, suddenly flew into the air, and then stopped at a height of 1000 meters. Has this unrestrained feeling really developed into Superman? Moria smiled softly, he could control the shadow to fly, but now the shadow and the body are fused together. One self becomes a shadow, and flying becomes freewheeling. Gravity doesn't seem to be able to act on him anymore. Right. Gravity. Moria's eyes flashed and her mind moved slightly. In addition to being tough, his shadow became heavy because it devoured the shadow of the mountain. Thinking of this, Moria's face became even more excited. The combination of speed and weight made it more powerful. You'll know if you try it. Moria thought. Then the roar of, bang. Bang, sounded all over the island. Every time Moria punches, there will be a big hole on the island. Soon, the trees on the island were gone only big bits filled with red rock fragments. Moria stood on the edge of a large bit, feeling the power in her body. The power is at least three times stronger than the body without the shadow fusion bonus. The speed increase is not that much, about 0.5 times faster than before. After summing it up, Moria was very satisfied, although the speed increase was not as terrifying as the strength. But in this state, Moriah can fly and move regardless of gravity, and he can make all kinds of incredible actions without borrowing force. This is so helpful in combat. But the body has turned into a shadow, so can the current external form of the body be changed by changing the shadow? Moriah's mind moved, 
and he controlled his body to deform for a while by controlling the shadow. Mainly, the body triangle area changed for a while, similar to Superman's. Dark golden shadow panties appeared, covering the hanging sword. Call. Moria breathed a sigh of relief. At this time, he was very envious of the Warring States period. When the Warring States turned into a Buddha, the clothes would also get bigger, and when Moria got bigger, the clothes would only become strips and be torn off. Fortunately, it's not bad to be able to get dark golden underwear to wear outside. At least you don't have to be afraid that you will accidentally injure yourself when you hang the long sword in battle. After complaining about himself, Moria used this to experiment with the ability to control shadows to affect body changes. For example, let four tails grow between your waist and hips, just like the lion tail in the anime Tokyo Foodie. Morai was very obsessed with the action of fighting with his tail in that anime. Not only is it practical, but it also feels very handsome. Chen Seng Seng Seng. Moria manipulated the edges of the four tails behind him to form a blade, and waved it with the power of Lan's feet, and four condensed and sharp slashing waves flew to the sea. Bang 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 bang. The waves on the sea surface were lined up and four trenches were drawn out like tofu. It's more condensed and sharper than the slashing wave sent by Lan's feet, and its destructive power is stronger. Comparing the Lan Jiao used before, Moria's mouth slightly raised. The next day, Moria was on this uninhabited island, familiar with the way of fighting with this ability. From now on, this ability will be called Shadow Golden Body. The next morning, Moria who left the uninhabited island to find someone to fight, gave Rong the ability to enter his own shadow and incarnate into a giant shadow man took this name. Chapter 50 People in the New World are Decisive. Courtesy 3 Requests. East China Sea. When Moria left the uninhabited island, because of the time difference, it was already on Shark Island at noon, because the island was surrounded by sharks so it was named Shark Island. Sister Hira, Gangmir, and Perona were sitting around the stone table, staring at each other with big eyes. It was time for lunch, but there was nothing on the stone table. This is a very real question. On the fifth day of Moria's departure, the rice, vegetables, fruits, fresh water, and salt on the island. No more, finished. Very hungry. Perona leaned her head against the edge of the stone table and pouted, stroking her dry belly. The three of Hera were silent for a while. Although they came to Shark Island in a hurry, the originally stored food could last for ten days and a half. Result. They underestimated Perona's food intake. She ate unheard of the amount by herself. In addition, Sidoro and Gunmir have been fighting and exercising and the food consumption dropped sharply. Five days. After only five days, the food was consumed. Lord Moria, why haven't you come back? I'm starving. Perona knows her mouth and feels very aggrieved. She misses the days with Moria very much. I didn't know the goodness of life energy before, but now Perona knows that without life energy, she needs to eat a lot of food to fill her stomach. In the past, as long as a piece of life energy went down, she just wanted to sleep comfortably. Now. Not to mention it. It's also Moriah's fault. Moriah has always used those ordinary life energies as red potions. When he is hungry and tired, he will come to take a life energy and instantly restore his full state. However, it ignores the role of the essence of life energy, which is to promote the evolution of the body. And Perona, who ate at least 40 servings of life energy, was not the kind of powerful life energy. But for her, a three-year-old child, it was also terrifying. After this period of physical evolution, regardless of how much Perona hasn't grown, her physical strength is more than five or six times that of an ordinary adult man. She is not like when she first met Moria, even the ability is difficult to use and she can often fly around with the ghost fruit ability. 
significantly more stamina. This also leads to her current appetite is terrible, so the final result is. They are out of food. What? Hira asked. I can only go outside and find some pirates for help. Sidoro's eyes flickered, although Moriah said not to let them out. But the reality is not a cartoon. If you don't go out, you can only fish and eat meat all the time, and the problem of fresh water must be solved by going out. Although he and Hira can drink sea water, after all, they are murlocs living in the sea. But Steel Mill and Perona can't do it. He can eat meat for a month without drinking water. With the current physical fitness of the two of them, three days are enough. Then, Sidoro and I go, we are not easy to expose, and we will be lucky to find food. In the end, Hira made a decision. She and her brother Sidoro went out to find food, while Gunmir and Perona stayed behind. Because it was previously judged that the navy might be dispatched to a character of the same level as Mopa, Molia, they did not dare to show up in the town, and could only target the pirates who were rampant in the sea. New World. When the Hera siblings left Shark Island to find food and fresh water, Moriah came to a sea of storms. Who? 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 Under the dark clouds, the wind was like a huge wave, slapped the sea relentlessly, and rolled up another huge wave. A large 200 meter long pirate ship was struggling to move forward under the swaying of strong winds and waves. High in the sky. Moriah, who was wearing a gale with clouds above his head, also stood on the back of a giant eagle that was struggling to sway and fly, silently following the pirate ship below. Forget it. Don't wait, go straight on. Moria, who originally wanted to wait until she entered a calmer sea, did not wait, but killed these pirates and devoured their shadows into life energy. After the reserve of life energy is enough, go to Carp and fight happily. Shadow Golden Body. With a thought, Moria directly turned on the strongest state. That's right. Now the move of blending into his own shadow has become Moria's strongest state and strongest move, similar to Luffy's fourth gear. Also known as the, big move. The new world is not an ordinary sea area, and the pirates who can survive here are not weak, so Moria directly opened the big move and used all her strength. Call out. Moria jumped off the back of the giant eagle like a vertical ballistic missile hitting the pirate ship below. Who? Below the pirate ship, on the splint of the bow, the pirate Captain Morrick, who is 2.8 meters tall and has flowing white hair, raised his eyebrows and looked up. I saw a huge dark golden figure falling quickly from the air. The visitor is not good. Morrick quickly judged that he was not someone he knew so he was definitely not here to play. Then without hesitation, he drew the knife waving from the bottom up. One shot, white head sky high. Chen. A pale crescent shaped slashing wave flew from the bow to the falling Moria at high speed. People in the new world are decisive. The moment they discover someone, as long as they don't know each other, it's never wrong to cut a knife first. Moria smiled. Facing the extremely fast flying crescent slash, he looked relaxed. He clenched his right fist and raised it to his chest with a condensed and domineering aura. The moment the slash was close, he waved outward. Zheng. The sharp crescent slashing wave was sent flying by his punch and deflected to his side. It's not true to come and go. The corner of the fallen Moria's mouth cocked and the dark golden right hand was raised back and turned into a sharp blade. Lance you, chop. Before he finished speaking, Moria, who was falling, slashed down with force. Chen. A bluish-white slashing wave that was enough to cut the 200-meter-long pirate ship in half from end to end shot out from Moria's swung blade. Not good. Morik below saw this scene, and his expression suddenly changed knowing that he had encountered a strong man. Pressing his legs down, Morik instantly took off and flew towards the huge slashing wave. At the same time, 
hold the handle of the knife tightly with both hands and swing it upwards. One knife, three thousand feet of white hair. Zheng. The long knife clenched in Morik's hands collided fiercely with the huge slashing wave from Moriah. Kaz Kaz. Morik's face was pale, and the terrifying force from his hands made his hands tremble, and he almost couldn't hold the handle of the knife. The huge force continued to pour towards him, and the slashing wave was not repelled by him, but pushed his body and began to fall. One blow, stopped the sky. Royal feet, broken sky kick. At this moment, Moria saw a five e metal bald man wielding Hoshan. Bamboo shoots, jumped up, and slammed a hammer on the huge slashing wave. Another long legged man with dreadlocks also jumped up and kicked the huge slashing wave. Chen. The slashing wave that Moria sent out, with the strength of the three of them, deflected out, rubbing the edge of the pirate ship and flew into the sea. Boom. The rough sea was directly cut out by a dark trench. Then the sea water upturned the trench, and the pirate ship swayed as the waves rolled. Tap. At this time, Moria was like a leaf, lightly falling on the middle plywood of the shaking pirate ship. His body seemed to be free from the shaking of the boat, always standing upright on the plywood. Bump bump. The white-haired Morik and the other two men who attacked with Hoshan bamboo. Hammer and long legs jumped from the bow and landed in front of Moria. The other pirates on the ship who had the ability to stand firm in this shaking situation quickly surrounded them and looked at Moria with a solemn expression. Who are you? Morik asked with a frown. Moriah under the shadow gold body is seven meters tall, and the skin is dark gold, which is too different from the image on his bounty. These pirates didn't recognize him. I'm. Moriah, who was about to give an opening remark, found that there were people who didn't talk about martial arts. He tilted his head and stretched his right hand back. While dodging a bullet, his right hand turned into a shadow gun and shot out. Bump. I. The sound of gunshots and the sound of sharp blades piercing through the flesh rang out at the same time. Morik's shadow gun instantly shot through a pirate crouching on the edge of the fence above the cabin like a black line. It was a sniper, and his head was shot through by the shadow gun from his forehead. Bump. The sound of the sniper pirate falling on the boat sounded and Moria calmly retracted her right hand and shook the blood stained on her hand.